Hello, welcome, 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 one and all, to yet another episode of WIC TV, a cross ideological space where we come together with uh, to talk about issues both political and cultural, from the silly to the serious. And gang, we have a show for you today. Um, recently, um, the Her Report has come out where uh, they did a special investigation into Biden's handling of classified documents. Um, the report has been divisive, uh, to say the least. And a few ish incidents and issues have come out regarding this report that we're going to discuss today. Uh, we are also going to talk about something that the, the, the Her report talked about, which is Biden's age and mental acuity. Is he fit for office? Um, is this something we should actually be worried about? We're going to discuss this, all this and more, but uh, two things first. First, I will have to tell everyone, I do get paid by Progressive Victory. They're not sponsoring this content, but I am, again, on their payroll. So just to let you guys know. And the second thing, right, is I'm going to give uh, the mic over to these lovely gentlemen to introduce themselves and uh, give some opening thoughts. And we're going to start with uh, no stranger to the show, Lactoid. Go ahead, please. Yeah, I'm Lactoid. You could find me at Lactoid TV on Twitch, Twitter, and YouTube. Um, I did read the her report, all of the pages, um, yesterday, and uh, I think it just confirms what we all knew, which is that Biden has tapioca pudding instead of a brain. Okay, short and sweet. We'll see how it goes. Next up, first time guest on my show. Uh, great guy. I'm I'm curious to see how he'll do. It's his first live debate, gang. Uh, Adam Mockler, go ahead. Yeah, what's up? So real quick, I'm like a filmmaker journalist. I make videos where I just talk to Trump supporters in good faith. I read the Her Report as well, and I don't have a legal degree or background, but for my takeaway, I think the report was crafted in a very misleading way that allowed the media to capitalize on these key phrases and these headlines about Biden's age without actually engaging with the fact that Biden committed no crimes at all, which the report says in a million different ways, a hundred times, there was insufficient evidence. Biden didn't know the documents were classified. There was evidence of intent to return, lack of evidence of willful retention. We can go through the million times the document says this in all these ways, but it doesn't seem like the media reported it fairly because I also have screen caps of headlines that just take the word willfully and make it seem like he willfully show people documents. And then as far as Biden's age goes, I mean, there's a lot of ways we can approach this. I don't know how you can argue that Biden is unfit for office. I, I, he obviously does not have dementia. I don't know how you can argue that. We can even draw parallels between him and Trump. I hate to do the whataboutism thing, but that's who he's running against. So we have a lot to dig in on both topics. Yeah. And we will dig in indeed. Thanks for being here. I'm eager to see what you bring to the table. Uh, and we'll go to the next guest. Uh, again, someone who's been on my show a few times. Uh, and his dogs are lovely. Tyler, please. Hey, Tyler, uh, average debate enjoyer. If anyone's interested in my YouTube channel, uh, I am not a huge Biden hater on economics, on border issues, on things like that, but on corruption, he is pretty bad. The Hunter Biden stuff and this are two things that I've looked a lot into in terms of Biden's corruption, and it's not good. I don't think anybody that's just a political observer that doesn't already side with the team likes it very much and i think the polling data kind of bears that out uh his age is almost as big of a factor as trump's felonies in polling right now just as many people are concerned with Biden's age as trump's felonies so i think it's a pretty big deal i think the general public has spoken that his age is definitely a concern even the majority of his party and i just i don't want to bash on the guy because i think he's had a really good 2023 but on this particular subject man i just think biden's taking a big l and he doesn't if he were my grandpa i'd take the car keys from him okay well thank you for being here we'll see how it goes last but not least uh someone who is a first time guest on my show i'm eager to see how he'll do hutch please what's up thanks for having me on i appreciate I, i'm enjoying watching what you're doing in the space and uh it feels like there was a bit of like a hole when it comes to political debate on social media and you've been sort of plugging that in. So that's been nice to see. Um, I got into internet stuff, doing video game stuff in 2009, but I have been interested in politics for my entire adult life. I became an adult right when September 11th happened and it just sparked a curiosity in me. And um, 
yeah, I approached uh, I, I approach politics from a left wing, left wing perspective. Um, when it comes to this report, if I'm being very concise about it, no ifs, ands, or buts. The report very clearly exonerated Biden. It provided a lot of fodder for the discussion around his mental acuity, and we can get into that. But uh, he was not uh, very ambiguous in his summary, uh, and he even took the step of contrasting how Biden engaged with the special counsel investigation with how Trump did. And um, uh, I don't I don't know how we can get into a debate about like whether or not this report exonerates him because it clearly does. So, yeah. OK, well, uh, those are uh, the stakes here, gang. Those are the positions and we will open it up. And I guess I'll start by asking Lactoid directly because uh, uh, Lactoid, you are a lawyer, correct? Yes, um, and I read the entire her report. Sure. So in your opinion, does this report exonerate Biden? Why or why not? So the report essentially states that Biden broke the law, but that there's reasons why um, he shouldn't be held. He didn't have the mental capacity to be held responsible it is essentially what the entire report says. And you have to go through all of it to see, kind of, to kind of see that develop. So when we're talking about uh, willfulness, this is the critical element when it comes to whether he violated the Espionage Act, because the willfulness standard is different than an intentional standard, where willfulness, you not only have to intentionally break the law, but you have to know that you're breaking the law and intend to break the law, not just intend to do the action that is illegal. This contrasts this with, with most other crimes, right? This, this is a very high standard to meet. You have to meet willful. Um, it said, what, what her is concerned about is, given Biden's horrible memory, despite the fact that he admitted in 2017 to be, un, uh, to be unlawfully storing uh, classified information, because his memory is so bad, he, uh, her doesn't think that he can get a jury on board with the idea that Biden willfully, in terms of intended to break the law, he obviously broke the law, but he didn't intend to break the law which means that he's probably not, he's probably not criminally culpable, is what Her said. Um, I, I think there's a good argument there based on, uh, he goes into several reasons why uh, Biden is uh, so, I guess, demented that he shouldn't be held responsible, right? He doesn't remember when he was vice president during the interview. He doesn't remember when his son died. Um, he doesn't remember, uh, it was Afghanistan war documents that were uh, classified Afghanistan war documents that were being improperly held. He actually didn't really know the details of that debate, um, of the documents that were so important to him that he was unlawfully storing. Um, he just a bunch of sh uh, shit that he just misremembered. And um, this is repeated constantly throughout the entire report. Can I ask you, as far as the 2017 quote, what's the exact quote? Because um, it, it seems to be your strongest piece of evidence that he will fully yeah, retain the document. What's the exact one? I just want to. Uh, so the, I'm, I'm paraphrasing a little bit. I could, could find it in it. the report. Yeah, no, but it's um, it's uh, he he's talking to his ghostwriter, Zwanitzer, and he uh, in an audio recording he tells Zwanitzer that he found the classified documents downstairs when he's talking about those documents. He then goes on to describe classified information to his ghostwriter, who's writing his book for him. But because in 2017. He specifies that he knows he has classified documents uh, improperly stored downstairs. He essentially right there just admits that he broke the law. But what her says is, um, while most people, you know, that would be enough. But for Biden, there is like a credible argument that he said that and then promptly forgot that he had it like the day after because his mental acuity is so poor. Yeah. So the full quote of sorry, can I hop in right here? So the full the full quote of what Biden says is, I just found all the classified stuff downstairs. I wrote the president a handwritten 40-page memorandum arguing against deploying additional troops to Afghanistan on the grounds it would not a matter. But how do we know? So basically, her concludes that the pre that like that Biden was referring to classified Afghanistan documents, but he could have been referring to the document he wrote to Obama right after, right? So that document was classified, though, right? Handwritten notes of a vice president to a president is classified information. Didn't didn't her say that Biden um, reasonably um, assumed that what his what was written in his notebooks was not classified because of 
the precedent that had been set by basically every president that had come before him who kept their own written notes. I feel like that was written at some point. Well, that, that that's the, right. Well, that that goes to um, the idea, again, of willfulness, right? He did he did break the law, but he's, you know, he was under the impression because arguably Reagan also broke the law. He was under the impression that uh, this could be done. Now, the interesting yeah. thing is. So that doesn't have to do anything with his age, though. That has nothing to do with his age, right? That specific point uh, doesn't because he he argued that this was his personal property. He didn't think he had to give it up. But um, this doesn't apply to the other thing that her was talking about for a significant large, a significantly larger portion of the report, which is Biden's shitty memory. And it also doesn't apply to the documents labeled classified on top of the document that Biden was improperly storing. Can I ask something before we move forward here? I had a little bit of a different understanding of the willfulness argument. Uh, what I was told was that there were documents that Biden had possession of from when he was a senator and didn't actually have the authority to remove do documents from where they were being stored. He could go and view them, but he couldn't take them. And some of those documents he took while he was a senator had also more handwritten notes right on the document. The they identified counsel... documents. Oh, sorry. Well, yeah, let's let Hot, hot Chance. Well, they, they addressed that and they said that there, there are all kinds of innocent explanations that they couldn't refute in court. And in that particular case, it was more than reasonable to think that it uh, that his aides could have packed those boxes up and put it in the or you're talking about the Penn State building. I don't remember exactly which one it was. I'm sorry. I'd have to re scan through my. I, th I think that's what you're referring to. And and I, I think that I think the special correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the special counsel even said that the evidence suggests that it, his aides had packaged those up and then and then put it in that spot. The Penn State documents is a weaker claim for sure. And there is a real argument there that that was just a mistake um, and that Biden did. They couldn't definitively show that Biden knew about that. So that also doesn't have to do with dementia. The Penn State stuff. Right. But I'm talking yeah. about the shit in his Delaware house. That's total. That's worse. That's bad. The way that you categorize, you said that the great bulk of the evidence shows that they, they're not going to prosecute Biden because they think he has dementia. But there's all for kinds of no for, for various claims that are in that report. There's all kinds of reasons why they chose not to prosecute that they laid out that have nothing to do with his poor memory. So there are other things said, um, but the based on my reading of the report again, read the whole thing. And it does like repeatedly talk about, I mean, I, I literally have it listed down in like page numbers of consistently talking about his poor memory. Um, there's one part where it, it is a, it is labeled as a critical reason why her is not recommending bringing charges. Because again, one of the uh, essential elements here of these charges is whether or not he intended to break the law, not just if he intended to do the action that broke the law, whether or not he knew it was illegal and then did it anyway, right? That's the question. Um, in order that, for that her to, doesn't in order, think he can meet it. In order for it to be a crime, he would have to knowingly take and store classified information, correct? Because you keep saying like he, he broke the law, but in order for it to be an instance of him breaking the law, the state or the, the prosecutor would have to demonstrate that he knew that he was, that the documents that he had in his possession or the notebooks, he knew that that was classified. No. Held, if, if, there's no criminal, if there's no criminal intent, the crime didn't happen, right? It's even harder. It, so the, 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 in order for them to prove, and this is why her is not recommending charges, it's actually even a higher standard. Not only does w would he have to prove to a jury that uh, Biden knew he was keeping classified information, but that he would also have to prove that Biden knew for a fact that keeping that information was illegal and yeah. that he did it anyway. That's the part that he's not sure he can prove, which I think is a fair point, right? But um, in terms of did Biden know he had classified information? Of course he did. In 2017, we have an audio recording of him telling Zwanitzer that he had classified documents in his house. So, anyways, yeah, you, you go ahead, Adam. Yeah, well, I was gonna say, like, moving back a bit, I guess we can we can come back to this. But yeah, Black Toy, like earlier, the way that you phrased it, it sounded like if you read the report that in totality, it's all just because of his age, like over and over, you'll see age and age and age. But I, these numbers might be slightly off, but I think I counted, they mentioned his age nine times. And then the amount of times they mentioned, like we found no evidence that Biden, we found no, there's also no record of Biden, blah, blah, blah. They do that like 30, like just way more times. So building on Hutch's point, I think there are a lot more reasons than just his age. I don't know if that's a correct characterization. 
the the report's a little bit repetitive because it starts out with a summary and then it goes through all like every single different event. It's it's very thorough, right? Three hundred eighty eight pages of a PDF uh, that you can find on Google. I mean, it's it's incredibly in depth. But um, on the on the the non repetitive stuff in terms of explaining the different charges, it's continuously brought up, right? And his his specifically his mental acuity. I mean, I I, I have right here, like listed down page numbers. I mean, they're using language such as lapses due to diminished faculties and faulty memory, diminishing faculty and advanced age. Again, they bring up that he doesn't remember when he served as vice president. That's kind of a problem. Uh, he doesn't remember when his son Bo died. And by the way, on that one, he did a press conference afterwards in which he got angry about the fact that uh, he apparently, you know, that he was asked about his son dying. But there was two witnesses there. And what they said was that actually it was Biden that brought up Bo when he was trying to jog his memory about something else. So he misremembered, in the following the investigation during that uh, press conference, he even misremembered who brought up Bo. Do you, do, you, do you buy the excuse at all that, not excuse, but do you buy the idea that the proximity to the Hamas attack on Israel could have affected him? Uh, I, I, I guess I can't like completely refute that. I mean, I don't, that's the nature of the job. I mean, it could have absolutely affected him, but if that's he what he said, I'm just saying when walk. he went into it, Robert Herr basically told him, we don't expect you to remember everything. We're going to ask you a wide array of questions spanning a wide array of time. And Robert Herr told him specifically, we understand that there's a lot going on in the world. It's the day after October 7th. So just the idea that they asked him all these questions and he knew all this stuff, but then like they're picking on a few things. I just feel like, and this is supposed to be evidence that he's not fit for office or what's the, what's this in service of overall? Like, well, I, like I said in my intro, I think the evidence shows that he, we have a president who has tapioca brain, uh, pudding for brains. I mean, you have a guy here who can't remember when he served a uh, vice president. Uh, that's a serious office and you should remember that. And now he's the president. And can you, can you imagine being in already a high stress situation with the, the violence escalating in Israel at the time, which was a, very significant event to, to have to navigate as a president. Can you imagine your brain kind of going blank a couple times in a conversation about events that happened 10 years ago? Has your mind ever just kind of zapped and gone, gone blank for a minute? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Not when it comes I mean, I, to I, like, I, I don't think that surprise. anybody, I'm saying, I'm, I guess the point I'm trying to make is like, I don't think anybody that's seen Biden speak 20 years ago and watches him speak now could deny that he has like slowed down. Obviously sure. yeah. the question is, is he capable and mentally fit to be president? And I don't understand what the substantive argument is that he's not fit. When I look at like his policy record, when I look at his ability to engage in very high stakes negotiations between uh, members of Congress and foreign, foreign leaders and th these kinds of things, he has not demonstrated uh, uh, an unfitness in my mind. Could, could, could either of you illustrate that point without I, pointing to like his 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 mind going blank in a in I would a absolutely time. argue that his legislative record is nothing really to like hold much praise over like what the ninth infrastructure bill his build back better plan got gutted down to about 25% of what it was because he couldn't even get his own party on board with it wow um, I mean, that's he was speaking to his negotiating abilities and he can't even rally his own party when he's the de facto leader of the party based on voting of the people. Can so you like, imagine a single president instead of Biden that could have whipped Joe Manchin? Yeah. And just go along. You can? No, who? Yeah, who? Bill, Bill Clinton. You think Bill Clinton could have whipped Joe Manchin and Kirsten Cinema? Yes, I think Joe Biden could have if we're talking about 1992 Joe Biden because 1992 Joe Biden lined up a lot more with them on policy. They're a little behind the curb. They're more 90s, early thousands Democrats still because they're in Purple District. Absolutely. I, I think that Bill Clinton could have got him on board. And eventually Joe Manchin did come on board with something he wasn't 100% comfortable with. And now he's not rerunning for his office because he thinks that hurt his election chances in our Trump That's 23 states so much. That speaks to Biden's abilities to negotiate. I, I think some people have this idea in politics that if you have a seat in Congress, that that automatically equals a potential yes vote on every single legislation that's passed. That is just simply not how Congress works. Otherwise, Trump would have repealed and replaced Obamacare in the first two months of his presidency. He obviously failed to do that. Sometimes the answer is no. And it's worth worth pointing out as well that Biden had a 50-50 Senate and a, how many seats did he have? 
in the majority the, for the for the, like like an eight seat majority in the house his margins were so thin contrasted with trump who had like a 45 seat majority in the house and like a seven seat majority in the senate and he was able to get more biden was able to get more done with less seats objectively more done. Trump, i think there was a two seat i think it was only a two seat majority in the senate when the obamacare repeal uh, but like that speaks to trump's he, ability to negotiate he was terrible at rallying his party together absolutely and I would right. say Biden is pretty terrible as well if he can't get two moderates on board with his okay. policy, his signature policy. I, I do have a, a question for Lactoid and for uh, Tyler here, right? Because I think that Hutch brought this up, um, and I, I don't know if either of you engaged with it. Maybe I mean, is there an instance during the Biden presidency that you think or you think uh, uh, or you suspect that his age made it so that he could not perform his duties. Can you point to an instance where you think that that, that occurred? So I guess I can build on what I was gonna say uh, in response to the prior question. So I'm sort of of this philosophy that you can have a president who's pretty diminished and their handlers, their administration, all the organization around them can more or less carry on their duties. Um, the president is a little bit more represents more of a I think a, a policy platform as opposed to a person. I've always thought this. This is actually like one of the best defenses of Trump. Where yeah, he's an asshole, but if you like his policy, I think you know Ben Shapiro has argued this. A couple other people have argued this. So you know, I can't other than just embarrassing himself in front of um, like other people. I, I I don't know for sure if there's anything specifically that he was unable to get done because of his faulty memory. But I also think that I'm I would have no way of knowing because I'm not able to sit in and see all the shit that Biden does, especially the confidential shit. Well, were there I, any, like, I search his garage and I find all the confidential Have shit. people I, close to him said that his faculties, because I'm pretty sure after all this happened, people close to him all said that he's fine. So, I mean, if you're not close to him, we can rely on the people around him because they are close to him and none of them have said. We absolutely well, cannot rely people. on the people around him. So hold on, hold on. Let me, let me answer Wick's question because it was to both of us. In the, in the past, we had JFK, Nobody knew JFK was on all sorts of med drugs. He had an opiate addiction until like 20 years after he died. We had uh, FDR. When FDR's previous vice president, who got removed, I can't remember his name, uh, was removed and that brought in, oh, fuck, who was it? Oh, shit, I had this in my head. Well, they brought in FDR's second vice president. He said he had a conversation with him and the guy was basically dead. But they pretended he wasn't locked in the public so they didn't win one more election. Like uh, John Fetterman is a more recent example. His entire staff and family lied about his condition for weeks, like for several weeks, like a week after the primary. And then we found out he had a stroke and they were lying about his recovery process the whole time. We cannot trust the people around him. And history has bared that. Up. Even Reagan, Reagan had a stroke in office. We had multiple instances where presidents were unable to, to, to perform the job and their administration stepped up and did it. So I, I would say no, Wick, there hasn't been an instant because the administration is able to run without him. It's a well-oiled machine. What 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 about Kevin McCarthy? Would you trust what he had to say? Uh, I mean, it's not like degree. Biden only interacts with people that he's like really close with. He interacts with a bunch of people, yeah. and we haven't. Yeah, so but, uh, I I want to actually stick to that. What if what would you trust Kevin McCarthy? His, to his a degree, opinion? I mean, I'm not really a Republican. I don't. I trust them okay. as far as I can throw them all, but I also think they're all decent human beings. Because there was a political report that came out some time ago, and here's a quote from this report. On a particularly sensitive matter, McCarthy mocked Biden's age and mental acuity in public while privately telling allies that he found the president sharp and substantive in their conversations, a, contradict a contradiction that left a deep impression on the White House. So obviously the line of attack against Biden has been for the last four years since the campaign in 2020, or 2019 to 2020. That he's this literal, like, demented guy who doesn't know where he is half the time. But you have the former Speaker of the House telling people in private, actually, this guy's kind of sharp. Well, hold on. So, uh, according to hearsay reports, uh, McCarthy said this. We don't know how it was phrased. We don't know if he even said it. Um, so, I, I mean, take that for what it is. If he's uh, saying publicly he doesn't respect Biden, I mean, that's already in conflict. So, I would need a little bit more than that. Um, but but you guys are you're, you're caught in a little bit of a catch twenty two here because if it's true that Biden's not mentally defective, then uh, the her report bases a lot of its reasoning on many of the different elements uh, for why they're not going to bring charges 
because Biden is mentally defective. So at the very least, if Biden is not mentally defective, and that's like somehow determined, then Robert Hur should probably go back and reevaluate at the very least whether or not to bring charges against Biden, right? You keep saying that, that but there were yeah, so I don't many. Know if that's true. Yeah, go, you go ahead, Adam. Like I was just going to talk oh, no, about. No, no, like, go for it. Go for it. I was just going to say. Yeah. Well, there were so many other things that he pointed to for his reasoning for not bringing charges. So, for example, when it came to the Afghanistan stuff, he said, we conclude that the evidence does not establish that Mr. Biden willfully disclosed national defense information to Z Zwanitzer. Uh, the evidence falls short of proving that Mr. Biden did so willfully. That is that he knew these notebook passages were classified and that he intended to share classified information with Zwanitzer. That has nothing to yes. do with him. And he didn't know. He didn't, it wasn't that he no, didn't no. know. Oh, so go for it. Well, I want to respond to that because what you just read, like, it, this is why when you read the whole report, like that's in context. When they're referencing willfully, you're reading the summary. But the reason why her is saying that they can't establish that he willfully did this is because they can't establish the elements for willfulness. Those elements are established by a Supreme Court case, and it requires like a certain level of mental acuity to know that you're breaking the law that her doesn't think that Biden has. So if, if Biden does have the mental acuity to know that he is breaking the law, then her should probably reevaluate whether or not Biden willfully uh, disclosed classified information to his ghostwriter. Yeah, well, you're making it seem like the threshold is only like mental acuity every single time, but a lot of it was based on precedent with Reagan, and he there's a lot of. Um, that was yeah. a small portion. Also, I, there's a question that, about that, Reagan that's, may that's have been pretty... charged for that, by the way. Oh, and, he, but he, but and Biden dead, not so. knowing, like, basically, if he even took the documents, I just feel like over and over they give all these reasons, and for sure he talks about age, but I just don't think it's as big of a piece of it as you say. So Biden didn't, there's a good argument that Biden didn't know that the Penn State documents were taken, but he absolutely knew that there's the, the, the classified documents in his house, considering that we have an audio tape of him saying it. The, I think another reason we, he, uh, another reason um, special counsel declined to, to press charge on that particular thing is that it, it, it could have been possible that he, he didn't know if it was classified. So he just, I think I just found some classified stuff or whatever, but he didn't quite know. And then it slipped his mind afterwards. That's not, that has nothing to do with him being demented. That's just him like looking at a box and like literally not, not being entirely sure if what is, what is in that box is classified. He called it classified. Right. But there was a question about like, there were so many questions that the prosecutor couldn't answer that could possibly explain that. Yeah. That had nothing I, I, to do with him being de demented, though. No, no. I, I remember what you're talking. That actually did have to do with him being demented because uh, there was one point in the, her report in which he asked, like, maybe uh, he actually, like, said, uh, you know, said that it was uh, classified, but that in reality, like, uh, he really deep down didn't know. And because we already have all this evidence of, like, him, like, with his memory and, and issues with his acuity, that, like, that also could be the case. So, yeah, that was brought up, but that's still within the broader context of Biden's memory. This is, a re this is the reason the Republicans are running with this fucking her report, because it does not look good for Biden, and it puts the Democrats in a catch-22, right? Either Biden is mentally infirm and shouldn't be charged, or he is not mentally infirm, and her should probably reevaluate whether or not Biden should be charged. You, you keep putting it on, like, the mentally demented stuff, but ag again, in this report, in the summary that I'm looking at right here, there are so many... In his quote, innocent explanations for why these things occurred that have nothing to do. And to be clear, him forgetting, like being forgetful of something that ha happened perhaps, t what was it, 10 years ago? That's not an instance of somebody being demented. And that doesn't and, show uh, that he's unfit for office in any way, too. Imagine not remembering if, when if, you were if, vice president? Imagine if Robert I Mueller don't. included in his report the every single instance that Donald Trump said that he couldn't remember this or that. And then okay. imagine if imagine if Robert Mueller included in his report, uh, this 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 makes me very concerned about Trump's mental in, uh, uh, acuity because he can't remember like a hundred things that I'm trying to ask him here. I mean, yeah, and also you guys keep referring that. to the when her sat down with Biden, but I don't think it's fair. So first of all, you can't point to any specific example. So your evidence, a lot of it hinges on this interaction, and but basically, when her sat down with Biden, he said, "I plan to ask you." Uh, questions that relate to events that happened years ago but i hope you put forth your best efforts and try to give this so i don't think it's fair to basically ask him about years events that happened years in the past ask him to give his best recollections like it says then fault him for his limited memory and if that's one of the strongest pieces yeah i don't know 
When you say no specific example, like what are you talking about? No, well, Hick, or not, sorry, Wick asked you, can you provide a specific example of Biden's memory hindering his presidency? And you guys, it's fine. You can't point to any specific example. No, remember no, when, it's based off the perception he gives off when he speaks publicly. Yeah. Remember it's, when it's Wick, not, Wick asked you that question? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, these administrations can run on their own. They're very well-oiled machines. We've had a lot of experiences in the past with that. Okay, but we, we also live in a time when everything gets leaked to the media, and yeah. Biden has been in the room with many Republican uh, Congress people. Y if you guys are making the case that Donald Trump is demented, and, and, and I, I assume you mean literally, you think he's literally demented. Joe Biden. I'm, Joe Biden. Uh, Biden uh, uh, I'm not sure. Who did I say, Trump? Uh, yeah, no, but, keep going, keep going. Uh, have you taken a cognitive test, uh, Hutch, right? Like you're mixing up world leaders. <laughs> yeah, dude, like Hutch that. is mixing up names. He's, he's done for. I am um, fucked. Yeah, just discredit everything I'm saying during this debate. Um, <laughs> I've and honestly, I literally forgot what I was just about to say. So I'm not making the best case for myself. You messed here. up one thing in a multiple hour discussion, dude. It's over. Um, where, where, what was I talking about? Why did you do that, Wick? Sorry, sorry, like it was a funny joke. Biden here. My bad. For I guess you were talking about uh uh. If Adam Joe was... Biden, if Joe Biden, if you oh, really okay, think yeah. he's truly yeah, demented. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so I've been, I don't know if you guys have spent time around people that had dementia. My best friend growing up, his grandma had dementia. I was over at his house constantly. I've seen what serious dementia looks like. We're talking about like, she would sometimes walk, like take a walk, forget where she was, get lost for like five hours. They had to drive around and find her. Um, it, she would just come up and say the most bizarre things that just had no relevant context whatsoever. Have you guys seen Biden do that in any kind of like interview that he's given or any kind of press conference? Yes. You've seen him act literally demented? Yes. Which one? Maybe not uh, seriously demented, but demented. Not, not to the, okay. So you're, what you're talking about is like kind of an extreme degree toward the end of dementia with somebody who's pretty close to death where they're like laying in bed, screaming out family members' names no, or no, dead no. things like that. No, uh, no. There's different stages of it. I live, my right. mom's. Yeah, yeah. My mom lives with somebody that's currently experiencing dementia, and it's a slow process in the beginning, especially. And when you're being medicated for it, it can be slowed down. Um, it doesn't always result in these extreme things. It, Joe Biden's saying he had conversations now, I think, 10 different times with people who are dead. Like, some of them have guys, been dead for decades. Guys, guys, do you seriously think that he, he thought he was having a conversation with a dead person, or do you think he mixed up the names? He probably mixed up the names, maybe, but I don't know. Well, that's, we, that's you, you don't know that. Job. You don't know that because there's something in the uh, her report where, you know, with uh, General Carl Eikenberry, he talks about how uh, he fought with uh, Eikenberry and he disagreed with him over the Afghanistan uh, uh, argument he had with Obama, but mm -hmm. the reality was actually the opposite. So he was just completely misremembering um, the, the series of events that happened there. Yeah, now, it's hard to tell because Joe Biden has a long history of both plagiarism and lying. So it's very hard to tell when he's trying to actually tell the truth. That being said, I got all this polling pulled up here because that's kind of the angle I wanted to go with. Mm -hmm. um, it's very reasonable to assume Biden's age is a factor because 69% of Democrats, 77% 77, 77 of people overall, 89% of Republicans say, that age is a bigger factor for Biden than Trump. And if you look in this polling, most of those Democrats give Biden a good job of what he's done so far. The reasons he's old, outdated, elderly, slow, confused, and bumbling are the top six reasons why people say he yeah. acts. That's it's the, the Roomba. I, I, that's the Joe Roganification of like discourse around this topic. Um, yeah, the polling that, doesn't that's convince not, Oh, sorry. Keep going. Well, no, there's no, I was just going to say, there's no question that the public has concerns about his mental health. That's not, I, I can't, I don't think you can point to polling and then say, this is evidence of actual dementia. And the point that I was going with before was if Joe Biden has been personally engaging in high level negotiations with Republican members of Congress, how come it's never come out that he's acted demented in these meetings? They, the Republicans argue that he, he does come across as demented. I've heard people say that he does. Who? I've heard people say that he like was misspeaking in private meetings, but they have a much tighter White House than Trump. The Trump White House was unparalleled to the Obama White House, to the Clinton White House, to the Bush White House, and how many leaks we got. I don't think people realize that I haven't watched politics for a while. The leaks we got out of the Trump administration were an unprecedented high amount compared so to So how is every other incompetent Biden, like I know you guys are going to say it's just his admin, but I mean, doesn't that go to show him keeping such a tighter, I mean, his admin is just that much more competent. They are. His administration has to be better. They're basically running the presidency for him. Doesn't that speak to mental acuity? Not to for him. Yeah, not. 
Not for him. So he well, claim, his, party, his party, yeah, like maybe his party's better run. Maybe yeah. personally a have a, you don't think him having personal good judgment when it comes to like staffing his cabinet speaks to mental acuity? No, I don't Obama, know how much. Or Obama carryovers. Most of like I think it was like sixty percent of his staff were Obama carryovers. And now we do have a really high rate of people quitting working for Kamala Harris because apparently she's really awful to work for. But a lot of Joe Biden's people were former Obama people they just brought over again. Okay. So I mean I can I, I just want to say real quick, I, so when it comes to dementia, I feel like Donald Trump has been saying Joe Biden has had dementia for like four years now. And that's something that progresses over time. So at some point it's going to get worse. And I think beyond polling, beyond hers reports, beyond all of this, the best piece of evidence that we can use, and I don't know if this is allowed, Wick, but just like a video of Biden. Can I play this video? Uh, or like maybe even just the audio. Second, and sure. the thing is. It's not going to be a seven second snippet because that's what this polling is based off of. People watch these seven second snippets. This is a, this is a, um, I have two speeches. I'll just play like a snippet can of one. You, There's uh, one. Share, can, yeah. Can you share your screen and then we can all tune in and, uh, yeah, I should have given you some permissions to do so. Um, yeah cool so there's one speech from a month ago but this speech is from three months ago is that fair like how long is, how long of a clip this is if it's more it'll be less than a minute or i'll just less than a minute i just okay, want to sure. Go ahead. play this so this is from three months ago which mm -hmm. i think is fair enough to say like that's recent enough go for it hopefully this is the right screen i'm sharing can you guys see biden right now no uh, no you, you're not sharing. you gotta do it in the discord buddy there's a share screen button yeah yeah Hold up, it's not letting me still. Okay, hold on. Let me see if this will. Oops, not that roll. <laughs> okay, uh, that was almost bad. Okay, uh, try the try now. Okay, cool. now we can watch the stream. Now we can all tune in. Step up for you. Um, you want to pause it? So. Uh... Kept the picket line. Okay, so everyone can get here. Does everyone get here? You click on the watch stream. We can all watch yep, it together. Us. My audience can see yeah. it, I hope. I watched the speech. I don't know this is. Okay. Go so ahead. you guys are claiming that he has like dementia. Just like clarify your claim real quick um, beyond like fried brains or whatever. It's the, it's when he gives public speaking. Most of the, most of the time, and it, like the joke is like after he gets a blood transfusion, he can go up on stage for an hour at top. But most of the time when he's speaking, doing his public speaking, he's mumbling, he's putting words in where they don't belong, he's saying gibberish sometimes, not even words, um, speaking to dead people, he's forgetting, he, he forgot he was, the, I mean, some of it could be innocent because he's a busy guy, absolutely, I'm not saying it's not just some of his mistakes, everyone makes them all the time, but it's the some people, amount. Some people, some people make a lot of mistakes when they speak, yeah. right? But it's the amount of speaking he does versus how many mistakes and how old he appears. And again, majority of the public is seeing it and saying, holy shit, this is a problem. So that's well, kind of my Especially you, compared to when he was vice president. Absolutely. Sure. Do, do we, we want to watch, watch the clip for you? Yeah, yeah. You a simple proposition. Yeah. You kept the picket line going for 46 days. Yeah. You kept your negotiations working around the clock, negotiators. And in the end... The deal will you reach set a new standard. Over 30% increase in wages with a cost of living adjustment. Bigger pay increases over the last next four and a half years than the last 22 years combined. I'm just going to pause it for one second. He does slur a lot and he's a very shitty public speaker, but just saying that he has dementia or that small moments are evidence of dementia, I'm going to keep playing it. Like, is this someone, you guys say you know people with dementia, so I'm asking genuinely. Greater retirement security, more paid leave, and community by, commitments by the big three to create thousands more full-time middle-class jobs, investing tens of billions of dollars building the auto future made in America. Look, folks. These deals are game changers, not only for UAW workers, but for all workers in America. I mean, okay, you guys get the idea. That was three months ago. Are we there done with no the clip? There's no shot. Finally? Sorry, what's up? Are we done with the clip so I can? Yeah, I'll stop sharing. That's is that someone with dementia? Like, honestly, I'm genuinely asking. I'm gonna go with, yeah, early early parts of dementia. Yes. Um, I, again, I, I there see, is no shot. No, okay. I see somebody no that shot. I know has dementia almost every day, and, and they if are you put them, much if, more coherent than that. And if you put them in front of a teleprompter, you think they would be able to like 
do, do, do that kind of a on speech? a daily like, no. basis as the president of the United States. And like you guys have been saying he has dementia for four years. So it, imagine cool? four years from now. I have it. Okay, let, let me let me respond. Sorry, not you guys. I, I, Sorry. I, I think I think he will. I I'll say it. Um. So a couple things. First of all, as anyone who has ever taken care of someone with dementia will know. There are good moments and bad moments. Uh, this is typical uh, where, yes, you can show a small clip of somebody going up on stage and uh, speaking coherently. That doesn't necessarily mean that they're not having a mental decline. You can also, uh, you know, pulling like, you know, a, a brain fart once isn't going to be enough either. But it, it's a, looking for a consistent pattern of, uh, of symptoms, right? A consistent display. And I think that everyone's recognizing that, uh, at least from his public appearances. And but more importantly, in the her report, uh, it's also recognized, right? And 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 all of this is contrasted to when he was vice president. If you watch the original vice president debates, Biden is incredibly sharp, and he's not displaying uh, he any of the better. shit that he's oh yeah, like way better. Eight, yeah, of course. Yeah, like oh my god, I mean he was killing it. None of this mumbling, none of this shit. He okay, was but... absolutely very clear. But the her report specifies that when they reviewed the recordings, the Zwanitzer recordings, like I'm going to quote right here. Quote, Mr. Biden's recorded conversations with Zwanitzer from 2017 are often painfully slow, with Mr. Biden struggling to remember events and straining at times to read and relay his own notebook entries. In his interview with our office, Mr. Biden's memory was worse. He did not so, remember when he was vice president. He, uh, and he didn't remember on the second day of the interview, not even the same day, the second day of the interview, he couldn't recall when his term of vice president began. He didn't remember when his son died. So are you claiming that the dementia began in 2017? There's not like a hard, with dementia or any kind of de like degenerative d disease, there's not going to be like a hard start point. It's just going to be like you see a progression of symptoms over time. For and sure. You compare someone to where they are now. Like if you look back at Biden's vice president debate and you compare that to like how he operates now, I think it's clear that there's such a significant decline that I do think he probably has some mild to moderate dementia. I mean, okay, obviously, if we compare him to 15 years ago, he slowed down. That's not the argument. But I just don't buy this idea that his dementia started in 2017. Not you guys, but like Donald Trump started calling him Dementia Joe in 2019. You can find clips of him in 2018 putting his foot in his mouth, messing up. And it's like throughout all these years, the dementia just progressing so slowly that he's still able to give these. And you guys said, oh, you can pull short like portions of speeches and good moments and bad moments. This is a 20 minute speech. And he gave another one like a few days later. I mean, he regularly does these speeches during his packed schedules and bad moments aren't just a slip of the tongue with dementia people. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think with dementia people, bad moments tend to be a little bit more, I don't know, prolonged or, I mean, like what does a bad moment look like to you? Because have we seen any events canceled? Because that would be strong. I, if, if, they, if, if they had to cancel like four events in the last month because he was having a bad day, then I would be suspicious. Have any events been ca canceled? You can't predict a bad day. Biden doesn't have many events. He does. He's, he's, he, he's, he's, he's been all over the country in the last month. The press, even when it's I'm not the public, he's like, like, The press and TikTok, they don't give a fuck about like people. T t and, they, and they did this during the 2020 campaign as well. They accused them of being in the in the in the basement for like the last week of the campaign when he was in swing states like multiple swing states a day every single day it's just th these events don't get a lot of media coverage they just don't sure. they're not I'm the like, things that go viral on tiktok two things two questions right uh the first question to hutch and to um adam are because i genuinely don't know and i don't know if my audience knows um do you know how many events biden has held in the last two weeks well, I can't say off the top of my head, but we could find it out. Do you know? Are you? Do you know the answer to this? No. Me? No, that's why I'm asking genuinely. I'm just curious because if you're saying that he is the the claims being made um, are that uh, Tyler says he doesn't have very many events, whereas you all are saying he has a lot. I'm pretty well, sure so we can actually figure out how many he has. But go ahead. Yeah, we can. Yeah. So, the, so I, hold up. I got a factcheck.org pulled up right now. Right now, I'm looking at press conferences since. Presidents could give public press conferences on the news. Biden is the second lowest president for giving press conferences okay, year to year. We gotta, we gotta talk about Ooh. more than just press conferences. Yeah, yeah. About, so uh, Biden, the, the Biden spoke in Culver City, California today. yesterday. Or today, today, today yeah, today, three hours today. ago. And then five days ago, he spoke again. That was actually the clip I was going to show you. The other clip, well, I don't need to now. 
Um, but yeah, I mean, even the clip from five days ago when he's talking about Navalny, I mean, yeah, he's low energy, but that does not equal dementia. And I just don't buy this idea. I mean, Lactoid said like they have good days and bad days or good moments and bad moments. I just feel like the bad moments would be way more amplified with dementia. It's not just like a slip of the tongue. Sorry to go back. To I, that. I, I see them all over. Like you can, you, there's, of course you can Google this shit. I mean, you can find speeches where he's fumbling shit. He's uh, referring to people by the wrong names. He's misremembering events. But then um, her report saying he's misremembering events. And, and by the way, something that he is skipping out on is his cognitive test. Why aren't they going to go forward with his cognitive test? That was what, my what second this, uh, question, actually. Yeah, um, so it, presidents it go through a cognitive test. Yeah, just uh, just to fact check, right? It has been reported, right, that um, uh, in his um, physical that he's going to, they are mm -hmm. going to omit the cognitive test portion. Um, what What is your response to that? Uh, do you think he should take uh, the cognitive test? And this is to Adam and to Hotchkar. What is it? What are these reports? Okay, I think if the norm is that he's supposed to take the mm. cognitive test, he probably should. But I don't think this is some silver bullet that he has dementia or that he's unfit for office. Have him take the cognitive test. Where are you guys seeing this, by the way? Uh, let me get um, the article. Uh, I didn't I just... really like read into this much, but yeah, I, I do think he should take it. But I don't think that that is a. I mean, I'm posting it again. In the chat. I it's just don't the same, think the same, the same physician also declined to give Mr. Biden a mental acuity test during last year's exam. Are you saying that like Donald Trump in 2018 took a cognitive test? I'm pretty sure yeah. he did. Yeah. Yeah. He That's did. like a he standard. There was a, there was a thing where he was talking about it at a rally about how some of the questions were hard. They'll tell you, remember these three numbers and they'll go into no, a yeah. conversation about something else. And it was the whole man, the man, woman TV, but that yeah, was, yeah, that, yeah, was yeah. The that was the last year. And he was just like, fine, I'll take a cognitive test. I'm, I'm asking you if a cognitive test is like a regular part of like the presidential's oh. physicals. Yeah. I don't know if they do it yearly. I don't know. Let me see. I'm so I, what I'm reading is that the doctor is declining the cognitive test because they don't think it's necessary. So if the doctor doesn't think it's necessary. You're right. His doctor doesn't think it's necessary. Well, I mean, do you think the doctor is just like skirting norms? Yeah, I will. Again, we cannot trust the people around him. We have a lot of precedent over the last hundred years of the administration, the people that work for the president's office, all lying on their behalf for like six different administrations, Republican and Democrat. If, if I guarantee you, if we had the Internet back during JFK time, the same conversation would be going if on we if we do what he was up to if we're going to start disqualifying people for perceived partisan purposes why would we not have a conversation about robert Hur himself who was a trump appointee who saw what the republican media did to the special counsel weiss during that investigation with hunter biden they savaged him for not going after hunter biden more yeah. aggressively if you're a republican in this space and you do anything that's a perceived uh that's a perceived act of disloyalty to trump you are literally risking your political career. So, so could it not stand to reason that her uh, included in this report uh, an, uh, uh, um, red meat to sort of push the media narrative that Joe Biden is wait. literally demented? Is that not possible? I want to respond just real quick, some housekeeping things. I see your super chats. We're going to get to the super chats at the top of the hour. And uh, so keep them coming. And I'll uh, we'll we'll okay. do that at, at seven o'clock, and then we'll continue with the debate. But uh, good questions, keep them coming. Um, Her was not a so. Trump appointee for the position that he was in for special special counsel. Her was a Trump appointee to become a state attorney, and he mm -hmm. resigned from office, which is normal when Biden took office. Her yeah. was appointed by Merrick Garland, Merrick Garland. To, to oversee yeah. this investigation. So he was a Merrick Garland appointee, not a right. Trump appointee. Now, if he was this corrupt and this partisan, why didn't it come out when the appointment happened? Like someone like Jack Smith where as soon as Jack Smith was appointed, we found out that he was the key player in Obama's IRS scandal where they were targeting Republican groups through the IRS. We found that out like a week. Yeah, they, weren't just tar they weren't just targeting conservative groups. They went after progressive was, groups as well. Yeah, yeah, you're right. But they were mainly targeting conservative groups, anti groups that well, went against the Democratic Party establishment as a whole. So they were doing political favors for their own party. Jack Smith was the head. Jack Smith also, he, prosecuted, he, he prosecuted a former Democratic, what, what, what's the guy's name? John John Edwards? Didn't he try to prosecute John yeah, yeah, Edwards yeah. as so well? I'm just saying, like, we never heard yeah. any of that about her when he took office. The corruption allegations about her only came out after the report did. 
No, so no, I'm, so like kind of there's, no, there's no corruption sauce. allegations. It's not her. that he's corrupt. I'm not, I'm well, not, I'm not necessarily part, alleging. I'm not. I'm not necessarily alleging that he's like right, this thoroughly sorry. corrupt guy. No, no, I'm, my bad word. No, you're good. What I'm saying is. You, the, you've seen what like the Republican media did to Weiss, right? The special counsel that was going after Hunter Biden. They thought that he didn't go after him aggressively enough and they savaged him in the media. Surely her must have seen that. So I'm not, I'm not necessarily saying that like, I know hundred percent that this happened, but if we're going to start disqual trying to disqualify people, like you say, you want to disqualify the doctor because he doesn't think a cognitive test is, is necessary. You don't, we don't know anything about this doctor. I don't know why we just auto would automatically like disqualify him for saying that. Is it not possible that her must have been somewhat like uh, cognizant of the risk of of the uh, coming out with this report that exonerated Biden? Well, a lot of Republicans are pissed off at him for this. A lot of Republicans wanted Biden charged, and they said it doesn't matter what you think is mental acuity or what you think a jury would say if they looked at him. We want him charged. So yeah, a lot of Republicans are pissed and think they went too late on him. I personally, how, think how pissed? How much more pissed would they be if he didn't make these comments maybe, about his yeah. memory? Yeah, I think I think what her did is actually hurt Biden more in the long run politically, with more of a political and less of a legal argument. But that being said, like Republicans are pissed. Um, I'm listening to Comer right now. He's pissed about that. Mm -hmm. So they wanted Biden in charge. So there's also there's also a break in the partisanship, right? Merrick Garland was the one who appointed uh, yeah. her to do this, right. and Merrick Garland's a Biden appointee. And then Merrick Garland is also wife? on this quest to be so incredibly nonpartisan that he ended yes. up just saying, he said before the report, we're going to publish as much of this as possible. And I almost think her took advantage of that a little bit and said, like, how much can I put in here? If Garland is so nonpartisan, he'll just, yeah. He also told, he also told her, we're going to, we, we will, we will make the report available in full. So uncensored. Her knew, uncensored. Her, so, her knew that everything that he said was going to be in the public sphere. Garland could have rejected the report. He could have told him to rewrite certain parts of it before he accepted it and released it. Though. He didn't take advantage of either of those. How Garland do you think it would look that report. Garland rejected the report after all this time of being so nonpartisan and basically rejecting a report that says all these things about Biden's age. I mean, I just, if it ever comes out of, yeah, I don't know. I just don't think that. That would have been day one. Yeah, for real. That would have been day one. Merrick Garland in the deep state censored Biden's age document, blah, blah, blah. Like, yeah. that would have been the story, basically. He has the responsibility to do it regardless of how it looks in the media for the one week that it gets covered before everyone forgets about it. If he had a responsibility to make sure that stuff wasn't in the report, he should have stepped up and done it. I have a but question. Legally, he's bound to do it. I have a question for uh, Lactoid and for uh, Tyler here, right? Uh, since we're all talking about cognitive abilities and the cognitive test, um, as I understand it, you don't, uh, you doubt his doctor's um, opinion that he doesn't need the co cognitive test. But let's say he takes it with his doctor. If you don't believe, his doctor, when he says, oh, I don't think Biden needs to take this cognitive test. What would you believe it if his doctor said he took it and passed? Because I don't I don't believe these things are public record, like the, the actual test itself. No, they are. We don't get to see them. I don't I don't know. Again, because like, the reason I don't believe the doctor or somebody Biden hired is because of the same reason okay, I wouldn't. So again, why, yeah. even if he took the cognitive test, my question is like, well, I, I would trust it more. Do? I would trust it more because like, it's not necessary. First of all, it feels like a cop out and it's it's entirely discretionary. But if there is some kind of metric for passing this test, then like. If he if Biden truly takes it and doesn't pass, then the doctor would have to be just like explicitly lying without any kind of plausible deniability about Biden's test score, which I think is harder to do than it is to just say like, well, I based on my review, I think he's fine. No, no issue. But um, I, I, I think he's fine is just is uh, contradicted by the her report. I, I just don't think I think you, I think. You don't you don't even need to make the compelling ca case. The, com the, the case has already been made compellingly that Joe Biden has obviously slowed down, even just from eight years ago. There's interviews with him talking about Hillary Clinton. He, he barely mumbled at all. So I don't think anybody with the like basic observational faculties would deny no that, he has, yeah. that he has lost a step in his, in his years. Thank you for that. The question <laughs> is, the, well, the, the, there's no way anybody could deny that. The question is, is the man like literally demented? The question is, is the man unfit mentally to do the job when i look at his performance i don't see that you guys are alleging a sort of like weekend at bernie's situation i i you know i don't know and how i can disprove a negative 
It's but a great comparison. When, when I, you, your, your case would be much stronger if, if there were, if, if there were actual, like there was a demonstration of him d like being incompetent in his job. And I just don't see that now him misspeaking. I don't look at that and I think, Oh, that's dementia. I think, well, you got a guy who's had a lifelong speech impediment and he, now he's old. And so it's, and the job is stressful. So I, people didn't hire him because he was a skilled orator like JFK or Obama. People hired him because they wanted a different uh, t uh, approach with the COVID situation. That was like the number one issue that was top of mind. If Biden extended the path of a projected hurricane with a Sharpie pen, then I'd be like, there's something fucking going on with that guy that's concerning. If if Joe Biden started getting in front of her cameras and started saying shit like magnets don't work if you get them wet or windmills cause cancer, then I'd be like, there's something going on with Biden. We need to probably talk about like the 25th Amendment. But that was not Joe Biden saying that shit. We all know who were who did the stuff that I'm talking about here. Or that the F-35 is actually invisible. The standards that are applied to Biden, Donald Trump just shits all over those standards constantly consistently says the most insane shit and he also misspeaks pretty regularly he's not like a young spry guy so i don't know how you're going to try to make the case that joe biden is demented because he said some other guy's name instead of macron but when when trump says uh nikki haley instead of pelosi not once or twice but like three or four times in the span of a week that's not dementia look okay so a couple of the examples the f-30 fighter jet he said it's literally invisible when he was boasting about it. I remember that. He said it's undetectable by radar. It's basically literally invisible to the naked eye. He was okay. over-exaggerating. You, like, you, you, you take these Trump cherry-picked uh, statements and kind of put them out of context. There's there a are. lot. There's he said a lot, lot of stupid things, injecting going. bleach into your, into your body and smiling and winking at the camera. All stupid shit. I'll, I'll give you that. It's stupid. He shouldn't yeah. have said a lot of Absolutely. Why is that not evidence of dementia for him? Because Joe Biden is trying to shake hands with nobody. And after a speech, he turns into a Roomba bouncing around the stage until somebody walks out and physically pulls him where you he needs find, to go. You, you can find video of, of you can find video of Trump walking away before he even signed a bill. And people had to turn him around and go like, you need to actually sign the bill, bro. I don't think <laughs> Biden did that. If Biden did that, you, you would be saying like, oh, fucking dementia, it's bro. Every the 25th speech. Amendment. It's he talks like twice a week and it's every fucking speech. He's like Trump's out there talking. He's on the campaign trail right now in the prime. He's out there doing 10,000 words a day, two different events, a day, six days a week. Right. Now. He is on the grind. A 35 year old would have trouble keeping up with the schedule. He's on. Biden's giving mm -hmm. two press events a week. He's spending a third of the days in office at home in Delaware. He leaves Thursday night, comes back Sunday or Monday morning. He's in Delaware three days a week sometime. He like, was meaningfully engaged. Sorry, you go ahead, Adam. I, no, like no, been I just want to say I still haven't heard a convincing response to the videos I showed. And I, I'm not going to show another one, but there's another one from less than 24 hours ago where he's talking just fine. And I know that Lactoid said, oh, dementia patients have good moments and bad moments. But do you really recover that fast after your bad moment? Is it really just like a slip yeah. up like that? And then you're it, just it fine for days. the rest of the 30 minutes? It could it be just, good I, days and bad days. Yeah, yeah so are, are there any evidence of him having entire bad days where his entire schedule or meetings are, are cleared i just don't see that happening and when i show you these speeches of him talking i just it's so clear that this guy does not have dementia in my opinion I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, well, hold, real quick, I'm not gonna like uh i'm not gonna show videos but you can definitely and if the audience is interested you can definitely find these videos of of these moments right and of uh biden's speeches going way out of whack and uh odd behavior strange behavior uh sometimes like weirdly aggressive behavior um, that then switches to non-aggressive behavior, also a concerning uh, thing that he's doing. Um, you, you can, all of this is public information. I, I think that what, what's happening is unfortunately, like you're showing clips of videos where he, he does seem okay, not all that good, but okay, in order to refute the fact that he, there's plenty of times in which he's not okay. And I, I just personally don't find that convincing. I think you're going to have a hard time convincing uh, the American public who sees Biden do this, that they're not seeing what they're seeing with their own eyes. Because well, they're not I'm not the only one with this opinion. They're not seeing what they're seeing. So lact or not, sorry, not lactoid. Tyler just gave an example. President Biden shook hands with someone in thin air. I'm on PolitiFact, which did you use that as a source earlier? Is PolitiFact good? Yeah, um, yeah I'll take it. President Biden was confused and shook hands with thin air is a raging red false. He was gesturing towards the audience in a seven second clip of him shaking hands with thin air. 
is not what you see. So you're not seeing what you see. These little clips, and it's you debunked my fighter jet thing earlier. So like, I get that both sides do this, but like, I feel like if you look at these clips, there's a pattern of it. I can link this PolitiFact to you. There's a pattern of all of these clips. There's another one where he walks off in the middle of an interview on live TV. But then you look at the full like 30 second clip and he actually shakes hands and says, bye, thank you for having me. It was great. And then he walks off. But then the version of him just walking off got like 18 million views on Twitter. So of course these 18 million people are going to tell polls. Yeah, this guy's walking off. Sorry, my dog's. Just during to the audio, I just watched the video again. I will reanimate exactly what Joe Biden did after his speech when he was just to the audience. Play here. Let's go. That's it. He put his hand out to shake somebody's hand, looked around confused, turned around and put his hands up like, where is this hand, person? Bro, to shake hands knife hand. But uh, if I may, um, it is the top of the hour and I do want to, uh, people paid me good money to ask you guys some questions and make some comments. So I'm going to going to do that uh we'll go through one at a time and uh, gang, if you like the content please hit that like button subscribe button all that follow me if you're on twitch or kick uh that'd be nice uh let's get to these comments uh ba -ba -ba -ba. okay uh five dollars from that guy says to avoid this problem in the future we need to have an age limit for how old someone can be to run for president and i think that it should be 65 thoughts on this pro-democracy no. that's up to the voters meritocracy too i mean if you're the best person for the job doesn't matter the age 100%. I, I, I wouldn't have it be on age i would have it be like you have a complex cognitive exam and then if you pass it then you're eligible to run for president okay. as long as your doctors are vetted as not not being liars basically a nonpartisan body of doctors yeah body of doctors. that that could be agreeable but i like the idea that we should not allow like a 75 year old who has potentially 40 years of legislating experience that you're just leaving all that experience on the, on the table at that point. That makes no sense to me. Um, yeah. I would not support age limits. Yeah. In the same way that like, like what I, this is sorry. What do you guys think about the argument for uh, term limits being the same? Like you're just basically taking these people with experience and kicking them out right when they start to develop that experience. Yeah. Like Joe Biden, I, it's not gonna mean much to you two, but Hutch, like Joe Biden wouldn't be where he is today if there were term limits. 90s Joe Biden is one of my favorite politicians, just so you know. I liked him in the 90s. He was fired up. Yeah, hell yeah. So no, I, mean, I, only, I only like term limits because, um, like, on an individual basis, it's hard to argue for them because you have people that, you know, you don't want to assume are, are bad or acting in bad faith. But I think on aggregate, if you allow the same politicians to be in office forever, uh, you kind of run into... Look, there's a reason why this is a common trend among all authoritarian countries, right? Putin doesn't get out of office for a reason. It's not, you know, because the country's a, a glorif glorified democracy. It's because it's the exact opposite. Yeah, for sure. Um, Tyler, can I ask you, who are you going to vote for? Like, wh what are you planning to do right now? Because you see him on the on the okay. fence. Before we get I, before we get too far into that, I do have some more money questions, right? So I want to. Yeah, yeah. Sure we get I, I Sorry, I got to make my money, gang. I got to I got to get some. Some dollar bills, y'all. Do you think? Um, do you think? Five dollars. Keep that. that question. It's a good one. Um, we'll get to that. Five dollars, Artemis Fowl. Pack schedule. Biden has been on vacation more than 40% of his presidency. It's easy to prop him up when he isn't doing anything half of the time. What's on this one? What, what is the standard for in terms of like how much time presidents spend at their personal property i mean like it, it's one thing to point to like certain percentages that's not really like the question the question is like how does that compare to other presidents and as far as i understand donald trump went golfing like a lot like a lot a lot i mean like i'm not even necessarily saying that that's a bad thing presidents have incredibly important jobs and even if they even if he is golfing that's not necessarily true that he wouldn't be working in that spot even if biden is at home in delaware that doesn't mean that he's not on the phone or looking at so, I mean, what's the standard? Do we do we know like what the standard amount of time presidents spend at their homes are? It's one percent under what Biden does. So Biden is out of the norm. I'm just kidding. I don't know. But um, we could probably find that. I'm what googling percentage? it right now. Uh, but any more so, thoughts on this before we uh before we move on? So I kind of brought it up as my point before, as that Biden just doesn't go on a lot of events. You see him a lot in Pennsylvania. You see him a lot in Delaware. Uh, Philadelphia is like his favorite city to go do things at because it's so close to his home. 
But uh, I mean, I have no problem with it as long as the job's getting done. Same thing with Trump went golfing 307 days of his presidency. Now, golfing is a little bit different than going and spending three nights at your home. You're gone for a few hours, and then you're okay. sleeping at the White House. And so, I do yeah, have was... a Wikipedia. This is a number of days on vacation, and this is the average days per year. Uh, Joe Biden is at the top of these things uh, with 147. Well, Donald Trump Joe Biden's at 147. Bush is at 127. Yeah, but w. Bush Trump is the... still at 92. Yep. So, um, it is it is a fair that's question. Less. So, yeah. Definitely, but is it evidence of dementia? Like, I don't know. No, no that's that's not evidence of dementia. But I, I mean. I don't think you can you know, extrapolate dementia from just if you take vacations. But I do think but, that, at the very least, it shows that Trump works more. I want to say dementia is no, a hard a difference bar with... to prove. Sorry, for us. Dementia is just a hard bar for two non-medical people. Well, if... I would say that more the standard is, is his mental acuity gone far enough to him for him not to be the president anymore? If Trump worked that much more, but passed that much legislate that much less legislation, is he really that much more? Trump active? passed a lot of legislation. I don't. I remember. I remember articles of people saying Trump's first hundred days were packed full of legislation. He might have been packed with policy, but the, 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 for the first hundred days, what they for, the first thing they tried to do was repeal and replace Obamacare. That that was drawn out over the course of a month, or a, month or, yeah. a month or two. That failed, and then they did the tax cuts, which the Republicans had been clamoring to do for literal decades and had nothing to do with Trump. And then that that's that's it in terms oh, of no. signature. Well, in terms of signature policy, the platform that Donald Trump ran on, the tax cuts was the only thing that they got he done. He really didn't run on tax cuts, actually. He, that wasn't one of his huh? big talking points. That's like a Republican status quo talking point. I'm pretty sure he ran on lowering taxes. I'm, I, bit, would, I, like, would, I would bet good money that he did. He probably said it, but I wouldn't say that. If, if I had to, someone asked me, hey, what is Trump's signature policies? It was build the wall was number one. He and definitely crime, failed. Crime yeah, and crime. Too. Yeah, well, so those, and crime okay. he had an all right impact on, but like, Crimes handled a lot on the state level, a lot on the local level. It's really hard for he, the president. He, to... he wanted to do an infrastructure package that obviously that turned into like a running joke because it was like infrastructure week every week or whatever. But like literally, the tax cuts were his only like key legislation that he signed. In. There was like the First Step Act or whatever, some other stuff as well. There's like lots of bills that presidents sign that none of us ever hear about because it's like boring budgetary stuff. I but mean, with Biden, you that... had with Biden, you had Chips and Science Act. You had the PACT Act. You had ARP. The IRA, you had the infrastructure bill, uh, you had the gun reform bill, and this was all done with thinner margins in Congress. So again, that really, to me, cuts against the idea that a demented guy in the White House was able to successfully, you, and, and you can say whatever you will about like what the legislation looked like in the end compared to what he was trying to run on because of Manchin and Cinema. but the reality is in a 50-50 Senate, you need every vote. And in a, in a, literally, in a 50-50 in a Senate, you can have one or two senators that can wield a tremendous amount of power. And when we're talking about Manchin, we're talking about a guy who's serving in West Virginia that swung for Biden, or, sorry, that swung for Trump by, I think, 32 points. It is not a simple thing to just whip a conservative Democrat to just sign off on whatever legislation you want. That's really tricky. And so Build Back Better was like declared dead in the water. And he brought that back to life. Him and his administration were able to successfully negotiate, in my mind, to a, to an impressive level, an extremely impressive level. Again, like if you look at these policies and you start to kind of lay them up against history, it's like he amended something that was already in place. He did our eighth infrastructure bill. He did amended something else that was in place. He subsidized the chip industry. It's like all things that, like, if you look at the whoa, policies. Whoa, whoa. It's, it's, the, it's infra just, uh, the infrastructure bill was the, big, was the was the largest investment in infrastructure in modern history. I don't think people are going to remember these things in ten years. They're not like this giant. It's not like the New Deal or anything like that. It's just these, these are a lot of a lot of these policies are just reforming things that were already on the book. You might be right that it might take some time for people to like notice the impact of this legislation. But the IRA, for example, the infrastructure the the Inflation Reduction Act was the most significant climate bill in history. Like we've never had a a, a, a more significant bill on um on on environment stuff. Exactly. And, and, then, invest, and then the next year, billions. In and then the next year, Joe Biden gave all his climate people the finger and started drill baby drilling. And now we output more oil and gas than under the Donald Trump presidency. We become well, you uh, Europe's number one supplier of oil and gas. Well, you can't so. you can't just you can't just snap your fingers and then like um, switch to like renewable energy. There's going to be an yeah. interim period. So, I mean, I don't think anybody expected him to just like not drill oil. 
I mean, um, but yeah. it's, it's, that's kind of my, it goes into a longer argument I have yeah. about Biden's first uh, we year. Got, we got, we got some respect. more Super Chats. Um, so uh, one more, right, for $10. Uh, thank you for the $10. From Running Joke to say this. Considering how the Democratic Party signed off on Diane, Diane Feinstein's competency till the day she died, I totally believe them regarding Biden's competency. Biden's handlers should know better. Um, comments on this one. Diane Feinstein was young and spry. It's just it's the same thing. Like these these staffers these staffers lose their job if they admit the person they're working for is demented. They lose their job. They have to go job hunting. They have to start over. Again. Of course, it's in their interest to lie on behalf of the person that they're working for. Okay, but can we can we play they're a video? Curated. Can we play a video of Diane Feinstein versus Joe Biden? Like she was literally she was just, way worse. Dude, <laughs> it's like not you can't make this comparison in good faith. In the same way that like when I just yeah I don't know. I mean, Mr. McConnell's given two hundred speeches or whatever in the last six months, and only two of them he froze. And I still think he should step down because of those two freezes. Well, I mean, I, I I to Adam's point, I don't think I don't think the Feinstein situation was comparable to to Biden. She was way worse and. That to me is like pretty indefensible, but at the end of the day, how do you force someone to resign? Like, is there, is there, can you, can you, can you invoke the 25th amendment on a, on a Senator? No, but it could be on the presidency. That's the only thing. Oh, it's, it's pressure. It's party pressure. Uh, the party apparatus carries the power of the purse. So they could threaten to primary you out of office. You look, you're not going to win the general because your age problem. We can primary right. you out of office and things like that, but you can't. It's more inner party pressure and political pressure. You can't actually, there's no mechanism to directly remove them. Okay. So it's, also, a little it's a little tricky there. Diane Feinstein's staff suggested that her age was a problem multiple times, whereas Biden doesn't seem like. And again, the, like the Biden has been in the room directly negotiating with several Republican members of Congress. None of them have come out and said like, Bro, he didn't even know where he was. Like none of them like talked spoke to him being like demented. And as I mentioned before, there was a private uh private report from Politico that, or uh, a report from Politico that allegedly, according to sources, privately McCarthy was talking about how Biden was sharp. Um while at the same time playing into the public narrative that that Biden is that is uh he's demented, which is like a very clear political vulnerability to Biden. This has very clearly been an effective line of attack for Republicans. It it was effective in the 2020 election. And and I think now that all this attention has been on Biden, for you know, he's the president, and so he's gonna get a lot more attention. That line of attack has just been more and more effective. There's no question that Americans are concerned about his mental acuity. I can only speak to my perspective of things. I don't I don't care that the guy misspeaks. I look at his legislative record. I look at his policies. I look at his judicial appointments, and I'm happy with what I see. And I, I would be more than happy to support him in a second term. There's two things we're going to do. We have one more super chat I'm going to read. And then I think that uh, Adam had a great question for Tyler. We're going to get to that. So one more super chat, and then we'll go. Uh, $5 from Artemis Fowl. Uh, thank you for $5. I'm going to keep pointing this out. The Biden backers here are coping out of desperation because their party has no other option. They know it. And I would uh, addend my own question to this, to uh, Adam and to Hutch. Do you think that uh, given Biden's age, that the DNC should have allowed um, primary debates and other primary, uh, an actual primary of Biden? Why or why not? No. No. No, just you don't want to split okay. the base. You want to consolidate everyone. I mean, you don't want other politicians attacking Biden right before he's about to go into an election. And you can say that we're coping, but we'll see who's coping in November. I don't know. I mean, I so, so like, there's a reason why historical precedent is what it is. And neither party, when it comes to incumbents, ever entertain primary challengers. The, the most like the, like most of the time I hear people complaining about the DNC blocking uh primary debates it's from like disaffected leftists who never got over super tuesday in 2020 yeah wait a minute like, literally still pissed off about that the, like the, the adam spoke to it a moment ago and I'll, I'll just i'll say this real quick but the reason why incumbents don't do that is become because incumbents have an advantage they do this is just a thing and the reason why they have an advantage they don't have to spend any money generally fighting a, a tough uh, contested primary if you go to like 1968 how did that work out for Democrats when there was this like heavily to contested primary? Kennedy didn't want to like go along with what was, and it ended up in disaster and Nixon like mopped the floor with everybody. There's there are the, the, incumbents do not entertain primary challengers. They don't. Trump didn't. Obama didn't. Bush didn't. Yeah. 
Anyways, the, the entire framing of the question, yeah, like Hutch said, is just like, you're asking why isn't the DNC doing something that they've never done before in the past? If there's no, why aren't they breaking precedent, basically? Like, I want to also, I don't know I'm on the other side, but I also take umbrage with the question that was just asked. So what they're so talking about is the bully pulpit with the, the person in office, the incumbent doesn't have to spend money to get their voice heard, like the challenger would. I completely agree with all those points. The other point I want to take umbrage with is the Democratic Party does have alternatives. They just didn't cultivate them well enough. If Amy Klobuchar was rumored to get the vice presidency before Kamala Harris, if she would have taken that, she'd be in the perfect position right now to take over for Biden in this election. And she's a much more liked candidate than Kamala Harris was. They they wouldn't have done that either. I think that she would have been demonized just like Kamala was. Like <laughs> Maybe I, I, the, and, Kamala just did a horrible job in the primary. Yeah, she but, but Tyler, but like right now, Biden's their only option, right? Right and now, yeah, but, at this current yeah, point. At this current position. And the coping, I think the co like that coping comment is true. Um, and what I think it's hinting at is that I suspect after uh, November that you're going to get a lot. I don't know if, if these two particular gentlemen here, but I think you're going to get a lot of people start saying, yeah, he's a little bit mentally fucked up. Yeah, I guess. I guess already, he's pretty demented. I guess. Uh, we're, we're already, already there. Up. We're already there. Are, are, are you talking about Democrats right now? Democrats, yeah. 69% of Democrats think he's Yeah, we're British. already there. <laughs> like, I mean, yeah. Like, dude, we admitted we think Maybe they'll talk about it more then or something. Because I, I, whenever I have this argument with people, it's like, well, I mean, did you read the her report? It's pretty crazy. Oh, yeah, well, what about Trump? It's like, well, hold on a minute. Let's, we can talk about Trump in a second. Let's talk about the president. The fact the president of our country can't remember when he was vice president or when his son died, right? Do you think uh, well, that... No, do no. You, hold on. Can I just... Do, do you think that he literally, like... If, if he wasn't in a situation where he was... Uh, dealing with a war in Israel and sitting down for a five-hour interview with the special counsel while doing like the hardest job in the world. Do you think it's possible that he just had a brain a brain zap, or do you literally think that he can't recall the time that he spent as VP? I think at that time he couldn't because it was on two different days. The first day of the interview he couldn't remember, and the second day of the interview he also couldn't remember. And you know, I, I'll give I guess leeway again to like some kind of misspeak. Either speaking quickly, and you like, oh, sorry, I meant this, right? He couldn't remember. Like the her report actually, like in parentheses, has what he's saying. And he's like, he's literally sitting there, like, well, was it? Was I still vice president in two thousand nine? Like he, like he's thinking about it. He doesn't know. It's not like a misspeak. He's genuinely thinking, like, was I vice president in two thousand nine? That's a that's a brain zap. I'm asking, Again, do you do you, do you have brain zaps ever where you just go blank? I do. I get nervous sometimes. I trip over my words and I can't remember like significant dates. I, you're yeah. you're trying you're trying to have me believe that he legitimately forgets like when he's when he's VP. I'm saying take him out of a high pressure situation and like where he's not feeling any anxiety or whatever, and you think that he like can't recall like the year that his son died. Here, here I'll say I don't. I, he couldn't recall when his son died. He brought up Bo when he's mm -hmm. trying to recall something else, and he got the the year completely wrong. It was mm -hmm. he was wrong within several years. Uh, if I did this behavior that was reported in the her report no i should not be president i mean it also says though the president proceeded to provide often detailed recollections across a wide range of questions from staff management to paper flow in the west wing and her even said thank you for making the time to, for, to be here with us um there's a lot of other things going in the world that demand your attention just do your best your, you can basically and what page was this because her specifically writes in his interview with our office mr biden's memory was worse I'm reading at the very bottom, there's a basically rebuttal to her. And um, he says, report at 208. The president proceeded to provide. So let me see if this is referencing this. So when you say, uh, just for my edification of what you're citing here, uh, you're yeah. saying a rebuttal. So was this an addendum to the her report that you're citing? Yeah, or? yeah. Sorry. It's, if you search on page like 380 something, um, they rebut. And they basically say how her like primed the whole meeting by saying it's okay if you don't he's like um just do your best to remember this stuff and then he turns around and uses the few moments that biden couldn't remember out of this wide range of questions is it possible that while recollecting the paper flow in the west wing um detailed recollect or sorry staff management blah blah, blah that he just forgot a few things like in the perhaps. moment well, was saying, uh, yeah. a, a couple in things so it sounds like you're referencing something that her didn't say it sounds like you're referencing something that somebody else said but, oh yeah, I didn't mean to say I was. That's like verbatim what her said. My bad. Okay, that's fine. Um, but I again, um, if I display this behavior, I I shouldn't be president. Um, I I do see like a lot of downplaying uh happening here. 
about something that I think is concerning behavior, which is in the context of somebody who we can at the very minimum agree has declined substantially from when they were vice president, right? You guys call it sure, slowing yeah, down. Yeah. I would yeah. use the term declining. Um, but someone who's declined significantly, uh, you have the special counsel repeatedly in the reason, again, the catch 22, right? In mm -hmm. the reason why he's not bringing charges, like faulty memory, diminished memory. He can't remember when he was vice president. He can't remember when his son died. He can't remember the specifics about the Afghanistan conversation that he made like the centerpiece of his book. He can't remember wow. the disagreements he had with Eikenberry. He can't remember this stuff. And, oh, but that's all because he was stressed out because it's an interview. It's a stressful interview. And the president of the United States, we should give him a little bit of like slack when it comes to being stressed out in an interview. No, like we I should have a higher standard when it comes to being president. Well, the standard that I like when I hear Donald Trump, for example, and the reason why we talk about Donald Trump is because this is a binary choice. Like it, it, it's relevant. I don't understand why that wouldn't be. This is the the whole conversation is about like which one would be better suited for the presidency. And I, I, I is it fair to assume that you're going to vote for Donald Trump? I voted libertarian past two elections. Oh, OK. Well, I don't know. I don't know what I'm voting for next. Uh, th this coming election, it's going to be between Trump or a libertarian candidate. Well, the person called it cope. I, I mean, I am aware that the public perception of Biden's mental acuity is not good. My priorities as a voter, and I feel like I've been consistent with this, is I take a look at the two candidates. I take a look at the policies that they're promoting. I decide which one is more in line with my goals, and then I support that person. Uh, I have not seen enough compelling evidence so far to suggest that Biden is not up to the job, especially when you look at his legislative record and the policies that he's going for are things that I like. I wish Democratic voters treated elections more like MAGA voters do. They're like, my guy was found civilly liable for sexually assaulting someone. He just got saddled with a $450 million fraud judgment. Uh, he uh, allegedly, but this is with interest. It's like upwards of 450 million because there was interest applied retroactively. Uh, when we take a look at like how he handled the special counsel looking into the, the the classified documents, he allegedly lied to his own lawyers, asked his lawyers to lie to the FBI, lied directly to the FBI, allegedly asked his underlings to destroy evidence. If you're going to tell me I'm coping because I don't want to disqualify Biden for saying this name instead of that name, I think it's incredible cope. To say I, I want to emphasize my consistency here, and Wick can attest to this. On two separate occasions uh, on here, I have repeatedly said the, the classified documents case with Trump is like the one that I think actually has legs. I thought the other ones were bullshit, and I was like ripping on those. But from the very beginning, I said, this one's kind of going to be a problem for Trump. And I still continue to think it is going to be a problem for Trump because um, like when you look at the details, it is like there's some like there's some issues, right? There's some issues in what he did. Um, but not I, the DC case. Not you don't think it's an issue for him to call the guy from Georgia and be like, "I need you to find no, eleven thousand. No, no, that's not what he no. said. We, we we can have a full conversation oh, about a, the Georgia case. Uh, that's a, that's, okay. That one's bullshit. I, I, I when you listen before recording, it's complete bullshit. I, I, was, hold on, just, I, I'm throwing a fight on the play because we are about to go down a rabbit hole that I don't think everyone here is prepared for. <laughs> right? Right. Okay. All right. Fair. 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 Wait, you can know? I ask my question to Tyler? Yes, you may. Go ahead. Sorry, I, I've never ended up asking this, but um, yeah, who do you plan on voting for? Because you you're able to acknowledge. Um, some of Biden's like positives, but it seems like you're just disillusioned with both candidates. I don't know. Um, so it's kind of a, it could, I'll give you the shortest answer I can. I vote on issues. I don't vote on party. Um, my number one issues vary from election to election, depending on what's bad and what benefits me the most. I'm voting for me. And I, I mean, people that are partisan to the left are not going to like this, but Republicans are up 20 points in public perception of being better with the economy. Generally for people like me, when a Republican takes office, I do better economically. So if that's the issue, I got to get a little closer to the election to see what my issue is in particular. But it's leaning toward, I, I just don't think that Biden has the wherewithal to make tough calls at the moment after I watch a lot of his speeches. I just don't think he has it. I, I, it's hard for me to justify voting for him. Just do, do you support like the military strike against the Houthis? Brittany, thank you for the raid. Oh, yeah. I, so that's a whole, that's part of the long form answer. I think a lot of Biden's problem in year three, which has been his best year, uh, were created by a lot of year one things that Biden did. So when Biden took office, he wanted to condemn the Saudis for Khashoggi. He took the Houthis oh, off the terror funny. watch list. He started working with Iran, who were the funders of the Houthis in Yemen. And he ignored the Yemeni's government and the Saudis who are working together to try to get the Houthis out. Um, 
So he kind of created the problem of the Houthis in a way. He's not fully responsible, but he is responsible for them being as strong as they are now and able to sink uh, the British just, ship. Which uh, just housekeeping real quick. Brittany Simon, thank you for the raid. Welcome. Uh, hit that like, subscribe button. Okay, fair enough. Carry on. Yeah, so I mean, and the economic thing I kind of went into as well, uh, his, his policies on oil and the gas in, in the first year of the administration were very good for climate change activists, very bad for oil and gas. We can see the prices of gas inflation spiking long before the war. We can see them spiking a bit because of supply side issues. Absolutely, but a, a lot bit. of it policy. There, there yes, were, absolutely. There were, I think it's attributed. There to were increased now. gas costs, gas prices uh, across the globe. Yeah, absolutely. Were, the, the, entire, the entire world was the dealing. It, it, there were places where gas wasn't hit. There were places where inflation wasn't hit nearly as bad. There were places with one percent inflation where we were sitting at eight. In the Western world, absolutely, I agree. Everyone that did lockdown policy and put a lot of money into their economy like we did under Trump um, and a bit under Biden as well, you saw inflation from those countries. Absolutely. Even well, Sweden, who didn't lock down it. Yeah. The alternative was 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 pretty bad. The alternative without the stimulus programs, like obviously when you give people the means to save a bunch of money in a t in a market where people aren't spending a lot of money and then the world reopens, Absolutely. those supply those supply chains are going to get hit. But the alternative was people uh, – falling under during a yeah, really absolutely. difficult time and we and so saw this was like this yeah. was just a price that a lot of countries paid right, for right, right. keeping Government. keeping uh, and uh, like low especially low income earners like vulnerable people keeping them afloat during a really difficult time and the fact that the united states had the best recovery of any g7 nation you don't think that like it, i understand it's like, trending good yeah absolutely 2023 was a great year for biden's economy trending in good direction but to say that we are at those good consumer confidence right now is seven points below its 25, 50 year average. It's seven points. It's, it's improving. The vibes, the vibes are getting trending. better. It's trending in the right direction. It's yes. not there yet. We're still 30% up in grocery prices. We're still 40% up in mortgage prices, 7.5% mortgage rate right now. There's still a lot of things that are going to take decades to self correct. And good to put that on Biden, to put that to, no, to I'm me, not. Trump would have a solution on... too. I don't know if you're putting all that on Biden. I'm just saying, like, to the people that do put that on Biden, that's like me blaming Trump for coronavirus. Yeah, exactly. And, and, exactly. And, like, Trump's own, the, like, not even just Trump's. I'm saying, like, the stimulus packages that Trump signed into law in that first year surely contributed to inflation as well. Because, I mean, we did, we had a very generous uh, paycheck protection program here in the United States. We did far more yeah. than a lot of other countries did. And Absolutely. that was on Trump's watch. And so if we're going to put that all on Biden, I just say with I don't know. that was negotiated down by the Republicans, though, like it yeah, was but even still, crazier. Eviction moratorium, well, Trump did. He uh, suspended a uh, student loan program. All that just did, the, the people like said Biden contributed to the economy. Almost all of it started under Trump. Now, the point that Biden gets is after Trump had added seven trillion dollars to the economy biden wanted to come in and add another like 10 trillion and got down to like six trillion so biden continued those policies people are saying far too long kept the emergency in place far too long but that's like of course that's convenient a uh, convenient partisan narrative like it's okay when trump did all the spending and as soon as biden did he's contributing to inflation absolutely whoever got in 2020 was going to see inflation what Biden did, though, is in, in, here is he had 88 different policies that affected oil and gas in his first year of his administration. And then on top of that, he was pushing these expenses, uh, these spending policies. It did help contribute to inflation more so than anybody would have got if they just stopped right there. I do so wanna, he is partially. Sure. I do want to put a pause on this. This is good discussion, right? But I do want to kind of try to try to wrangle us back into the, the question at hand. Is Biden so, Biden's competency? Is Biden competent? Right. And so I guess um, I'll I'll just ask directly, right? Uh, when it comes to a contest between Biden and Trump, and who will be more, tr who do you trust more to be the executive officer of the United States? Do you trust Biden or do you trust Trump? Why just on competence? Just just on this one factor. Just who do you trust more in general? Yes. Do you who do you trust to be an effective executive officer of the united states trump or biden those are your choices who do you go we're going to start with lacto we're going to work our way around just lightning round here and then we can get into why right fuck it trump obviously biden by wow. me yeah yeah uh i would have to slightly lean toward trump but i really feel like whatever we get both of them are going to be fine we're going to be fine at the end of the four years and uh what do you think hutch I, I said Biden. Oh, sure, sure. Oh, uh, Lacko, yeah. why Trump? You were the strongest Trump, the fuck it Trump. Uh, so yeah, why Trump? Why? Well, why do you clear, the, more? The fuck it was not like a strong answer. The fuck it was 
this question sucks. I don't know how to answer it. Fuck it. Trump. Um, that That's kind of the how I meant it to be phrased. Um, I, you know, I think a big, I, I am sort of of the belief that, uh, you know, we, we're talking about the mental acuity and I think that's important to talk about. But in terms of voting, I, I am much more of a policy oriented person. Um, and so I think that these presidents more or less are just going to do what their uh, handlers like direct them to do. The fact that Trump's picking his Supreme Court picks off of the Federalist Society's list as opposed to other lists is like, I, I'm not a single issue voter, but that's a major, major reason um, in terms mm -hmm. of like, and then just the fact that he can, sure, does, does, he, does he talk so fucking weird and is he uh, an asshole? He is. But the dude has this, like, I think I saw one article that described it as this bronze demonic energy. And I think that's a great way to describe it. This motherfucker is out all the time, just fucking just going and going and going. And uh, I, I just don't think he has the same kind of mental decline. And more importantly, for the next four years, I have to predict who's going to really decline. And I'm much more confident that Biden's going to decline to perhaps even a severe case of uh, uh, dementia compared to Trump responses to that yeah i mean i don't buy the idea that trump's handlers were i mean even if you align with their policy more i mean if you just fleece his cabinet so many times in a row that you wouldn't even get to pass anything effective he had like a 90 percent turnover rate or something some crazy number like that and as far as trump versus biden i just it's really simple but i just feel like all of those problems with mental acuity or any of that stuff is superseded by the january 6th stuff and just trump's inability to take a loss of the 2020 election and peddling election fraud when there's no evidence of election fraud that's a big one for me or sorry not evidence of enough election fraud to overturn the election sure sure um, that, that that that's a big fucking deal by the way like like yeah, that's bad. Uh, destiny um, talks about this a lot and it's something that i tend to agree with them on is like i believe it is important if you're going to have a nation a cohesive nation there needs to be some baseline level of faith in our institutions and Donald Trump single-handedly has done so much to lower people's faith in our institutions to the extent that he has convinced a full, I think a polling shows, a full third of the country, something like 35, 45% of the country think that there was significant voter fraud in 2020. Yeah. Where there were multiple audits done in multiple states. They found no evidence of voter fraud, and yet... 40% of the country thinks that the election was rigged and stolen. If you don't think that that is going to, if, if it doesn't cause problems right now, which it did and John January 6th, but even if the immediate consequences that are, that are going to be the worst of the consequences aren't felt now, this is going to, this spells trouble down the line that it, there's more potential for violence. There's more potential for civil unrest. There's more potential for a serious constitutional crisis. You don't have to worry about that with Biden. You just don't. I think we uh, both agree that supersedes any of the age stuff. I have two questions. So I want to hear what you guys think about this. But first, do you guys think the election was stolen, both of you, and then go into whatever your rebuttal? Uh, so I want to jump into that because that used to be one of my biggest factors is that somebody denies an election. So what I saw in 2018 was Stacey Abrams deny an election without any evidence, and she was debunked 100 times from Sunday. What I then saw was the DNC bring her on the next year, say she was the rightful governor of georgia despite the election result and she was praised by the democratic party what i then saw was that at the atlanta primary debate all the presidential candidates were asked about stacy abram and most of them stood up for her saying that the election was stolen from her without every any evidence so that would immediately disqualify any of those democratic candidates for me but then i wouldn't be able to vote for anybody because trump did something probably arguably worse but basically in the same probably date. i mean yeah, it's argued. Yeah, the pendulum swung a little further back in the other direction. But like the election denial shit has been a political reality of every election I've been through. So I have polling data. YouGov does this question, did this question every year of Joe Biden's or uh, Donald Trump's president. Asked every Democrat, how many of you think as a percentage that Russia hacked voting machines and inserted votes? Mm -hmm. And it was that the highest year, 64% of Democrats in 2018. Every year it was above 50%. So yep. somebody convinced the Democratic Party that the Russia hacked the votes and added, in some cases, up to millions of votes to the election in order yeah. to swing in for Donald Trump. And all that was completely fabricated. I say Stacey Abrams conceded. Yeah, she did. 
but then she turned around and went into the Senate and said on the Senate record that the election was stolen after Isn't that. that so she, didn't that have Trump more also to do? has two instances where he conceded as well and then turned around and said the exact opposite. When did he concede 2020? Um, I, after January 7th, he said he, he is now focused on a peaceful transition of power. And then he had some other comment where he said that he lost, the, he was embarrassed that he lost the election or something like that. Or it's like a while that he lost the election. Well, it wasn't like he private. Admitted. He privately said that while yeah, he, my knowledge, like to, my knowledge, he, to my knowledge, he never conceded. No, the, it's even worse what Tyler's saying. He privately said, I can't believe I lost to this fucker. And then he publicly went on like the next day and said, there's massive widespread election fraud. According to Cassidy Hutch Hutchinson's testimony, that's what she... Now, I did also she... want to collect one thing for you. Cassidy Hutch is Hutchinson. That whole fucking B story discredits pretty much all of her testimony. That being said, um, Trump said, I didn't win the election. While you're finding that, in, I do in want a to... speech. Yeah, uh, after you're done, I do want to hear Lactoid's answer to that question as well. I'm, I'm curious. Yeah, absolutely. I, uh, I just wanted to correct one thing real quick. That he said... Uh, one of the things that the, the MAGA people were correct about is Wisconsin, the Supreme Court of Wisconsin said that the mail-in voting passed in that state was actually illegal and shouldn't have taken place during the election, probably swinging the state for Trump. I, I, Lactoid was going to speak. So I just reviewed it. Um, Twitch, uh, Twitch community standards don't allow you to question the election. Um, so I feel like I shouldn't answer uh, in solidarity okay. with all of my brothers, but but because don't I worry about that. You I'll so think much that we're, we're, because on, I respect I you be clear. so much. Wick. I want to be clear, right? I want you to give your honest opinion. If I need to delete the VOD on Twitch, I will. So. I will give my honest opinion. And because I respect you, Wick, uh, I will give my honest opinion. I do not believe the election was stolen. Damn. So how can you justify voting for Trump when he peddled that lie? Same I way I could justify voting for Biden when he peddled the uh, season. You don't just see that as like a huge not a single issue. I'm not a single issue voter. Oh, that's like a big issue though and like i i it, like you know what though man i wish more democratic voters were like unironically i wish more especially progressive voters were like you i wish that like i you do know, too it, i wish they voted for who i voted for in, ter in terms of like how you evaluate things because you're a policy guy and so you want to see specific conservative policies small government whatever and so to you it doesn't matter that trump did this this or this i think that is a perfectly rational reasonable thing to do if you're if you're voting and there are a lot of there's there is so much purity testing that happens on the left and it just fucks us in election after election and you guys i feel like you guys have such an advantage because donald trump could do the most ridiculous shit and it's just like well i like his policies whatever i, I think it's more I, complicated know. than that though because um i think a lot of the people who vote against trump do so because his personality is so abrasive so you got to be careful with that. I think a lot of people vote based on personality. I think a lot of Democrats or people who aren't even Democrat vote against Trump because they dislike him so much. Um, I think there are MAGA people who they couldn't even name you a Trump policy, but they worship him like he's God. The fact, cult I think of Trump. A, yeah, I think there was like a poll in which like some significant percentage of like MAGA people uh, trust Trump more than their own family. Like it, it's gotten to that no, point not, where it's not just MAGA people. I mean, this is like median voter stuff. There's like a lot of vibes when it comes to these kinds of things. And and probably I'm going to say 60, 70 percent of the country, they don't vote on policy. It's 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 more yeah. on vibes, like how people uh, present themselves and, and your social group. I think that's critically important as well. Your social yeah. group. But for me, like I am a policy oriented person. And to be frank with you, uh, the Supreme Court, uh, maybe I'm just you know, nerding out on this because of my profession, but the Supreme Court is critically important to me. And I think we have one of the best Supreme Courts we've ever had based on principled legal reasoning. And uh, I don't like Biden's pick. I don't I think he'll have good picks going forward. Um, and I'm not even crediting necessarily Trump for this because the Republican presidents just pick whoever they get from the Federalist Society. Um, but the Federalist Society is really fucking good at putting forward really good candidates. I mean, obviously, on policy, I disagree with you, but I uh, but I agree with this approach to voting. And I this is a, like I try to make the case to a lot of like young disaffected people, especially there's got a lot of people that are pissed off about the Gaza thing right now. It's like such a fraught topic to to discuss. But I I like what I, I if I try to if I put I agree with you so much on the courts. If I try to boil it down to just one issue, like don't think of it like you're voting for Biden personality. Don't think of it. Don't even like think about Biden's name. Just think about like consider that you're voting for the ability to appoint judges that are going to hand down decisions that you agree with. And I'm not sure how su successful I am. I, Adam, you probably mm -hmm. interact with young people more than me. I mean, how do you make the case to 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 back Biden? Like in regards to Gaza or just broadly? Just broadly. 
I mean, I do the cop out and I just compare. I'm like, look who he's running against. And he's a fundamental threat to democracy, which I guess the Lactoid and Tyler wouldn't agree with. But if you admit that he, the election wasn't stolen and that Trump still peddled the election fraud lie, I feel like you're admitting that Trump just erodes our institutions purposefully. What I say to my generation is that, like, if we want to inherit institutions that work someday, I know this is really, like, uh, really uh, fear mongery, but I'm like, if we want to inherit institutions that we want to be able to mold someday, the answer is to just not. The answer isn't to not vote and to abstain. The answer is to actually actively participate now so we can mold these institutions. And then when we take them over someday, like they're how, because people of my generation just genuinely don't want to vote or participate. And you're ceding a lot of ground to the other side when you do that. I don't want to let this secret out for young people. But the whole plan of when you get power in politics is to get a super majority so you can actually pass the policy that your ideological side wants. And nobody understands that. They get a simple majority and they're like, okay, we got the simple majority. Put every fucking communist thing that we want up for a vote. Yeah. And it never works. And yeah. what I've been saying is like, why don't we all just like mobilize now and plant the seeds and like mold the institutions rather than just ignoring it and not because people in my generation are overwhelmingly liberal. I talk to people my age and they'll say, uh, like, yeah, all these really liberal beliefs, but then they just think that Democrats are like lame or evil or whatever, blah, blah. So it's like yeah. They get, they get, they get, they talk about Obama, even though a lot of them were probably like ten when Obama was president, and they complained that it didn't get anything done when he. Tra I don't know. We're going off on a tangent. Yeah, the, the, I, I was about to say. Um, yeah, yeah. I love sorry. the discussion. Like, this is an interesting topic to me, and I, I would love to have you all on in a more kind of a conversational setting. Uh, but I do want to kind of like I know we only got about uh, ten, fifteen minutes left before people have to go, uh, so I want to kind of drive home a few points. Um, the her report. Do you think, right, do you think that this will substantively hurt, whether, whether it's true or not, whether we think it's, uh, it should have been published or not, right? Do we think that this will be a major factor come November, or will it be forgotten m as much as pretty much everything is uh, right before election? What do we think, gang? And why? Ma yeah. Major factor. Major factor. Why? Why will and this have staying power? Uh, when other things, such as his handling of uh, his his handling of of the infrastructure bill, et cetera, and all his policies won't. Why is this uh, why is this something that will will have staying power? I think it's due to a number of reasons. The report is incredibly thorough. Um, I think it outlines some pretty egregious uh, uh, errors on Biden's behalf. Um, I think it because it, it, it quite literally states like. If he if he didn't uh, if it wasn't for the fact that like he was so uh, mentally unwell he may have been found guilty because he did he was caught on recording uh, had, like admitting that he had classified documents so I mean you have a lot a lot there um, and I think the critical part though that's really going to keep it uh, sticking is the fact that it pre it presents a catch twenty two where you want to defend Biden by saying no 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 he's good don't worry look at him he's fine um, look at this clip he's all good. But then if he is good, then we got to go back and revisit the her report because one of the major reasons why they didn't charge him was because he wasn't mentally good. So either he, there's an argument that he gets charged or he uh, is not or he's mentally sane. Follow up question for you, Lactoid, but I, I do want to hear everyone else's answer. But follow up to that, like, uh, is that really a catch-22? Uh, it seems to me, at least as an observer, that no matter what um, legal troubles – with the DOJ or with state uh, state courts and stuff that Trump seems to have, it doesn't affect him at all. Uh, so why would it affect Biden uh, specifically for her to even have brought charges like this? I think the ele the electorate ba base is going to be different there. Um, and I, I think that in this case, you're going to have Biden and a lot of the Democratic base generally uh, hammer Trump with his legal issues in their arguments. And yeah, it's not going to convince the MAGA people. I do think it's going to be somewhat effective against moderates. Um, but then the response is going to be, well, Biden did that too. And then the counter response is going to be, yeah, but they didn't charge him. And then the counter response is, well, the reason they didn't charge him is because he's uh, he's got pudding for brains, right? He's just like, he's all over the place. That's why well, they didn't charge him. Well, one of the significant reasons what that her pointed to that he didn't charge is because of Biden's conduct during the investigation. 
one of the re one of the factors that went into him not charging was that Biden was cooperative at every single step, which is stands in stark contrast to what Trump did, trying to hide evidence, destroy destroy evidence, et cetera, et cetera. That being said, that's that's the charge. Not every step. Justice. You are legally required to cooperate with investigations, otherwise you're obstructing justice. That's why he didn't get charged with obstruction of justice. Doesn't really t say to his taking documents though. Well, hold on. It, it, it wasn't it wasn't every step. So that still kind of goes back to the willingness question because um, the reason why that's important and why in this case that aggravating factor is not there is because yeah, if you let them search your garage, what that indicates is that when they find that you you broke the law and that you said on tape that you broke the law, um, it makes it more likely that in reality you probably just forgot because you let them search your garage and, and you probably didn't even know the documents were in there because you fucking forgot because you have terrible memory. But Biden was not completely cooperative. There is a part in the Hur report uh, in which he just starts refusing to answer questions. He refuses to answer questions when he's asked if he thought the documents were um, were classified. He refuses to answer whether or not he thought he should have had them. Like there are, there is a list of questions that Biden just refused to cooperate with the investigation. Now, by, is by that comparable account, to how? Yeah, by Hur's yes, yes. By, can, no, but I'm sa I'm saying by Hur's account, he categorized or he he. Uh, he described Biden as being very cooperative and, and he took the step of specifically contrasting that with Trump in the her report. Yes. Like he thought, with, yeah. with the searching of the documents uh, in the garage. Absolutely. Uh, Biden did allow uh, everything to be searched when my understanding is Trump was not so forthright. And, and that is a difference for sure. That's an aggravating difference. But I think, again, the reason why that's a difference is because it goes to state of mind, right? If you think you're doing something illegal, it's more likely that you'd probably try to hide uh, the evidence, right? Because you think you're doing uh, something illegal. But Biden probably doesn't yeah. didn't think that he was doing something illegal. And now the question is, well, if we have him on tape saying that he did something illegal, why does he think that what he did is not illegal? Well, he probably forgot. That wasn't the only reason. So, so for example, in the, in the garage, they they said that the fact that these documents were right next to like a broken dog kennel and a fucking lamp that had been duct taped together or whatever m might demonstrate to a jury that, that he, he didn't forgot. think no that he didn't think that what he had was was classified yep that's what that's, what, that's what he said in the report if he was willing to just kind of throw it in at a dilapidated box or whatever you can make the argument that no this is what her said this he was called them the classified can I can I just, just say on it, audio recording he referred to them as classified documents? Can I, I just exactly. jump in here? I'm, I'm, telling you, I'm telling you what was in the report. He said you could. I read like, it. Right. So you do you remember when he said like the the fact that he put it in the box like this could indicate that he didn't think that it was classified. So okay, he so, so her goes through a lot of like different like scenarios. In fact, one of and, them was like uh, yeah. all, all like he specifically describes the scenarios. Are these incredible? Yes. But for in this specific case, because of like Biden and the memory and the faulty memory, like it is possible that a jury could see it this way. So he does go through different scenarios. But again, Damn like, have, rule. Different have, scenarios. Have, you guys, have you guys read the have you guys read the full report? I mean, it is not the like, full report. The, the yeah, summary. it does. The right. Well, read the full report when you have time. Like it is. You will see what I'm talking about. Like it consistently references back to his memory. Like, yes, like uh, you can point to other like things that kind of stem from that or are drawn out of that like that kind of demonstrate that he may have had some innocent or like at least he didn't think he was committing a crime but again the question is well why didn't he think he was committing a crime if he's on tape talking about the fact that he's classified documents everything you're saying goes to either the fact that he has a shitty memory or that he should be charged then that's the problem that's the catch or, that's so hard for them to do no, real quick or he didn't think he was breaking the law My yeah i mean my point I want to throw in here kind of comports with what Wick's question originally was. Uh, yeah, we'll get we'll get you, and then Adam wants to get in, and then yeah. Yeah. So the my the point here is like the the crime is Biden and both Trump are on tape saying this is a classified document. I'm showing you person who's show, allowed to see. There's it. no evidence that he showed. Oh, the classified oh that's what document. Trump. That's what Trump said. Biden yeah. said the class the information that I'm telling you is classified. So it's very yeah, similar. There is. No, no, the, no, 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 no. He he told his ghostwriter classified information. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, but he didn't show it to him. He didn't show it to him. Is what he said. Like Trump showed him the Iran map, whereas this guy just relayed the information. I don't Either know if way, he actually showed oh, it. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. I see. I see. It. 
He said, this, he said, this evidence shows that Mr. Biden disclosed classified information to Zwanitzer, who was not authorized to receive it. But the evidence yep. falls short of proving that Mr. Biden did so willfully. Willfully, and That yes. is, that he knew these Regardless. passages were classified and he intended to share classified yes, yes, information. Yes, 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 okay. Regardless, and that they were illegal. And that it was illegal. Regardless, somebody that was arrested for this very same crime was General Petraeus when Obama was in office. His punishment for this, as just a general who was not supposed to have access to these and show them to his mistress, he got two years probation. It's not that serious of a crime. The, her report's probably going to go out the window because it's really not that big of a deal. The big deal with Trump is the cover-up was worse than the crime, and his obstruction was actually very bad. And whereas Biden didn't do any sort of obstruction. Okay. So I can tell willful. you as someone who's had a top secret security clearance when I was in the military, had if saying this is not that's that's stuff that the rich people and the generals can get away with if i were to reveal classified intel that's fair right that mm, mm, that's no, fair that yeah a, but, okay really but we are bad. talking about the rich people and the generals and this general got a slap on the wrist for i think this her report's going to go away what's not going to go away is biden's mental acuity already okay. more a democrats than not on a two to one say his mental acuity is a problem right now and much more than true I want to, so, yeah, I want to get Adam in here. I know he had a comment, and then I have one last question before we have to close the statement. So go ahead. I had a rebuttal to something, but I can't remember. It was like a peripheral point, like three minutes ago. But uh, to respond to the question, I think it really the, your question was about if uh, the her report will have an impact. I think it really depends on what media you consume. I mean, if you're already a big Trump guy, you're going to be like, oh, this is terrible. But I think it will be overshadowed. I know Lactoid disagreed, or he might have agreed or touched on this, but I think it'll be overshadowed by the multiple indictments that Trump is facing, which I think the Democrats will hammer on. I think even just like the recording of uh, him and Raffensperger, which you might not think is incriminating, I think just blasting that everywhere is going to be much more effective than this like obscure her report which i guess in the political world it's big but some of my normie maga friends don't really know like a lot of my normie friends don't even know about the here report her report or what it's about or when i told them i was doing this like they're maga people so i just feel like the trump stuff breaks through to the mainstream and sticks a lot more i i, I kind of disagree with you i actually agree with lactoid a little bit i think the reason why this this is this is bad for biden is because even if we want to discount it as being part partisan or whatever, it represents an institutional confirmation of what has already been in the narrative that Biden is this demented guy. So I do think that there could be some short term, you know, whether that's going to be top of mind in November, I have doubts about that. And to, to Adam's point, I do think that the topic of conversation we're all going to be having in about three, four or five months is the several criminal charges that I think he will be likely to He's going to be found guilty of several criminal charges. And there's consistent polling that shows that his support with independents, who he needs in November, drops substantially if he's convicted of even one felony. And he's got to dodge a lot of felonies. So yeah, we'll, you're see, right. we'll see how that goes. I didn't mean to call it obscure. It's not that it's obscure. I just feel like the life, like the ha not, not half life, like the lifetime of this is going to be a lot shorter than a lot of these other indictments or whatever. I just feel like we're doing all these debates now and it's really hot in certain Twitter spaces, but I don't know if it'll break through, like I said, quite as well as okay. some of the other stuff. Uh, let me, uh, let me, you're right about it. Yeah. Let me read a couple super chats and then we will get to my last question and then we'll get to closings. Um, so $10 from Artemis Fowl to say, I find it funny that the Biden backers on this panel are going to conveniently forget where Biden on at least a dozen occasions, has made up the events on how, when, and where his son died in speeches. And $2 from Artemis Fowl to say, I've only ever voted for Obama. So. Biden has said stuff, we lost our son to, to Iraq. The, the context is that his son worked burn pits in Iraq, which they speculate led to brain cancer. And that is the, the, that is the interpretation he, of that. He said died in Iraq. I don't like know if he said he died word, any word, word, You might be right. He said he's, he, he came out that way, but that's like, that's the context. Hmm. So we know that he routinely misspeaks. I, I doubt that he was genuinely trying to say that, like, my son died in Iraq. Misspeaks. I've seen so many. Uh, well, I've he, seen a lot of quotes where he said, like, like I, because I di my son died because of that war, um, which is true. He or, tells or, a lot it, of stories that aren't true, and a lot of them have been proven not true, like marching with civil rights leaders. Which yeah, he's changed. embellished so many times over the years. I'm not even going to dispute that. So, like, yeah, okay. and plagiarism. I, I, I might even, I might even concede that to you. Whatever, but yeah. Okay, uh, let us get to the last question. The last question is pretty simple. Uh, do we think that this report demonstrates a two-tier system, right, where 
Democrats are let let off the hook, and Republicans are get catch charges. Do we think this demonstrates a uh, uh, what's what's the word? Uh, see, now I'm having a, a double a, standard, right? A double standard. Thank you. A double standard when it comes to how Republicans and Democrats are treated uh, by the DOJ. What do we think? Open to the open to the class here. Absolutely not. Um, her, I think what her did in this report is ultimately going to hurt Biden longer in the long run because of that mental acuity question, even after his reports long since forgotten. The institutional confirming is a huge issue, a huge secondary backer to the narrative itself. But no, I, I, I don't like Trump did worse. Trump acted with intent to hide those documents. Now, I, this is probably going to get disputed, but I think that New York case is bullshit. I think Fannie Willis's case is about to get dropped because once she gets caught for lying to the courts, nobody that they're going to appoint in the in a Republican state is going to pick that investigation back. And uh, I think Jack Smith's the only bet that they got to actually get him with anything, and that's best in Florida. So, nah. Other thoughts on this? Double standard? Yes or no? I, I've I've watched uh, pretty much all of the 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 hearing in Georgia. Right now, the case against Fonnie Willis is very weak in terms of like establishing that she lied to the court. Is ve- I would be shocked if she was if the judge actually disqualified her. I don't know like how long that's going to play out. Who knows if that trial happens this year? I fucking hope so because it's going to be televised. But the DC one is seems likely to go ahead, assuming that the Supreme Court comes back. And affirms that Trump can't have SEAL Team Six murder Biden, uh, which is incredibly likely. So it's going to be Manhattan case, and then shortly after that, DC case, and potentially shortly after that, a televised Georgia case. But the point is, is like every day, this is going to be it's going to be a new headline every day. They have his text messages, they have his DMs. We haven't seen that. There's all kinds of evidence that we haven't seen yet, and these are going to be the things that are going to be dominating. The headlines through, I think it's, through the through yeah, the summer. Do they so, have kind of my point. sorted folder? That's what I want to see. I'm very curious what he has. What'd you say? Tax record. Sorry, that's a. That's oh, a, the Vosh folder. Vosh. Yeah. Uh, reference. Most Sorry. people don't care. Like, if you look at the Biden impeachment inquiry. There was a lot of shit brought up in that that's really shady. And uh, yes, we are missing the link. We have Hunter Biden taking the money. We have the people that gave him the money getting political favors. We just don't have Joe Biden saying, thanks for this money and here's your political favor. But that's a lot of, of really shady that's kind things. Of a big deal. You can make all the yeah, allegations you want. But, but if you don't have evidence that Donald, if you don't have evidence that number one, Biden made money off of any of these supposed corrupt dealings. Did. And number two, we do. Uh, where's the evidence of that? We say we have the money directly going into his accounts from CEFC. Uh, I want to say there was another company, the American AmeriCorps, ta- that just came out the other day. We have two hundred thousand dollars going into Biden's account for that. We have about four, uh, two million dollars from China CEFC. We have going a lot into, of money going yes. into Joe Biden's yes. account. Yes, Joe Biden. Can you? This is the first yes. time hearing of that. Will you link it in the chat? Because I have no fucking idea what I you're did. looking at. About the, the, nine the hours second, worth the, of coverage of the impeachment inquiry. Okay, uh, so the second thing, the second thing though, is they can't establish that Biden Im- influenced any policy whatsoever in some sign, some kind of corrupt way, which is the core of their allegations against Biden for this supposed in- impeachment inquiry. They can't demonstrate a single time that he influenced any policy in a corrupt fashion. They can't, but they well, they have a, they have as a woman giving his son three and a half million dollars for no apparent reason at all. Joe Biden sitting down and having dinner with that woman, and then that woman being one of the only Russian oligarchs to be left off the sanctions list when you're Obama sanctioned the, Russia. You're talking about the Russian mayor's wife or whatever. I yes, looked yep. at a fact check of that. I'm not familiar with that, so I'm not going to engage. Yeah, it's I, yep. I got it's uh, the impeachment inquiry stuff. I can go. I got like a 40 page note docket I could show you of all that shit. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, well, gang, unless there's any other comments, um. I think this has been a, a robust discussion. I, I appreciate the good faith that everyone's shown here. I appreciate the research everyone did for this. I think it was interesting. Um, I hope my audience agrees. And if you agree, right, if you like this kind of content, hit that follow button. Uh, if you follow me on Twitch or Kick, hit that like button uh, and subscribe button if you're following me on YouTube. And gang, uh, super chats, uh, donations, all that thing really helps me keep doing this. I want to give everyone here uh, a closing statement. Please be concise. Um, and tell people where they can find you. I think you guys all did a wonderful job. Love to have you all back sometime. Um, gang, what do we got coming up on my end? So, uh, the, we only have one more stream for this week. 
and it will be tomorrow, and we're going to be doing call-ins with Lab. So Lab is going to come on, and we are going to uh, take your calls. So if you have issues with me or anything I've said or anything like that, or if you, if you, if you have issues with Lab, uh, feel free to call in, and we'll take your calls. So thank you. Uh, but we're going to start with Lactoid, and we're going to work our way around. Lactoid, closing thoughts, and where can people find you? Yeah, so, uh, I mean, closing thoughts is basically going to be the same as my intro. Um, I started off by saying he has pudding for brains, um, and then I think that assertion has been nothing but supported by everything that we went through today. So um, I appreciate all everybody here for giving me their time uh, and being, talking to me and all that good stuff. If you liked what I have to say, you can find me at Lactoid TV on Twitch, Twitter, and YouTube. Thanks. No, thank you. Uh, gang, give him a follow. Give him a, a like, right? He's, he's a... We don't agree on almost anything politically but i like lactoid lactoid's a good man um adam mockler thank you uh yeah so first of all i just want to say thank you guys for all doing this this is my first ever live debate and um i was a little nervous heading into it i mean i just i, I did a research over the past few days and i i was hoping it went well I, and everyone was engaged in good faith i didn't want it to be some toxic like shit singing thing so it was cool um, regarding the thing, I just, I'm still not convinced that Joe Biden has dementia or is unfit for office. And I think the bullet, like the silver bullet evidence are just watching is watching him speak over and over. You can watch these 20 minute speeches and you guys didn't have a good rebuttal for that. It felt like, like you can say that dementia patients have good days, bad days. He just happens to speak on all of his good days and it's meticulously planned. They know ahead when he's going to have good days, but no, I think he's just, uh, not as sharp as he used to be and still fit for office. But again, thank you guys for chatting. Lactoid, Tyler, it was a great, you guys were really good faith. And Hutch, it was great meeting you as well. Okay. Check him out. Uh, he does, it's his first live stream thing, but I, I hope it's not his last. I think he did very well. And I love his, uh, his Q and a content that he does. So go check. That yeah. Out. My channel's Adam Mockler. Just look up M O C K L E R on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, I do high quality debates with Trump supporters where I try to find middle ground. I'm very respectful. I don't make fun of them usually. That's good stuff. Yeah. Thank you. Thank uh you. and next up, Tyler, please. All right. So my closing statement kind of goes to a point Adam made earlier. And Adam and Hutch, great talking to you guys. If you ever don't disagree about anything publicly, reach out. I I'll, I'll debate about everything political. I love it. I I live for it. Anywho, um so jumping into that, he was saying that when he talks about voting for Biden, he doesn't really push Biden. He more pushes, we're voting for the judges we want. We're voting for the policy we want. And that's, that's a great argument for like John Fetterman in the Senate, who's basically just a yes or no and does most, pretty much nothing else. But the powers of the presidency are way too important. I think we're really undermining the authority that that, that position commands and how that person ha needs to have full mental acuity to run that office. All of the power of the executive branch stems from that person and their decisions. You cannot substitute the president for his staff without a complete constitutional crisis. That is the textbook definition of a constitutional crisis, to have the one person that has that authority not have the mental acuity to delegate his authority properly. So I really just think that, that one factor of my, Biden's mental acuity, I don't think he can handle the job despite how good his 2023 was which again if you've heard me in debates i he's had a great 2023 but it's done really well everything's trending in a great direction his foreign policy is wah, perfect for me so okay. now where can people find you again uh average debate enjoyer on youtube and twitter i'm doing some construction with my channel i didn't like how low quality my videos were hired an editor redoing all my scripts so give me a few months and i'll come out strong well go the give... fact that you're actually an undecided voter is crazy to me go give him a subscribe right he's a great guy we we appreciate you filling in right uh i wanted to get sitch on this but he couldn't make it but it, i think you did great and you were always a treasure um gang um we're, we're gonna get to hutch in a second but i know pondering politics wants to jump on so if you guys can uh stick around for a little bit um him and Artemis Fowl want to want to come on and have a little little one on one. You don't have to, who's, right? If you need to go, so I'll chill. I'll chill for a bit. Who's I might have to be like working on stuff, but who's Artemis Fowl? Because I've seen that name. Uh, and you keep saying it. He's a Wick Orbiter, right? He he loves to support my channel. No, he's just a guy, <laughs> uh, but he's a he's a good guy. He's a very 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 conservative. So, uh, but let's get to Hutch. Hutch, thank you for being here. Closing thoughts, and uh, where can people find you? Yeah, thanks for inviting me. Lactoid's not here, but uh, I wanted to say him an average debate enjoyer. I've done a few debates. Like um, It's been a while since I've been in a debate, so this is my first one in a while. I was a little nervous, too. But um, I really enjoyed the conversation with you guys. I like that we had a conversation. It didn't get toxic. 
uh, which uh, Wick, I don't know if that speaks to your abilities as a moderator, but um, uh, I found I'll it refreshing. I, I'll credit to them. So yeah. very much enjoy the conversation. I'm Hutch on YouTube and Twitch. I don't do a lot of politics stuff on YouTube. Uh, Hutchinson on Twitter. Also, throughout this entire election year, I'm leaving my Discord open. So if I'm live and you want to talk about anything politics, anybody can join. It's discord.gg forward slash Hutch. You just join the Change My Mind channel and you can try to convince me of whatever. As far as the um, topic is concerned, I think that the country and the world stands at a very critical juncture. And um, I believe that uh, who you vote for matters. So um, if there was one thing I would want to push against, it's just the idea that like both parties are essentially the same. I think that's total bullshit. And I think if you're even vaguely on the left, you should really consider um, throwing your support behind Biden this election season, even if it's fucking unpopular online. And I think you can make a good case to do that. But I don't think he's demented. I think he's a very capable president. And um, I would I would be more than fine with have him having a second term. But yeah, thanks for having me on. Oh, no. To anyone to anyone not considering sticking around, uh, Lactoid and Pondering Politics have a very amusing dynamic when they're in the same room together. The, the sexual tension yes, is amusing. Yeah. It's hilarious. Yeah. They're fucking hilarious. Was, uh, yeah, yeah Pondering is setting up. He'll be a minute, right? Um, but no, um, yeah, like, to the point of voting, and if, if, if I may, while we wait, right, like, if, I, if you'll indulge me in a little bit, one of my biggest frustrations is when people think of voting as a Valentine's. Like, oh, I love this candidate. Oh, I'm going to pledge my allegiance to this candidate. Or, oh, I'm voting him because I like him. I don't, I don't, for me, it's not a Valentine's. It's a chess move. You are trying to get the best person, right? The closest person to your, um, whatever you want done, that's, uh, that's possible to get in. Politics is the art of the possible. And when people, right, will denigrate a candidate because they're not 100% on board with what they want, it frustrates me to no end. Pick the pick the one that's 1% closer to what you want. And that's how we get things done. Stop going after uh, a candidate just because he doesn't have all the pieces at play. Once again, this has been Wick TV. Um... It's been a good show, but let's uh let's bring in Artemis Fowl and hopefully pondering uh, hurries up. But let's get him on. Hold on. Also, split ticket, splitting tickets forces them to work together. Okay. Uh, well, I don't know about that. But uh, <laughs> I don't know about that. I'm a I'm a Man, I'm... mansion's out. He's out. He just said he's out. So that's not not gonna happen. Yeah. No, um, like like don't vote solid blue or red down the ticket. I like I put in mix whoever I like more. Democrat the whole way. I do too, but they all happen to be Democrats. So, uh, you know, um, it is what it is. I guess just a difference of opinion here. Um, Artemis, hello. Welcome. Or can you hear us? Well, hello there. Yes. Thank you for the super chats, by the way. Um, uh, you had some opinions that you wanted to yeah. get into. Go ahead. The, the two that are on the Biden side, do you understand what a persuasive argument is supposed to be? I think so. Speaking of non-toxic, let's go ahead and go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, they, no, this is this is this really helpful. I don't vote. Um, I'm I'm far too high up in the government structure to risk that. Um, so, um, the the concept of being persuasive. So when when Wick posed the question of whether or not you would trust an executive, Trump or Biden, and Lactoid and Tyler brought up the mental acuity, and you two brought up January sixth. And not, just the, not just well, January 6th, not just January 6th. I understand. You, uh, hold on. Yeah, yeah, hold on, yeah. yeah, yeah. Let, me, let me finish. You, you brought up January 6th. Mm -hmm. And for the last three years, almost all of the media, besides Fox News, um, has been trumpeting the Cheeto Hitler and the narrative and ev like everything that could possibly be wrong with Trump. And for some reason, 54% of the population is in favor of voting for that man again over his opponent, Joe Biden, who's currently the president. So either the argument is unpersuasive or people really want fascism again. I don't know which one is which, but I'm going to go with the possibly it's an unpersuasive argument. I, I need to understand why the left and Destiny and all the other guys don't seem to understand that. I'm not convinced. We don't. We don't so, so first of all, are you suggesting that the media has been kind to Joe Biden? Is that what you're saying? I, I, oh, in, in compared no, no, really, to who? I'm asking you a question. No, no, compared As, to who? Come on. 
it's compared begging the who, question. Who's who's it compared to? Compare them to whoever you want. I'm asking. Okay, let's well, compare it to uh, Trump. Hold on, hold on, uh, hold on. Has hold the on. media oh, calling to Joe Biden said, compared to Trump? Just, stop, just, stop, 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 stop. Okay, I didn't have to work at all, right? Because everyone was so polite, and now at the at the end, you're gonna make me work. What? Yes. Okay. Anyway, just money. to answer the question, please, Artemis. Right? The Has... answer is yes. He's amazed. The the media is amazingly kind to Joe Biden because when the death rates for COVID vaccine, uh, COVID, uh, um, virus went over uh, Trump's, they took it off the board because they were like, oh, this is not necessary anymore because it was making him look bad. Well, at that point, yes. the vaccine, at that point, the vaccine had been distributed and the overwhelming majority of people that were dying because yeah. of the virus were dying because they didn't get vaccinated okay. or didn't get boosted. It's I guess I should just yeah, well, So what's the point. argument out of curiosity? Because oh, oh, my on. audio was fucked up. What, what oh, was the I, argument? I, I was going to say that the... He's saying that, Joe, he's saying that the media has been kind to Joe Biden, which I find fucking hilarious. So I don't know where you got that impression from. Uh, well, uh, one thing is, is that the, the uh, death rates from COVID vaccine bullshit that you just said, they just, re they just redid that and said that 90% of those numbers were unknown status of COVID vaccination, not didn't have COVID vaccination, unknown status, because they don't test for that. And they admitted that. I, I don't know what data. Yeah, I don't know at. why you're pulling I, this information out as if that was true. You got, wait not, a minute. So you Artemis, are you response. saying that red states are not, are not less vaccinated than blue states? No, yes. that's not what I said. He's, so he's what, pulling what are out, you he's pulling, hold, hold on. He's I'm pulling, pulling out. out. He's pulling, yes, he is. He's pulling out a statistic. Oh, you are so aggro. Can you chill? Can you take a no, breath? There's no chill. There's only ham. Uh, no, the, Listen, the answer, Artemis, well, Artemis I, I'm is I'm trying fine. to answer you go, something. You can yeah, go yeah, ham yeah. on him. He'll, he'll right, go ham go. with you back. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, fine. Yeah, it's fine. I, I, like, I like it. I like it. Yeah. yeah. Pondering and I have done this before. Um, yeah. Sure, the, sure, sure. The, um, the, the, the point I was making, uh, I, I, we could do the vaccine thing, but I'm going to go back to the thing uh, about persuasive argument. There, the majority of the population is supporting the candidate you are claiming to be the, the threat to democracy itself. Yeah. Either there's a failure to communicate or people want the failure of democracy. Well, I made I, the I, point, and tell me if you agree. I made the point yeah. earlier that I, I'm going to approximate maybe 60, 70% of the population. They vote on vibes. These are not people that are getting deep into the weeds on policy. Mm -hmm. These are not people that are getting like... Yep consistent information on politics they're involved in their community they have families they have jobs they don't yep. really get my mom is one of them she just literally could not tell you anything about politics yep. i think that a good chunk of the country are are not engaged in that way and they experience things like higher grocery costs they mm -hmm. typically higher gas prices yep people voters typically blame the president regardless of whether or not they're at fault for that kind of thing and I think the vibes are just like not great, and they haven't been great for the last couple of years. I don't necessarily there, and there are uh, some people in this country that would not mind a benevolent dictator or a mm -hmm. slight shift to fascism. Yeah, yeah. yeah you actually have polling suggests that their MAGA is comfortable with an authoritarian leader. Poll I... after poll after poll reflects this. But number one, number two, Hutch, I actually think you concede too much. Right now, Artemis is hanging his hopes on polling prior to an election. You can cite the previous election <laughs> cycles. Every time MAG has been on the ballot, it gets its yeah. ass kicked. So yeah. um, I, I, if I have to choose between preliminary polling ahead of an election as opposed to the election cycle in 2023, 2022, and 2020, um, Democrats win, baby. They have the I, winning argument. That may change at the time of November. You may have a point, but well, you don't have a point now. I, I guess we could just overlook the fact that 2020 was a era of uh, mass mail-in voting, uh, which heavily favors heavily populated areas, especially states that allow um, ballot harvesting mm -hmm. as, as a legal thing, uh, not illegal. Well, maybe, you, maybe let your let me, party's me, leader, maybe your um, party's leader should have encouraged not, what, Republicans party? to avail I've themselves. Ever, I've I only ever that. voted. Obama. I understand. I, that. I understand that you are nonpartisan, but all of your commentary and all of your criticisms are heavily against one party. So you yeah. are a de facto partisan, whether you like it or not. Maybe your party's leader should have actually encouraged Republicans to avail themselves of mail-in mm -hmm. ballots because, believe it or not, it's not exclusively and inherently biased towards Democrats. Believe it or not, as Laura Ingram pointed out to Donald Trump's face yesterday, mm -hmm. well, Florida does a lot of mail-in ballots, and yeah. you won Florida. Yeah. Yeah. So real quick, real quick, real quick. Hey, let me jump in here because we're talking about uh, political polling shifting and demographics and whatnot. This is my whole thing. So Josiah is right about those elections over the last three years. Not a lot of it is because of mail-in voting. 
a lot of it is who is more likely to vote in off year elections and vote in special elections. And you look at it, it's a lot of it is suburban women, suburban people, middle to upper class. And a lot of those people swung from Trump in 2016 to Biden in 2020. Trump mm-hmm. is growing his base with a lot of minority growth, especially black men and Hispanic. You tend to not see them vote in these special elections or whatnot nearly as often. So a lot of the people that shifted party because of Trump are the type of people that participate in the elections that Democrats keep seeing win after win after win. It's yeah, an observable I mean, trend that Democrats I mean, have been overperforming in the polls for like three yeah. years now. Voters are pissed about Roe. That's not going away. Yeah, yeah so Hutch, uh, I'm just saying, don't concede it. Going don't, don't make the point. Say, oh, Artemis, cool. You have polling on your side. We actually had the oh, path three elections. Hold on. Hold on. Let me. Let me. Let me. We, we, we do got to hold on. We do got to let Artemis respond. He's getting like. like uh, he's getting. Like, hit. The, the, right? Lacto the, is just laughing instead of the backing unique, his boy up. The but, unique scenarios around the last three years cannot be understated. That do not reflect any of the last twenty or thirty, where you had an era of mass mail in voting. You had an era where they repealed Roe v. Wade, which destroyed almost all credibility that the Republican Party had in 2022. That it almost handed over the fucking. Well, it did hand over. Hold the on, Senate. can you elaborate on that? What do you mean by the fact that they repealed Roe v. Wade destroyed the credibility of the Republican Party? Can you? And also, it, can you well, explain how that will be different by 2024? Because every well, well, okay. ballot is still going to exist. Roe v. Wade will still be repealed yeah. in okay. 2024. So, have you explained yeah. your opposition to mail-in ballots? By the way, you're talking about people voting. They're just voting. Okay, so when we were talking about mail-in val- uh, ballots, as opposed to. Um, What's the the uh, the military one I did? Um, absentee. absentee. Absentee is a lot stricter in terms of how it was done, at least when I did it, when I was in the military, when I voted for Obama. Um, as according to mail-in ballots in 2020, the amount of signature rejections was less than 1% in many states, which is highly irregular, considering that the average is like 5 to 10% rejection rate uh, for curing, which none mm-hmm. of that was done. So I don't know why you know that there just... are regulations in place. So like a Democrat and a Republican has to monitor. Yeah. Like these. So, so what are you yeah. alleging here? That, that the, the, that there are people on record saying that the curing process didn't take place. I don't give a, f- uh, wh- they had multiple, uh, like, okay. So Georgia, for example, they did yeah. three separate audits in Georgia. In fact, they mm-hmm. tallied the every, they tallied every, retallied every single vote in Georgia, and they did mm-hmm. not find any. Do you understand the difference between an audit and a recount? See, the, they did a recount in Arizona, though. They did signature verification. They looked for fucking yeah. bamboo in the ballot. They and they had Democrats and Republicans. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. In, in Arizona, in Arizona, because I brought this up to Wick and to Dev, the Senate in Arizona found that the signature verification process was not followed, and a massive amount of them failed verification when they checked. Through that audit that the Senate did, that it was not caught during the during the 2020 election. Let's As for Georgia, Brian time. Kemp is according is under almost impeachment by the uh, by the Senate in Georgia for lying under oath that he did an actual audit. You, you, He's you currently listen, refusing listen, to. I would need to see links for this. I'll be honest with you. I mean, Artemis, I mean, uh, Artemis is a good guy and all, but just be, with all the with all the accusations that have been levied the past three years I, or four years, I would like to see a link. I, trust I would too, to just because I want to learn more about it. I find by the way, Lactoy, good to see you, baby. What's up, man? What's up? Uh, there is, yes, a, there but... is a legal remedy to mm-hmm. establish fraud. Yep. If you're going to make an allegation, yep. you adjudicate it through the courts. Mm-hmm. The Trump administration had ample opportunity to establish fraud and failed uh-huh. in every. You can't. So failed? I'm sorry. You simply say, telling me like, well, come yeah. on, come on, come on. I, I, I don't know not why. An argument. I don't know That's why. That's not an argument. You have to demonstrate that yes. actual fraud occurred. And, and yes. I'm not going to just take your word on it that like, hey, don't you think it's kind of nice. funny that you... nail and ballots are a thing? Like, how is that an argument? Hold on, hold you, talk on, about... you get hold a second, on. just send yeah. us the link. I'll, if you send, don't it, mind I'll send it to yeah. Andre and I'll- I found, I found the Judge Naper uh, saying that this was done illegally in Arizona. And he said the Supreme Court ruled on Naper's claim as well. I don't know about that, but I know that the Arizona Senate found that like, like at least two hundred thousand signatures were five dollars from Zephyr Hash correctly. to say Trump should appoint Artemis Fowl as his attorney. Clearly, he knows more and has evidence to prove that even a billionaire's legal team doesn't. Well, oh, the I, issue I, is what well, the issue is, is that most of the rulings were done on standing, and there's no actual way to allow Texas to contest like Pennsylvania's fucking uh, uh, rule set. Right. 
Well, yeah, I mean, it's, 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 it's whether or not it, whether or not they have actually have standing to sue. Well, they Paul technically yeah, yeah. should because if mm -hmm. a if a Pennsylvania decides to uh, change its uh, voting against its own constitution, I don't understand how that's. If legal. you get dismissed on standing, that's the court telling you you no, didn't even not. fucking you didn't even fucking bother making a no, case. We, no, 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 hold, no, on, hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. We have a lawyer case. that can explain this instead of people who aren't lawyers arguing about it all day. Lactoid, what? Uh, give us a little bit of elaborate on this, please, for us. I I have not done a full analysis of this specific issue. I'm not going to go ahead and just pull something out of my ass. I Warren, I've done a full analysis for on the strong stances with no evidence. I've done, I've done a full no, I've done a full analysis. What does no standing like, generally mean? Yeah, no what standing. is to standing? What does that mean? Yeah, so generally speaking, like within courts, in order to get the courts to to rule, right? Uh, in order to be a valid party. There needs to be some kind of issue that they can rule on. There needs to be some kind of question, right? And so you can't just like go to the courts and say, well, I don't like this policy. I think it's illegal. You should strike it down. No, that's not going to be enough. What you have to do is show like, look, I have a right to do this thing or whatever, and I wasn't allowed to do it. Uh, and then I was hurt. So yeah. I, I am hurt. injury, right? So yeah, yeah, there's injury. So you have to come yeah. fix my injury. So of course mm -hmm. you have to do your job. Otherwise I'm going to remain hurt. Right. And right. then if you can establish that, generally you have standing. Um, generally, with a government, it gets really iffy because technically the government needs to consent to even being sued in the first place because of sovereign immunity. There's all sorts of other like caveats there. But Latins, generally, I also have a question for Lactoid Wick when when we get a minute because I we've he and I have not had a chance to vent our sexual tension. We will, we will and he get, said something we will get earlier. To the sexual stuff, but no. first I want to get through Artemis's point. Ar Artemis, finish your point, and then I'll smell his hair. Fun. The, the the biggest the biggest issue here is you have a large percent of the population that is like he said shallow you know not not heavily involved in you know politics and stuff like that they're doing eye tests they're, they're seeing what is affecting them around them um, and it is not the fault of the people not having the time because they have to work is the fault of the Democratic Party not having a persuasive argument that is compelling enough to persuade people that what is affecting them isn't what it seems to be. And that is a failing because nobody's going to give a shit about January 6th when they, they didn't have $500 emergency funds five years ago. Why the fuck are they going to have it now when everything's 30% more expensive? Like they, they, they have bigger concerns on their plate. And the only person that they can even think could fix the economy right now, which is the biggest issue aside from immigration with, what was it? Uh, abortion being like 11% caring about. It might have gone lower since then. What, what, uh, what do you think Biden could do right now to, quote, fix the economy? Um, Let's be very clear. Hang on. Let's be very, very clear here, because I think we, I think Artemis has a really good point here, and I'm not being facetious, but I also think yeah. some of the point was shit, and I just want to correct the shit part first, which is the if you look at polling, actually mm -hmm. consumer sentiment and polling on the economy is very yeah. high, and it's getting higher. The difference is people are not crediting Biden for it. Yeah, so I just want to be very clear. It's not like it was six or eight months ago where everyone thought that the economy was in the toilet. Pulling on the economy is very good. Consumer average. sentiment um, on the economy is very good. It's just that they're not connecting it to oh, Biden. But it sounds like all your arguments go back to the fact that Democrats are bad at messaging or are not messaging. Right well, right. no. Uh, I mean, there's a there's a distinct issue other than that. I mean, uh, ripping up all of the border policies uh, and then turning around blaming Trump for the, the border policies you ro ripped up. And then saying that, oh, I don't have the power to do so when you went on a... What border policies did he rip up? Um, he, he tried uh, for three years to get rid of... Well, not three years. It was like multiple years to get rid of Title 42. Um, these Title things. 40... Uh, yeah, but Biden maintained Title 42. No, no, he, he tried to. to. No, no, I well, understand yes. that he didn't... Well, hang on. He didn't I, want to, but he did. And then the court struck it down. Got so what else he got? I got this. He, he got rid of catch and release. Who got rid of catch and release? Uh, Joe Biden, one of, one of, or, uh, oh, he brought back catch and release. I'm sorry, he got rid of a uh, stay in Mexico. One catch of and release was remain in never, Mexico. Never, yeah, stay in Mexico never, policy. Catch and release never stopped during. Yeah, I'm during sorry, Trump. I misspoke. I misspoke. Yeah, I'm sorry. okay. Yeah, yeah. So, so, but if you look, and Tyler, you should appreciate this because you you like data. I would encourage you to check out the Cato Institute, and and Lactoid should I love the Cato Institute because it's a libertarian think tank. 
Uh, yeah, exactly. Well, you will hate them now because they're jerking off Biden left, right, and center. Um, pro immigration. Are they yeah, like uh, Koch the, brothers backed or something like that, or is it Murdoch? I can't. Remember uh, I'm not name. sure. So the Cato Institute has a really great report, a comprehensive report. Um, Remain in Mexico. There is no compelling data to suggest that Remain in Mexico was single-handedly responsible for the reduction in immigration. The reason I bring that up is because. Biden also did. He also applied remain in Mexico for a time, and we didn't see any reduction. As a matter of fact, the rates of contacts at the border <laughs> continue to increase. So there's spurious data with respect to that. Uh, so remain in Mexico got? wasn't an anti-immigration policy. Remain in Mexico was an anti-asylum abuse policy, and it actually did help significantly, and there is data on this, to reduce asylum abuse for economic purposes. Do, are you aware that in 2000? Are you aware that in 2019 there was a huge spike in yeah. order apprehensions? Uh, yes. So, that, so, so then it went down during COVID. But, but we have no idea what that spike would have looked like had COVID not happened. So, uh, and Biden is also secure, deporting man. people. Biden's also deporting people at a at a greater rate than Trump did. So, uh, yeah. So but that being said, a lot more people are coming. So hold on, hold on. So stay in Mexico was the first one. That was an asylum abuse policy. When Biden came into office, he started ignoring immigration laws, and he. Uh, what immigration law did he ignore? Of the uh, crossing the border illegally is illegal. So he conceived a visa program. That Wait a minute. He's being sued yeah. right now through Texas because of this visa program because he didn't have the What was he ignoring, Tyler? Authority. What was he ignoring? What do you mean? Like you they the had border, the capacity. So are you, are you are you making the case yeah. that Biden had the capacity to detain people and chose not to? Yes. That's not true. Instead, they invented not a true. visa program, bypassed Congress. And millions of people have come in on Biden's visa program. He's being sued right now. I know Ken Paxton in Texas is suing him. I'm pretty sure other states are suing him for that. So, I understand. So in the real Congress. world, so in the real world, what happened is this: manpower, resources, and border policies under Biden are virtually identical to what they were under Trump. They're just yep. they're more humane. The the number of people crossing the border has increased. So when your when your resources remain static, but the problem increases, you have a delta, right? So what happens is because detention centers are over full, mm -hmm. Biden is having to pick and choose who to let into the country. Uh, and who to keep in detention centers. And the Supreme Court, even this right-wing Supreme Court that Lactoid loves so much, they reaffirmed that God Emperor yes. Biden Prince has the authority. Have that authority. That, that God have Emperor that Biden has the authority to make those distinctions. And he's so, led in too many with his visa program. And that's so why what, he's so what should goal. happen is so what should happen is Congress should increase resources and manpower as mm -hmm. the president has requested at the border and then do comprehensive border reform because people say, well, you don't need new border laws. That's simply not true. Donald Trump himself in 2019 demanded that Congress mm -hmm. take action and pass legislation for the border. And when he didn't get it, what did he do? He shut down the government. Anyone who says, suggests otherwise, the hypocrites. He also, Trump Trump hold on, hold on. he also took money from the Pentagon fund. That's rather <laughs> vague. Can, his, can, his can I add context? Uh, yeah, context please. is something. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, there's there's a lot really, really quick. When you say, when you said that the Supreme Court ruled in favor of the Biden administration, which I'm not going to lie, it did, right? It, it struck right. down the, it struck down the, shut up. It struck down the injunction um, that was uh, through the, 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 the Fifth Circuit, right? It was it struck it down, and the injunction mm -hmm. was that the feds can't go and destroy state property. Oh, no, no, I'm not talking about that. Wait a minute, but, I'm sorry. But, but that's important because that was the major ruling recently. No, 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 I'm sorry. Like to, we're, talking about two, we're talking about two different yeah. cases, I think, buddy. Okay, well, not, the, re I'm, the reason I'm I want to talk about this case, though, is because you're oh. talking about how they're virtually identical. Um, I, I'm, I'm just maybe, – maybe I missed this. Was the Trump administration destroying uh, Texas's uh, fencing on the border? Was Texas putting up fencing at the border? Yes. During Trump? Maybe, maybe yes. they didn't they were have paying to. For them okay, Artemis Wait, is so saying that, that they were. I, yeah, they they, I, I they were did the Lone Star program and all that stuff were putting up border fencing during the Obama era too. They, they I, I don't I don't recall I don't recall Texas putting doing what they're doing now under Biden, what they did under Trump. Oh, yeah, because, because by the way, if they it. did, if they did, that would also be an indictment of Trump's management of the border that Texas felt the need to do it. So I win no matter what. To well, they didn't have any. Wait, so is this an indictment on. of Biden's handling the border because Texas feels the need to put up wing? Yeah, That's the conservative like, argument, right? The conservative the argument is that Texas feels that, that they have to uh, put these uh, mm -hmm. physical barriers, the razor wire wrap buoys and whatnot in order yeah, to compensate yeah. for the federal government's failure to enforce the border. Yeah, yeah well, but they, they were doing, coming to destroy it. Wait a minute. 
Wait, wait, I understand, but wait a minute. What The reason I say I win no matter what is if they actually were doing that under Trump too, that means that that was by conservative logic a failure of the Trump administration to enforce border policy. Okay. So Trump sucks no matter what. No, okay. no, no. It's, it's, it's not a win because the feds came and destroyed it because the, under the Biden administration, the feds were destroying that wire. No, no, no. Yeah, and we're Texas talking about- to get an, And I'm Texas saying, got an injunction to keep that wiring from being destroyed and the Supreme Court struck down that injunction. No, no, no. Also, it, Biden administration me sold off a lot of the border I'm saying the fact that there. if if Texas felt the need to do that under Trump, it would be because Trump wasn't managing the border well. Otherwise, Texas wouldn't okay. need to put those barriers. So, so up. You're, you're you're missing me though. I understand what you're. I saying. understand we're missing each other. Yeah. I, I understand, but, but what I'm saying is that on top of this, right, the feds under Biden are coming in destroying that state property that Texas is putting up because Texas feels the need to secure its Do we border, need to right? do another de border uh, debate sometime? I think we. Do. I don't think that's I, why I, they're I, doing I, it. I am just border discord. Why. Hold on, hold on. Before we move on from this, I, I want to point out that at no point did NGOs work hand in glove with the federal government under uh, Trump administration to funnel people into other fucking states. And we've seen this in countless airports. I don't know why we're just ignoring it as if that's not happening and why there's so many people flooding the border because it is so inviting. And that the or it could be that, it could be that the rise of authoritarianism across the 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 so planet, they're running also through the climate change, also climate change are causing massive shifts in global sure. migration patterns, things this like is, that. This, this, this is this being a, really vague. Here. I wanna, you know, hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah, no, the so lactoid, I get it. Hold on, hey, lactoid's conservative. Oh He's my never God. heard of climate change. If you guys on, don't listen, it to him. I will mute you. Okay, I don't want to. We were having such a great cordial discussion, and now I have to step in. And put my <laughs> I like foot this. on the. This, this is great. Yeah, but I wanted to. I want to make sure that that Hutch and Adam both get a chance to have their say because they're. I know Adam's sitting there like a lost puppy right now, right? And Hutch has been trying. So Hutch. Hutch go has ahead. been smiling so, watching so, this happen. <laughs> it's a fun conversation. I mean, yeah, so, no. so a couple things. I'll make it brief. But the, the I, I don't think that the Biden administration moving to cut like razor wire and get rid of buoys in the Rio Grande is evidence that he wants people to just flood into the country illegal, illegally. To me, it's evidence of the fact that he doesn't want people to, like, be maimed or killed by, you know, like if you're a single mom coming up from Guatemala or whatever because your son has some gang that's threatening them. Like, I don't think that person should necessarily risk, uh, like, severe bodily injury or death by coming into the country. And it, it just speaks to a different a difference of opinion in how we view these things. Like, when I look at what's going on, I think it... It, it indicates that America is a, a, a fantastic country. There's a lot of economic opportunity here. People want to come here for a better life. I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing. I don't think that means you need to get rid of all vetting, but I think it speaks to our strength as a country. And I, I think it, uh, and, and when you contrast it with like Republicans, they see it as like an invasion of military age men. You know, they're setting up sleeper cells in the United States for a Manchurian candidate code word where they're just going to launch an attack. There's people that, legitimately believe this crazy shit and one more thing president uh, uh former president trump likes to talk about how he did this big beautiful wall right if we saw uh, border apprehensions and people coming up in larger numbers mm -hmm. doesn't that speak to the fact that his border wall policy was a fucking abysmal failure no that... hold on hold on no the answer is no um the reason being is because you can have increase in apprehensions it's <laughs> while having the same amount of people flowing over the border, it just means they're getting better at capturing people and and um, and running them through the system. I thought the Can border wall was supposed to fix this issue. Well, I want to okay. interject in here real quick because we're, we're really talking about illegal immigrants as a vague ne nebulous, and there's actually specific different groups that we need to be talking about. So first and foremost, it's estimated that every single year you get about 600,000 gotaways. These are your classically referred to illegal immigrants. Jump over the border, never apply for asylum, never say you're here, just get in there. About 600,000 a year. So about 2 million guests, guesstimate, have come in since Biden's taken off. Those aside, about 2.6 million people have come here on asylum. Now, asylum abuse is rampant, the backlog right now, and this does speak to Josiah's point. We could put more money into it and increase the backlog since stay in Mexico is no longer not incentivizing this, but eight years an economic migrant gets to come to the United States and work before they fail their asylum test and get deported. So it's people coming here just to make money for economic reasons, abusing asylum. That's not all 2.5 million asylees. 
but that's definitely a good chunk. The vast majority of these people pay taxes into a system that they can't benefit they, they, from. They do. They're, and and uh, they commit, yes, they and they commit crime, and they commit crime at a lower rate than native. I'm not saying. I'm not saying. I'm not. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. You mean that's not true? You mean that's not true? I'll get to that. I'll get to that. The third point. There's a large, the largest group of illegal, technically illegal immigrants that have come here apply with Biden's visa program. And if Biden's visa program is illegal, like these states are saying, if he bypassed Congress and made an illegal plan with authority he doesn't have, all those people are technically here illegally too. So we're talking about three different groups of people here when we talk about illegal immigrants, and all three of them have different solutions. Now, stay in Mexico would have assigned, solved the asylum process. Democrats didn't want to do it. Okay, there are other ways to solve that problem. And what Josiah said is perfect. It would have solved that problem. But that doesn't solve the other two giant groups of illegal immigrants here. So we definitely need to address the 5 million people here, some on Biden's visa program and the others that snuck in. Well, there is one. That the, one of the Democratic politicians has offered up a, a uh, citizen for service. Uh, bill, which is probably the main aim since we've been missing all of our recruitment numbers for the military. Yeah. That's, Trump? that's why I, I don't think it's sleeper cells. I think it's literally yeah. that they're using manpower to uh, restock the fucking military because they fucked over a massive portion of them during the COVID thing. Yeah. You're well, alleging Trump that the government is intentionally allowing massive amounts of Ill illegal immigration so they can uh, some of them are armed think, services? Think, well, some of them, uh, like you can't, you can't have gang members, obviously, in the military, but you, we have like people being recorded with uh, illegal immigrants being monitored by fucking drill sergeants in airports. Like that's not, that's not like fake. That's literally caught on camera by fucking state representatives. I think asking why the fuck is this so, going on? I'm sorry, I'm sorry to interrupt, but unless Wick wants to do something different, there, there, I don't want this to be like a just yeah, yeah. a solid immigration round two thing. I'll, suffice to say, we disagree. Uh, yeah. I think that does merit its own conversation. But I did yeah. have a question for Lactoid directly yeah, for with it. a comment yeah, that he please. made in his closing I'll, arguments. Uh, but, before you do that, before you do that, I do want to give Adam a chance here because Adam. Oh yeah, I'm down to wrap up the border section. I okay, just want to make sure. I thought it was funny when uh Josiah and Artemis both hopped in here, and you could tell they had been watching the debate and they had all this bottled well, we up love, rage. We love they just like it. they hopped in like they had so much to say that ready to say basically. No, no. So Artemis, not, Artemis is a great sparring partner. I yeah. like I like when you first hear him, you're like, damn, he is hostile as fuck. What's going on? But he likes he likes rough play. I, I'm from the old oh. era of the internet where okay. internet blood sports was a thing. And, but yeah, uh, I want to give if, if give we get a, off if we get off stage and like into like a private mm -hmm. DM, I'll calm down. But I like yeah. there's yeah, a, no there, foreplay, yeah. just straight into sex. I want to oh, okay. yeah, I want to give I want to give Josiah I want to give Josiah the yeah. mic to ask Blackwood <laughs> the question. I'm I'm just curious. Cool. And and we are going to wrap this up a little bit because I'm hungry. But uh, go ahead. Well, why can't you? We all like mukbang or whatever. Just eat on camera. Yeah, I gotta go get the food. I gotta go get it. DoorDash. Fucking A, can't you trust I us? I live just in the AFK fucking for a boonies. Minute. I don't have yeah, DoorDash. Just go AFK what is for a shit? minute. All the cool people are here. Plus, are they all here? <laughs> Lactoid. They are, yes. I'm just kidding. Wow. I love that guy. Liz, I love that guy. Listen, okay, Lactoid, for real. Okay, you said in your close. I, so I was not listening to the whole thing. I caught like the last 10 minutes of the debate. And what I heard you say was, you said, I guess, in your intro, you, you said in your outro that you also said in your intro that Biden has pudding for brains. And I am curious. I won't even fight you on that. Do you think Trump has pudding for brains? I'm curious. I want to clarify one thing. In my intro, I said tapioca pudding. And in my I closing, see. I just said Touché. pudding. So I see. Quite he the is same downgraded. Just... So he's not even tapioca anymore. In the span of this conversation, he went from tapioca to just fucking like a, like a pull tab. The you know, yeah, just lunchables. Like, the, 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 like absolute Lunchables pudding. Terrible. Great comparison. Great comparison. Yeah. Lunch, yeah. Um, do I think that Trump has pudding for brains? Uh, I don't. Can you clarify what you think his cognitive states? Because, because of course, my question is, you know, do you think? Well, actually, no. I'm just going to leave it open ended. If you don't think he has pudding for brains, how would you, is it semi solid? Is it Jello for brains? What is it? Like when he says that magnets don't. Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. No, no. Yeah, no, no. I, no. Listen, just, we could. We could. That's I, why I, I want him. I want him to so, answer without us having to bury him in a gazillion examples because he's fucked on this potentially, mm -hmm. depending on what he says. I don't right. think he's going to say Trump is a genius. I don't think he's going to say that. No. So. Well, in some regards he is, but generally no. Okay. Um, so what I what I'm referring to by pudding is, in my mind, I'm thinking about something that's <laughs> melting and falling apart and mm -hmm. and would fall out if it wasn't encapsulated in his skull, right? And that's what that's what I think is happening to Biden, where you have this person who is incredibly sharp during I was rewatching the vice president debates. I was impressed, actually. Sure. And I think that Paul he, Ryan. Yeah. yeah. And I, I think he comes from a background where you have to be pretty smart to get to where he got. And I think he is 
uh, smart. Um, and so he, he has got this, this background. And then you are seeing a decline, a decline that's noted both in the Her report, and I think through uh, video uh, evidence as well, just by watching him, you see a decline that's consistently getting worse and worse, like a train that's picking up speed, right? With Trump, I think you have somebody who has doesn't have a very wide, the same base of knowledge. I don't think that he uh, is somebody who came from a background where he had to know as many things as Biden does. But mm -hmm. I don't think that his brain's falling apart in the same way. I think that you know, four years from now, Biden's going to be like incomprehensible. Trump is going to be still comprehensible, but he's still going to be the kind of rambling showman that he. That can he I? Gives. Can I, I? Okay. And Artemis, I assume you probably do. You feel the same way? I think he's not as smart as he thinks he is. Sure. But that but is. I mean, uh, but it's an indictment on all of his political opponents of why they can't seem to put the man away. So, so here's here's my question. You tell me what I'm getting wrong. So, part of the reason that I'm told that we should believe that Biden's in a state of cognitive decline, a couple mm -hmm. of things. The Her report, but prior to the Her report, it was polling. Prior to that, it was what we've seen on video. Yeah. Now, my question for both of you is, as Hutch was getting to, we have plenty of video, maybe not as much, maybe more, I don't know. I haven't done a one-to-one -one comparison, but it's not one or two instances of Trump spectacularly fucking up mm -hmm. on video. Yep. confusing leaders just like biden did cc yep. as the president of uh mexico instead of egypt trump did it with orban and turkey and it's at an erdogan and stuff like that I we know. have we have the magnets thing you put water under magnet yeah. magnet go fry mm -hmm. we have all the shit and we also actually have polling too yeah. poll after poll after poll shows now it's worse for biden i'll go ahead and concede that but a majority of americans also think that Trump is unfit for office. It ranges from 53 to 60 percent, depending on the polling. It's much higher for Biden. Again, I'm going to cop mm -hmm. to that. But if for we have video reasons. evidence and polling that that Trump is not mentally fit for office, why mm -hmm. do you resist it? Why don't you say, you know what, Josiah, I actually do think Trump is not mentally fit for office. I just think that that Biden is less mentally fit for office. Yeah, who do you want to go first? You and Mia Lactoid. I'd like Lactoid first and yeah, could go, go in the it. same order. Yeah. So um, I think the, 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 the absence of institutional evidence of uh, lack of cognitive ability, I think, is pretty big, right? Where you have the her report for Biden. Trump volunteered to take the cognitive exam. There was no issue there. Biden is skipping the cognitive exam, right? There, those are major aspects that kind of uh, major distinctions, I think, between Trump and Biden. That kind of give me pause. Um, on my evaluation of watching Trump, he's this bombastic showman who talks way more and is is constantly uh, going off about all sorts of things. He kind of just like goes tangent to tangent to tangent. And I think that in some ways this manner of speech has benefited him. But I I, I don't think just I, on my evaluation, like watching him talk and and watching him operate. I, I'm not seeing the kind of mental decline that I would consider putting for brains, right? Don't, but um, don't, shouldn't the quality of the tangents matter? We can all go on tangents. I don't think any of us would say something as consistently stupid as the shit that Trump says on a regular basis in his tangents. Like, I, I hear you. He has meandering speeches, right? But they often veer off again into incoherence. I know you've seen the clip of the magnet yeah. thing. You dig what? Magna underwater, windmills, killing whales. You've seen all this. I, 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 don't, I don't think that he's scientifically literate, okay? That's critically important. That doesn't necessarily mean your brain's <laughs> putting. It just means that you haven't, like, learned he's dumb. about the world, right? There's, he's dumb. And, well, I, he's uneducated on science. I'll say yeah. that. What yeah. about politics? I, I'm, I'll I, get to you, Artemis. I promise. Yeah, I'll get sorry, to you. Sorry, you can go through all this. But I just, I want to, I want to at least like close the door with Lactoid before sure. I open the much bigger door with you because I know you've got a lot to say. But what about, um, yeah, I know you say he's uneducated on politics or on, on science, science, excuse me. Yeah. What about politics? Where is that education relative to Biden? Because, for example, I've had this argument recently and I said, I think that if you forced Joe Biden and Donald Trump right now, w pop quiz on politics, Putting for brains Biden could answer infinitely more about like the intricacies of the relationship between Gaza and Israel, whereas Trump would be like, fuck, and fake a heart attack to get taken out of the room. 1, Do you think that Biden percent. is more educated still and more knowledgeable on politics than Donald Trump? 
You look like you're uh, thinking about it. You don't I, I don't, I, think about maybe, it maybe, maybe, maybe this will be something that you guys can laugh about, but I don't honestly know, right? Like, yeah, I'm, okay. if I'm thinking about them it sitting depends. together, mm -hmm. just I, what, here's, here's what I see happening. Here, what I see happening is, um, I think what Trump often does is he knows what his audience wants to hear. And so he's going to try to turn every question into going back and talking about how he's going to billions and billions and really pronounce the B. Um, I think that's what he likes to do. But if you if you you know got them serious for a moment, and you're like you have to answer this exact question. Like, what do you think is gonna like be the case? To be frank with you, I I don't think either of them would have answers that would be that unsatisfactory. I think both of them would would sort of understand some general uh, if you ask, things about the overall situation. If you ask Trump about like the origins and the evolution of the conflict in Israel, you think he would be able to give you a, a cogent answer? I don't think Biden would. I don't think either of them would be able. Biden to. would. I, yeah, I'm, I'm surprised. I, 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 we have no way to, to prove that, but I'm, I'm with Hutch. I think it's, it's still even now. I am pretty too. Lopsided. As long Biden as Biden had a blood transfusion that, that day, if he yeah, had a blood but, transfusion, but, but just to be clear. Just to be clear, this is a little bit different than the original claim I made sure, because sure. even if I'm wrong on this, that Biden does have like a stronger base of knowledge, which I do sure. think he does, generally right. speaking, um, right. I still think his brain's <laughs> Now, I guess my last question for you is this. You say that, you know, Trump volunteered to take the cognitive test. Yeah, yeah. Biden did not. Fair enough. What does it say to you? And, and maybe, uh, well, again, I'll just I'll leave it open ended. The fact that Biden will... Um, let's say, sit down for interviews and not just plead the fifth. Depositions and not just plead the fifth. So, so like, for, so no, for I, example, well, what, so we're talking about the Her report, right? President Biden agreed, volunteered to be interviewed, correct? Yeah. Okay. Um, he, I presumably could have asserted executive privilege. As a matter of fact, he could have done it over the report itself and really fucking torpedoed this thing, potentially, chose not to. I don't know about that, but maybe. Potentially, sure. It would be a hard battle, I think, for I don't even know if her would have any standing at that point, certainly to to contest executive privilege, perhaps Republicans in general could. But we'll set that aside. Biden felt confident enough to sit down for a deposition. He was interviewed by the special counsel. Uh, Trump did not. Does could that imply certain things about cognitive ability? Biden was like, you know what, I can handle this, and Trump was like, fuck no, I can't. I don't want to sit down for this. No, I actually think it might somewhat do the opposite. And, and this is what I, you know, I always tell, and, and some clients never listen to you, but what I always say is, uh, uh, like, don't fucking talk more than you have to, yeah. and uh, don't. You know, Trump if, usually if you, does, right? If you, I know, I know, right? But apparently this time. It, in the rarest of occasions, he listens to his attorney and he uh, doesn't answer questions sometimes, right? But if he's taking the fifth and he's not answering, um, I don't, you know, I'm not going to hold that against him in terms of like evaluating his, his brain state um, because legally that can be a smart idea. So I don't know. No, in I fact, in fact you, could argue, you could argue that even doing the interviews may have demonstrated a lack of judgment on Biden's part. He forgot arguably. He the effort he was making was an effort at it. He was trying to display transparency. He was trying to like very visibly cooperate. Whereas with Mueller, uh, I don't even think Mueller got an interview with Trump. No, he Trump got written. Trump, he got written. He got written answers. answers. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, I, I, I said this though, I, and I said this, and I agree. This is when her goes into this. Why he's talking about the differences in terms of evaluating whether or not Biden thought he was committing a crime. It's sure. pretty much established that he broke the law, and it's pretty much established mm. that he knew those documents were classified. The question is just, did he know that he didn't have the right to have them? That's the only like open question. And I do think that there's like when you look at everything all together, her it's not just some like you know shit he pulls out of nowhere. I think her does have like arguments to say like Biden probably just like fucking forgot. He probably just didn't think about it. He probably just didn't know. He probably was just wrong, right? You would make the same argument if it wasn't, but like you could make the same argument that it wasn't Biden. When we're talking about someone's ability to uh, recall things from like eight or 10 or 12 years ago, or someone having the capacity of just like noticing they had something in the garage and then forgetting the next day, that's not limited to somebody who has, that could happen to you, that could happen to me. That I, happen I know, to but, but the critical element, the critical element is again, when you're on tape in 2017 saying that you have the classified documents and then you don't do anything about it afterwards, the question is why? And how her answers that question is there's a reasonable chance a jury would believe that he said that 
and then he just fucking forgot it the next day. Weren't the classified documents? I so you have to you have to brush me up on this. Weren't some of the classified documents that Biden mm-hmm. referred to and that her refers to in the report are his journals, which did contain classified information, but he mm-hmm. wrote them down himself. And even her admits uh, it's, it's it's certainly ambiguous as to whether or not President Biden, in good faith, could have considered those classified documents because they were part of his well, personal once again, records. Once again, her said the evidence falls short of proving that. No, Mr. no, no I'm, with, I'm, with, well, well, I'm with you. Well, I'm with you. But it no, goes but, on to say that is that he knew these notebook passages were classified and that he intended to share classified information. You keep saying like, and oh, that he knew they were illegal. About it, her saying. Her saying he he might not even known that what he had was classified. So I'm and sorry. I'm, wait, wait, I'm sorry because willful here is a legal term of art they're using in this report, and like the report mentions this, right? There is a page in which they talk about the Supreme Court case that defines this, and willful here is a standard that goes beyond just intentional. So when he when her is saying that they can't establish that Biden did this like specific thing willfully in ter- in terms of meeting the requirements to to be found guilty of this, what he's saying is that. He's not convinced that Biden or he's not convinced that he could prove to a jury that Biden uh, knew that what he was doing was illegal and that he intended to break the law anyway. Mm -hmm. Why did he not intend to break the law anyway? And then and when that asked with that question, her goes into all of the problems with Biden's mental state and acuity. That's that's the reasoning he that her gives. On, no, no, no. Hold, right here, he says we were unable to determine how the marked classified Afghanistan doc, documents got from the White House, where Mr. Biden possessed them as vice president, to his Delaware home. He mm-hmm. says there are alternative explanations for how the Afghanistan documents got into the garage. He says mm-hmm. we find the evidence as whole insufficient to meet the government's burden of proving that Mr. Biden willfully retained the Afghanistan documents in the Virginia home. Again, again, you're referencing a different part, and this is because you're looking yeah, at I a summary. Wanna, I want to make sure that uh, yeah, you, Adam you're, you're referencing, here too. So. Yeah, you're referencing a different part. Um, it's not about how they got there. You're right. There is a question about how they got there. The point is, when you're on audio saying that you know about them, I found the class, the classified stuff downstairs. When he says that in 2017, when he's giving classified information to his ghostwriter for his book, that's the evidence we're looking at. Wait a minute. Like, now we have it that he's saying it. Yeah, but I have the I have the her report up. When he's referring to I found all the classified stuff downstairs, he's referring to his journals that he wrote for Obama. And yes, he thought there was precedent, the not the Afghanistan document. No, no, because downstairs in those boxes where like this stuff is refer- you're referring to, there is classified documents that have classified stamped right at the top, not just his handwritten notes. There was a ton of handwritten notes, too. And then her goes into questioning, well, what about these handwritten notes? Are these also classified? They are going to be having classified information. And he did give that classified information to his ghostwriter. But Reagan kind of did the same thing with his stuff. And so there's like a whole evaluation as to specifically with the handwritten stuff, not the other confident, like Mark confidential documents. Uh, Again, her stuff. Again, her (laughs) said that that he cannot prove that he knew he was giving him classified information. You can shake your head. Willfully. yeah, legal right. term I, I would just invite you guys to look at page 386. That's what I'm on too. Disputed. Yeah, yeah where, of the her report where her makes the leap that Biden is referring to classified documents, but doesn't prove that that's what Biden's referring to. And as a matter of fact, there's evidence in the interview that Biden was referring specifically to the memorandum he personally wrote to Barack Obama when Biden was vice okay. president. Pause, so again, there's pause, pause, there. pause, pause before yeah. we go on. Um, I'll turn this into an audience decision, gang. I'm super hungry, but this is good conversation. But you got to pay me if you want. If I'll if, pay you. How much money do you? I'll pay you fucking right now. I'm enjoying this oh, conversation. Big shot, sure. Josiah. Okay. Okay. Right. I, okay. I don't. I don't get a chance. I don't get a chance to talk to you motherfuckers all that often. Okay. I've never talked throw, to Hutch throw, before. Throw me a cool. Uh, oh man, I don't want to overshoot here. No, uh, I'm super hungry. Uh, go go for a hundred dollars. Hundred dollar super chat right now, and we'll keep going all night, baby. We'll go go. I'd say Josiah, you're all night. Person, I gotta eat at some point too. I've to hey, the fuck most. your food, lactoid. Listen, I got. Look, got why don't you guys like ever like I don't know bring snacks or something? Um, man, look, I, I thought this so... was gonna be a two hour conversation. Then I was gonna get to go to McDonald's. That was your mistake. Have a shamrock shake okay a double Ugh. cheeseburger and be good shake. 
So you guys always say I found the classified stuff downstairs. You guys always act like that's the silver bullet. Thank you for the bits. No, you, sometimes no, you guys no. even Thank compare it to. Thank you for the ninety nine ninety nine. So here, I'm gonna actually bring that up to as, as a point, um, Adam. Um, so the same thing about the classified document and the, the voice recording is the same evidence they're getting Trump on when he's like, "Look at this thing," and he holds up what everybody, not everybody. There's two people in the meeting who um, testified that they, what he was holding up was a newspaper about Mark Milley in Syria. And they're saying, no, he was showing up classified documents, even though they have yet to prove that that was what he was holding up. It's the same amount of evidence. And I don't understand I'm why. I'm pretty sure the that same they thing. did establish. I'm pretty sure that they did no. establish the specific yeah, yeah. documents that he showed. No, yeah, because the yeah. people that the, 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 the authors that he was speaking to were interviewed by the special counsel. That's what they said. The people who testified. Let me see if I can pull it up. They testified to, to the specific document that he showed them. Okay, so that so was established as far as I understand, the, at least the, as the allegation. The person who was the person who was in the meeting said that the, the person was holding up a newspaper about the Syria issue. No people were getting attacked but by when Trump says Washington. No, when no, Trump no, says no. I shouldn't be showing this, is not indicative yeah. towards his state of mind, whereas there's no comment like that from Biden. When he says I found all the classified stuff downstairs, again he's referring to the Obama notebooks, which he didn't know. He didn't know that state of mind would also play into the mental issue. That that that's not a that's not a uh, a show of innocence. Sculptory, yeah. yeah, yeah. They but, don't, but don't here's the thing. With me. respect, though, that that the that's the the argument to make. If your position is that Biden has pudding for brains, I think while this doesn't exonerate him, I think you're going to need something a lot more than you know he was referring to a confidential memorandum that he hand wrote to his mm -hmm. former president that her himself concedes yeah. set everything else aside her himself concedes yeah. it's fair to question whether or not biden would have thought that 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 would have been like um an inappropriate classified document play nice i'm gonna take a piss i'll be back yeah to, to clarify i don't just think... keep the audio on keep the audio i'm just yeah. kidding yeah oh, I, okay. I to clarify i don't think Either presidents or vice presidents should actually be uh, charged with any of this because it's extremely fucking difficult. To Are you shitting right up. now, bro? Yes. Yeah. No, 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 no. He's I'm got shitting. toilet paper out. He's shitting oh, right now. Oh, wow. He's shitting on the fucking thing? That, listen. Take that fat shit? That's that's dedication. Listen, so you're like, oh. eating right now. We don't want to ruin his fucking yeah. dinner. It's yeah. easy to admit, though, uh, uh, Artemis, that Trump's actions following uh, like the whole document stuff was different yeah. than Biden's, right? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He because he just, yeah, yeah. I, and I can explain to you, state his mind is that he thinks he's innocent. Like, he never thinks he's in the wrong. No, no, no. He, he has a victim complex. At when all you time. ask your, wait, hold on. When you oh, ask the, your lawyer to lie to the FBI, that's not him thinking his innoc he's innocent. He's that shouldn't be oh, showing that's, that, that, that's, that's him, on, that's him in, on that in, statement. in the pursuit of a crime, a in, knowing in that, crime. In, in that statement you just made, is yeah. that from a, a leaked. That's um, from his first, lawyers. No, his no. lawyers testified to Jack Smith that he asked them to he asked them to lie to the FBI. Did he? I, I yeah. had to. I had to the, go back. The, his and look lawyers at that. testified to that. I would. I would have to go look back at that because I. I don't remember that being the he case. Said, his lawyer said Trump at one point goes, "What if we just told him that we didn't have him?" You know. And, like, and, what, what, and is, so you're asking him, "What if?" And then he says, "No, don't do that. That's illegal." Uh, no, it went further than that, but that's the that's the one uh, oh, so, example that I can think of off the top of my head. That puts him in an entirely different category than Biden altogether. You would acknowledge that, right? Well, it, like it Biden, might. I mean, it depends. Did Biden go through four years of being like uh, I don't know, uh, persecuted by his own fucking government? Oh come God, God, uh, Artemis, <laughs> come on, baby, what are you? Oh, doing? hold on, hold on, hold on, you you that talking, hold on, hold on. You We're talking it. about Trump's state of mind, right? <laughs> Sure. Yeah. Are we, yeah. So we're talking if about the, his state of mind. If the FBI you, subpoenas you, yes. you can't just, you can't, and they ask you, we know you have these specific documents. We need you to get, give them back to NARA. Uh -huh. And then Trump goes, mm, I'm not going to do that. In fact, I'm going to hide some documents in this room over here. And yeah, I'm, state I'm of gonna mind. I'm sorry. Lawyer. Hold on, hold on. I, I thought there was two different FBI working with the NARA. And one was saying, hey, lock this shit up so that nobody gets into it. That way, while we adjudicate the process, and then another FBI team came in and just raided it and took everything. There was two different processes going you're, on. You're, you're skipping about 15 steps there. <laughs> yeah, but the they way, were fighting. Well, hang on. By the way, mentality court. only goes so far. Like, sure. again, I'm not an attorney. Lactoid can correct me if I'm wrong. But if I murder somebody and I'm like, listen, I didn't think murder was illegal. That's not going to be a defense, right? You're still going to be on the hook for it. 
Right. And that's the critical difference here. Like when we're willingly here in the terms of the Espionage Act is yeah. referring to it would be like it would be like committing murder. But you also have to know that murder is illegal. Right. That's the incredibly high standard here. So what's the term for that? There's a term for that, right? Mens rea? Will, will uh, really. it's not, no, no. Well, mens rea is just in terms of like, uh, yeah, whether you intend to do the action. Yeah. Right? I think, I'm thinking of something else. But it's like, there's, some, there's some crimes where you don't need, there's some crimes that are just illegal no matter what you think. And then there's some strict, crimes that are only crimes. On, uh, yes. Yeah, strict, li doing. strict liability. Right. So right, like, yeah. uh, there's, there's examples of crimes where even if you had no requisite state of mind, you could still be held yeah. responsible. The, for the, the, like the big speeding thing. ticket. Yeah. Uh, speeding ticket's probably a good example. Uh, although I'm pretty sure you could, potentially argue your way out of that uh the the classic example is statutory rape laws um in a lot of places except for some states in a lot of places it doesn't matter if all the evidence in the world uh indicated that she was 18 if she's not you're fucked this is how it goes yeah, yeah. so so okay so we talked about can, can immigration. we just acknowledge um the libertarian uh is very uh bringing up the statutory law anyway sorry go <laughs> wait, 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 wait. I want to address that for a second, okay? Because I'm very, I, you know this, I, maybe you don't. I'm very strongly in favor of protecting children. And yeah, yeah. I very much am a fan of uh, age of consent laws. But I do generally, I'm incredibly skeptical of any kind of, any kind of strict liability crime. Like if you, if you have reason to believe what you're doing is not illegal and every reasonable person would agree with you, the idea that we would still get you in trouble seems a little bit Orwellian, right? Indeed, like. Yeah. I and don't want to go down somebody... this rabbit hole. Let's sure. Yeah. We should talk about something light, like did Trump commit a coup or yeah. attempt a coup? Oh, that's oh, light. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, yeah. A, that's an easy. That's so, an easy. So, one, yeah. so the I guess going back to the <laughs> the persuasive case thing, yes. I just to me, you may end up having a point, Artemis, that by the time of the election, hanging hats on the threat Trump poses to democracy will be insufficient. Certainly, the mm -hmm. polling suggests right now that it's not quite sufficient. Yeah. But it's not done yet. And again, as far as sure. I'm concerned, I look back on it and I see that MAGA being radical and a threat to democracy, it's worked in 2020, it worked in 2022, it worked in 2023. And I think it stands a chance of doing here. As a matter of fact, um, I That's think- That's why that, you funded them, right? Oh, here we go. All right. You know what? I'm glad you brought that up, Lactoid. I'm glad you brought- So well, Lactoid's thing- so, so Lactoid, just for, for, for clarification's sake, Adam and Hutch is- um, Lactoid, his beef with MAGA extremism, isn't that they're extreme and anti-institutionalist. That's okay. It's that they're it's Democrats. That, it's that Democrats uh, funded them during the 2022 midterms to get it them works. to win primaries so we could not... Right, right, but I understand. I, his, now, his, his complaint is... It's the same. I actually had a complaint with it, too, even though it turned out to be effective, which is, goddamn, you risk quite a bit doing that. They ran the but table, though. It fucking yeah. worked. Right, but yeah, Lactoid's I, uh, beef mm -hmm. isn't that it happened. Back, Lactoid's beef isn't that you got that these people are crazy. It's the Democrats for exploiting the crazy. It's not even. That's why I don't get about my boy Lactoid. But I'll try to figure him out eventually. I would argue that. So, so, it, so oh, sorry, Lactoid. You go. I, I just want to say, like, the reason why it's such a fucking snake behavior is you have, you have these non-MAGA Republican candidates who, sure. you know, said the election was was not rigged. They stood with the Democrats or whatever. And they got thrown under the fucking bus, man. You know, just everyone, they were all coming together, kumbaya, like, we got it. This is beyond politics. This is the foundation of our democracy. And then when it comes to push to shove, doesn't matter. Partisanship wins. The Democrats fund their enemies in order to get MAGA candidates elected in the primary. And they were and confident I you, that it would work. And, they and were then, right. they were, they and then were Biden, right. after they were doing that, well, while they were doing this, Biden was going on and giving all these speeches about how this is not a political issue. This is an American issue. This but is something we all need to come together work. on. They were confident so, that it would work. No, yes, they they were, they were, they were, they were so counterpoint. That's yeah, so counterpoint. Yeah. Counterpoint. Yeah. Well, I don't like politics. I don't know. It shows how disingenuous they were, though. Lactoid's beef is, yeah, it's not principled. Okay, so Lactoid. Then I am sure, and maybe you covered it earlier in this conversation. I'm sure then, by that same standard, you are outraged, especially given how strong you feel about the border, that Republicans have tanked this border bill to exploit it as a wedge issue for the election. That's not principled at all. And I am, I would bet right now somebody should do this. Check Lactoid's very prolific Twitter page. Oh, yeah. I think very he is prolific. ranting. He is ranting about this as we speak. Damn it, Republicans. How dare you complain Why that not? this is an existential so, crisis? So, I, so, a couple things. First of all, I, you're not going to find something like that. But I also don't think you're going to find any tweets about me complaining about like 
uh, I, Mexican right? motherfucker. I understand because, because I like, like Mexicans. I, I'm I, fine okay. with the Mexicans. Who but, cares? They're good but people. My question they work is, hard. As a matter of principle, you surely object to the dirty pool that Republicans are playing too, yeah, right? Yeah. It, it's it, it for to the oh, to the extent. Yeah, see? yeah, I do. To the okay, extent the, the, specifically, right. I, I I can think of a specific example too. I think it was um, what's his name, Lindsey Graham. Oh. I, I I'm thinking of Lindsey <laughs> Graham uh, when when he's going up there and he's talking about how like he's making up reasons on the fly as to why this bill sucks. And his answers are shit. Um, yeah. Lang Langford, Langford went on the record and said that a prominent right-wing social uh, or media person, people speculated it was Bannon, called him and straight up said, if you give Biden a win, I will I will dedicate my life to destroy I think him. it might be Laura Ingram because she said that there needs to be political consequences for those Republicans who back yeah. this bill. And, interesting. But he, got, but he faced pressure from Republican, from conservative listen, media. Listen, it's smart. First off, there's a few reasons here. One, the House was ignored. They didn't. Mike Johnson should have taken to the amendment. Tyler, process. before you go on, I want to hear this, uh, but I need you. If you're going to say this is smart, then I want you to go back and revise your statements about re Democrats backing MAGA candidates in the 2022 midterms. You'll concede that was smart, right? Because Absolutely, it was. It was. It was okay, it was, okay it, there we go. Say it was we're gonna. We're gonna be. We're, as long we as I'm here, goddamn it, we're gonna have the same I fucking love shady for both politics. parties. Oh, I God. love finding like little fucking loopholes, like. But Mitch cool. McConnell did a Merrick Garland. Um, there you shit, go. Like, I Smart but disingenuous. Oh, okay. on. I, I, I want to clarify one thing. I don't actually know if the bill is like good or bad. I haven't fully read through it. But it's, I am of the opinion that there there are some Republicans who, uh, for as for political reasons, oppose the bill. And I would consider that to be disingenuous. Even if it was okay. Hold on, hold on. It would have passed the House if they put it to a vote. Let me clarify. The reason why the, the main objection was um, is that inside the bill, it, it gave the things that uh, Democrats wanted, the visas, the amounts, the pathways to citizenship. Uh, no, asylum. no, it did not. not, not uh, was it just the visas and green cards? Or is that, no, so the, 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 the thing it gave. Oh, it, it, it it's gave, not, it's uh, not material to what I'm saying. Uh, let me just uh, okay. I'm sorry. I'll, I'll, I'll do the pathway away. Um, the, the issue is, is it gave Democrats what they were asking for. It had the restrictions the Republicans wanted, but with a caveat inside, where the president at any time could just waive the shutdown or any of the things that he, what he believes is best for the United States at that time, which read, is a okay. huge issue. I read that. Bill. So, okay. Um, well, the issues with it that Republicans had, and if you want a really sober, good take on it, go to Tom Cotton's Twitter page. He actually went through and gave really decent takes from a Republican saying it was, they were decent. You might not agree no. with them. But they were no. sober takes. They were, they were better than nothing. So it's smart politics. Um, it's a better bite of the apple. If we go by polling right now, Republicans are going to control the Senate. They may retain the House, and they're going to take the presidency. If you just look at polling right now, it's a better bite. Of the hold on, hold on. Let me get let me get a point out. I've been sitting silent for like twenty minutes. So no, you haven't. Yeah, I did. I've been trying to jump in for a while. You guys are going hard. Um, so it's it's a better bite of the apple. It's smarter for them to resist because they can get a better deal for what they want. On top of that, Mike Johnson was completely left out of the negotiations. Now, he should have taken it to a floor vote. He should have allowed it to um, enter, the, uh, enter the amendment process, and he should have offered a counter bill. Instead, he did none of those things and just said dead on arrival. I don't like that, but it is still smart politics to do what he's doing. So that's not what happened. So it, Langford confirmed that Mike Johnson was invited to participate in negotiations. Johnson didn't do it. That's not true. Okay. Cotton himself is a source of extreme bad faith. So I'd take anything that he said with a grain of salt. The fact of the matter is that this was not a complete um, win for Republicans. That's true. It didn't give them everything they wanted. But the bipartisan consensus was that this was a relatively conservative immigration bill. It was endorsed by the fucking anti-Biden, pro-Trump, jerk-off, border patrol union. I like it. Like, this isn't perfect. This isn't perfect. Be, but they said it's not perfect, but it's certainly far better than nothing. And in terms of a better bite at the apple, unless the unless some, some sort of miracle happens, they're not going to get a better bite at the apple because right now Democrats are favored to take the House, which means this thing is dead on arrival. And even if they don't, you need 60 votes in the Senate to pass legislation. Yeah. Unless, of course, unless, wait a minute, unless Republicans break the filibuster. And Wick assures me that Republicans won't do that. So if that happens, I'll have beef with Wick. It'll be like, Wick, what the fuck, man? I thought Republicans love the institution of the filibuster and would respect yeah. it all. Once again, the, uh, hold the on, hold on, stop, because this is, a, this is the first thing me and... Uh, 
Just sign. Oh, him. fight him! All right, I'll back up. We'll um, see it. No, don't, don't, don't back out, right? But, but, um, I think that the institution of filibuster protects us as Democrats more than it protects the Republicans. I think that at least today, as it stands <laughs> now, why would we, why would we give up the filibuster when there is a possibility that Trump will take the Senate and Trump will take the presidency? Why would we ever? weaken that institution right now <laughs> and again the republicans had the chance to do that when trump won election in 2016. trump actually tried to get mitch mcconnell to 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 weaken the filibuster mitch mcconnell f refused right refused so we can't just like not give this there is a pattern of evidence that again mitch mcconnell and the republicans in the senate do not want the filibuster gone. If that changes, then my opinion changes. But as it stands now, I don't think there's there's compelling evidence that the Republicans want to get rid of the filibuster. Mitch is evil, but he's very smart at what he he's does. He's very good at his job. Very evil, yes. I, I think like when you're, I, when you're, I think I, my opinion of the filibuster has changed too over time. Um, I think like when, uh, yes, I think, I, I th like I understand the arguments um, in, in favor of it. And I am kind of scared of these wild swings. If you give Republicans a simple majority and then all of a sudden they don't need the filibuster, it's yep. going to get fucking nuts. So like, yep. I understand that it's frustrating sometimes, but it, I sure don't want to kill does, the filibuster either. I, I sure think that does. the filibuster can be used by Democrats. Uh, very great. I think it's a tool like anything else. I don't want to abolish the filibuster. I think it'd be wildly irresponsible. I'm just saying that Tyler's yeah, you wanted contingent... carve outs that like, would have inevitably of course it, I think right? that every I, fucking I... thing has an exception to it yes of course or like voting rights or abortion stuff or what, what do you mean sure Jesus yes yeah of course uh, so <laughs> so so all that aside what I'm saying is Tyler's like uh, contingency can only occur where they get a better bite at the apple if they either are willing to break the filibuster to pass a conservative border bill which I've been assured they won't because they love institutions, or they get 60 votes in the Senate. That's, that's, that's definitely not, not going to happen. So, I, that's not true. Well, I want to pass the Artemis. The, the executive... Oh, Ar sorry. Yeah, Artemis had some stuff to say. I cut him off, and I want to make sure he gets this. Uh, I, I would say that it, it's not likely. If Trump does win, the, the Ukrainian funding is going to be desperate at that point, and the Democrats who who would have survived the primary, not primary, the election, um will be very wary of pissing off the electorate even more from the substantial loss that they took from Trump coming into office. Um, they would be more amicable in passing that. I, I don't think it needs to remove the filibuster to get that to happen. Plus, Trump has the authority to shut the border down and direct uh, Pentagon funding to where he wants it under emergencies. Um, so that there's no there's no need for him to negotiate anything. He Wait a minute. That was, that was contested in court. The why didn't, yeah, he the down? Why didn't he shut the border down when he was president then? <laughs> um, I think he did. Well, no. Well, no. Well, wait a minute. No, he didn't. That was the problem. And then again in 2019, he uh -huh. shut down Congress because he said he could. He was tapped out. He, there was only so much he could do. Oh. Jordan, will you shut that door, please? Um, yes. That uh, there's only so much he can do, which is why he needed legislation from Congress. And when he wouldn't get it, he shut the, board, the I, government down in 2019. This I idea, I just want to be he very clear about this. Hang on. I just want to be very clear about this. Anyone, and I mean this with love if this applies to anyone here. If anyone thinks the president of the United States can shut down the border, you don't know how government works. Because otherwise, Trump himself would have done it. It is the ultimate refutation. It's a dead argument. Let it go. I if think, you're watching and you feel the same way. I think that's know. a misleading statement because Trump is not smart. He doesn't know what powers he actually has. And just because he didn't use it doesn't mean he doesn't have the authority to use it. Well, he would have been surrounded Republican. by council. He yeah. would have been surrounded by yeah. council that would have advised him. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, where did that, that council get him during the fucking 2020 election? What? So, wait a minute. Do you think... I don't understand wait a minute. I'm All those losses think... in court that you keep touting? Because, because he, he didn't, didn't have... have a wait a minute, because he didn't have yeah, a case, right? So, so, yeah, I'm yeah, just saying so, so, his council is so not very good. No, wait a minute. There's a limit to what good counselors can do. If you don't have a case, the best counselor in the world, it's like making, I don't know, a, a filet mignon out of a shit sandwich. You can only do so much. Trump is usually wrong on the facts because he's an idiot. And by the way, intellectually and morally inferior to every we Democrat. We do know that the president that does have the factoid. authority to unilaterally remove people because Teddy Roosevelt was one of the most famous people who've used it to remove so, Muslims during the time that they came over. And he unilaterally sent them what back. What happened to Trump's? What happened to Trump's Muslim ban? 
Um, they changed it to an add in North Korea, and then it went through. It, it went through two drafts, and then on the third, he got it. Yeah, right. But that, what happened with the first two? Well, wait a minute. See, but this is what I'm talking about. Yeah. Trump, when Trump tries to take unilateral action, he was very mm -hmm. often stopped by the courts. Okay, so again, the Muslim ban is a great example. This idea that he has. He, his power, even when it, with respect to the border and immigration, is limited and justiciable by the court. The court can say, no, Mr. President, you can't do this. And they did it to Trump. And it's the same thing uh, with, uh, with, the, with uh, the border itself in terms of uh, uh, reallocating funds. When they, he tried to reallocate oh. funds to his border wall, the court shut him down. He does. He does not have plenary authority to do with whatever the fuck he wants. He is still very much constrained. I, I, can, I can almost guarantee you that if they were to send this back up to the courts, so the exact same thing, the court would rule the different. Artemis, way. with respect, that may be the case. But what we have is a case history, and Trump took L after L after L. Even Lactoid won't resist that. Lactoid will say that the Trump tried to do shit, Lactoid, and the court shut him that? down. I think. Uh, I think Republicans have lost a lot over the past. Uh, several years. And I think that when it comes to, can the president just unilaterally shut down the entire border? I don't think that's true. Um, and I, I genuinely I, could, 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 uh, does the president have a lot of power when it comes to this shit? Absolutely. Sure. Right. Just, yeah. just, uh, just, 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 can I jump in here real quick for the, to the border side? So the president did shut down the border for title 42. It was considered emergency COVID power, but I can't, I've been looking here. I can't find anything that said that it had to be temporary. It seems like the emergency powers thing is just a customary thing we do as a country, but it's not written in stone that Title 42 couldn't just stay in place forever and kept the border per permanently. Well, that's why, why by uh, had I, to I, take, I thought the emergency powers were a requisite. I thought they I thought they I thought it came from the emergency powers. I'm looking. I can't find anything that would result in Title 42. I think they just announced it as hey, we're doing this. Uh, active act of authority that we normally wouldn't because yeah, it's title, an emergency. I don't think it's held up in the courts because I know that uh, some of the uh, activist groups tried to uh, get it taken down and failed. Yeah, like, yep, it, yep. I thought he had to invoke emergency powers to do that. Though. Yeah, yeah. So, so if he just invokes, so you're saying if he invokes emergency powers, then now he can do it. He can shut down the border through Title 42. Yeah, I believe. Well, so. the 42 is not here, but he could make Title 42 again. Yeah, I do. I, he would. I think he would have to establish that there wasn't. A, I don't think he can just massive. I, I, don't, I don't think he can just call anything an emergency. No, he then, can't because most of the people coming in are coming in on either Biden visa or asylum. It's not a massive wave. It's control. This is what they want. You could claim that, but Texas is going to differ. Yeah, well, this is what the Biden. Like for example, I've heard, wants. I've, heard helps progressives, I've heard progressives say that Biden should declare an emergency and then do a bunch of like Green New Deal stuff. And I want to see that happen. And it's, un I, I it's, it's, it's unclear that. if the courts would allow him to do that. I think there are limits yeah. to emergency power. I I just, I I'm going to step in here. Um, this, this, is a, this isn't a left problem or a right problem. This is just a problem. This is something I push back against a lot of leftists at. Uh, Biden isn't a dictator, and we don't want to make him such. We don't want him to just well, unilaterally um, try to gain the, these systems. Because any precedent the, the, set will be used by Republicans in the future to do the same <laughs> damn thing. And I want but, to take that off the table uh, as much as possible. Anyway, carry on. The, the extremes on both ends of the spectrums want a benevolent dictator. Oh. I think I think that pool is bigger with right-wingers. Uh, I think when we're talking about like the- And the benevolent thing is kind of like- I, I don't understand right where that- Benevolent according to their standards. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I, I think throughout history, it'll show you that the left, uh, people who do it for your own good, are almost always more dictatorial than anybody else. I'm talking else. about the volume of like leftists in the United States is very small. Like, oh, wow. Buddy, Washington, what do you define as a leftist? Because that's going to be the definitional issue. When here. we when when we use the word leftist, typically we're talking about somebody who is like full on socialist communist. Yeah, so there was about, a like there was a Raffinson so study or whatever. Sorry, go ahead. Raffinson did a study that showed like the top one percent what we could qualify as the elite a postdoctorate making x amount of money in an x amount of a dense area almost solely line up with the far left on policy trans issues climate issues etc right but that, that doesn't necessarily mean they want to end capitalism it just means that they might they have like really progressive yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. talking about i'm talking about full-on leftists that are like biden should 
when we talk about authoritarian left, we're talking about like I something I saw a lot was a lot Thank of leftists you. on Twitter, tankies, like a lot of leftists on Twitter wanted Biden to to go yeah. to threaten Joe Manchin mm -hmm. with prosecuting his daughter, his daughter. Yeah, in I order to that. whip votes. That's the kind that of like funny. The, when we talk about that authoritarian left, that is a small chunk of the party. I know uh, you most socialists are upper middle class in the United States. I'm not a socialist. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I'm not saying you are. Well, I'm not saying well, that they are. Most, do we have any socialists in the room? Are, yeah. Can we? Can you raise your hand if you're a socialist? I, I'm raising my hand. I'm a socialist. Every every Democrat, raise your hand. Go ahead. So I, I'm a socialist because I get paid by American tax dollars to do my job. <laughs> okay. Uh, so can I ask you guys? Well, um, go ahead. Lactoid. I want to ask you. Do you or just all of you guys in general? Do you guys support Ukraine? I mean, Ukraine. I do. Yeah. I'm a big interventionist. I don't care. Who's I know you're a libertarian, Lactoid. That's what I was wondering. But I'm good. Yeah. I fear that Artemis does. Yeah, it's, I'm, it's, I'm, it's no, I'm in the military. So, I, well, I was in the military and I work for the government. So, yes, I I support Ukraine. Yay. So, what do so you think about I, Biden's handling? Handling? Yeah, um, like Biden. it could be better if he if he would just fucking negotiate with Republicans a little bit better. He could score a major fucking win on Ukraine. He could. He not, there's no what way would the he negotiation could force be. Uh, what well, one? The neo, there's still some neocons there that love war. Yeah, there are there you? are there are still war hawks that you can pull that lever on that would get it to pass. Oh, lots of them still. The majority. The problem is the Freedom Caucus in the House have it's it's kind of like a, a similar situation with like uh, Mansion and Cinema. You have this small group, so, and if you if your majority is really small, even a small group can wield a whole lot of power. Because if you put a Ukraine funding bill on the House floor right now, it yeah. would pass. The problem well, is Mike Johnson won't even allow that vote to happen. Well, hold on. Here, here's a good question. Here, here, instead of the power play move that uh, like people claim Biden did by separating the bills, if you would just gave the Republican Party everything they wanted in that the fucking border area of the the ukrainian and mass funding bill and then pushed it to them and said here i gave you everything you wanted fund ukraine stuff that wow. would have been a power play because then he would have gotten everything <laughs> and so he would, uh, his party yeah. would have been fucking pissed yeah, yeah. Did that. listen give the, the give the opposition party whatever they want and hope yeah. that they reciprocate in good faith yeah i respectfully disagree artemis but, but, i'm sorry but, but you gotta just, maintain but, your on, leverage on. wait 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 but that but that was them passing it that, that was what they complained about Lactoid wait a minute. So hang here. on. Wait, wait, wait. So Artemis, are you saying that it would be calling their bluff? It'd be giving them what yeah. they want. Therefore, mm -hmm. they would have no excuse, and therefore they would be obligated to vote for Ukraine funding. Yeah, in because it's in part of the same bill. With it's respect, different. with respect, I, in a in a different world where Republicans behave in good faith and are obligated to adhere to their previous statements, mm -hmm. you'd have a point. In the real world, they can say shit like. Yeah, give us a border funding or give us a border bill first, and then we'll pass Ukraine funding. Then, and then you just give them immediately renege well, on that, right? Yeah, this idea. The issue, this idea. the issue is that when we look at the fallout from this escapade that was that happened in the House, we can see that Democrats took more of the hit in terms of who was at fault for the border when this came about, which is wild because Donald Trump literally well, said, yeah, but you're, you're talking about the persuasive here. <laughs> yes. You're saying whether or not I would have a point in this world. The 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 electorate says. The Democrats fucked up on this. They should have did what they wanted, right? But they didn't. So th that's well, my point: is that if you well, want to play play the bluff, you would have done that. No, because no, now no, you no, only look bad. No, doing so it so wanted. so wait a minute. So listen, Democrat, nobody's psychic. What Democrats did I was know. they had two options: give Republicans everything they want and hope to God Republicans act in good faith, which is a losing bet nine times out of ten, or actually engage in negotiation and remember the fact that they control the white house they control the senate and the house has a razor thin majority yeah. uh, for republicans and not let republicans be the tail that wags the dog that second option was eminently more reasonable now you're saying it hasn't worked it certainly hasn't worked so far and it may not even work by the time of the by the time of the election i agree it hasn't worked the, the initial polling right now still favors republicans i understand that what I'm saying is the election hasn't happened yet. It's entirely possible that Republicans are indeed punished. When, when are we gonna when are we gonna say that it's a good time to say that the polling is correct? I could tell you that like how long is it after when, the election? Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. When wait a minute. the election happens. That's, the election that's not... it, elections are more important than polling. Yeah. Me me giving you me giving you the polling is is not me saying that polling doesn't matter. You, on the other hand, are just wiping your hands saying it's a done deal. It, it's uh, fucking not. Uh, it's not. The, the issue being is because never in the history has a Republican candidate been up in the polls 
and it, you're the, right. But historically, yeah, the there's Democrats a lot of never in history about this election. When, when, when in history lot. have we had a major political candidate facing 91 charges? Listen, and look, this, this that is Donald is, Trump's best never. matchup. This is Donald Trump's best matchup. I think Donald Trump is baked into the cake. I don't think there's a lot that could change his polling numbers because everyone knows exactly who he is. Convictions yeah. or not. That being said, this is his best match. Biden has not started campaigning yet. The fundraising that's already started to happen from the Democratic Party, Biden right now is on pace to have twice as much money as Hillary Clinton had in 2016. He is going to push a million dollars every I, month. I, I yeah. never, get some I've of that dough, boys. I, I, I and Trump's never... PAC is having to pay his legal legal yep. bills right now. Well, so well, that social deal that's coming through, he's going to get four billion dollars worth of assets from that. Trump, Ooh. Biden has. Yeah, the, uh, the, he's going to sell. He's going to go public with two social, and somehow this man has figured out a way to get four billion dollars worth of value out of it. For okay. Uh, well, in 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 the world where that has not happened yet, um, it's not looking good for Trump financially, given that his PACs have to be footing the bill for his, well, for it's his legal. Approved. Oh, you ain't seen his it, shoes it, yet. Oh, it, it's approved to go public. They they were holding it back, but it's approved. I to saw go those public. shoes. Yeah. So yeah. That, just, that, came, that came out in the news either today or yesterday. When we're, talking about poll, when we're talking about polling, the, literally the only poll that matters is the election. And if we looked at like betting markets in 2016, mm -hmm. Hillary Clinton, Hillary Clinton was fucking dominating, like dominating in the betting market. So, <laughs> I mean, th we, we can point to like how often in history has a has a has a, a candidate been up this much and then lost like. Uh, I don't, that's fair to point yeah, that out. And I, I'm not saying that if you're a Democrat, you shouldn't be somewhat nervous when you look at the polls, but there's a lot that Trump as much has. As, I, I want to be very clear. As, as, years. as much as people make fun of it, Rasmussen has been one of the most accurate pollsters in the last decade. Uh, they were at, they were surprisingly accurate in 2016. They were not very accurate in 2020, as far as I understand. And again, to Hold be on. clear, I don't ignore the polls. If you want, if you ever take a look at my videos, I catch shit mm -hmm. from my audience because I don't just blindly ignore the polls. I just uh, the polls are not the end all be all, especially when Trump has taken L after L after L after L after L since 2016. I'm just not going to pretend that those the, that electoral the history is not all, all, Also, I would just want to be clear that yes, the polling is something that we should be concerned about as democrats yeah. however when you look at state polls and things like that we will see things like trump's uh uh biden's approval rating being like 38 39 percent super mm -hmm. dismal but still in a head-to-head -head state by state matchup in a lot of these states the, Biden's what about still the winning matter? right what so about the, that's what matters at the end of the matter. day in almost every swing state Right now, Trump is up at least four points for the last poll that came out like two days ago. And then yeah. there was one earlier in the week that said that's that. That's my issue is that two days something has to change. Yeah. And I, 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 like, stare at polls like, I, I want, a, I want a, a closer race in terms of pro polling because of the way it looks like now, if Biden does start his actual campaign soon, it just seems like every time he, he's out publicly speaking, people like him less. It's the same issue that Hillary Clinton had. It's the same issue that Kamala Harris had. Where the more they talk, the less people like them. Yeah. So, so real quick, I want to address somebody in Wix audience. And and by the way, again, I say this to Wix audience every time I'm on. If you have a disagreement with me, please like actually try to get my attention because I'm not paying too close attention to chat. Either send a super chat for Wix to read, or Done. when we're doing these open panels, jump on in and spar. It's it's fun. Um, so Nyer Sox is again wants to take it back to Biden's mental acuity. What about Trump? The reason. Uh, that I bring it back to Trump is because we have a binary choice, motherfucker, yeah. between these two candidates ahead of the election. You probably don't know that because you're a Republican. You distrust elections. You're not very bright. So then the question becomes, when the majority of Americans think that neither of these men are competent and mentally fit for office, then you have to look at other intangibles. I also agree that Biden has lost a step. There's no question about that. He's not the same man he was in 2020, not the same man he was in 2012, not the same man he was in 2000. But there are other aspects of competence. Donald Trump says crazy, stupid, incoherent, ridiculous shit all the time. He makes the same sort of gaffes that Biden does, except, as even lactoid cops do, he doesn't have the base of knowledge. He is an infinitely less educated and experienced politician and statesman. He doesn't know fuck all about foreign and domestic policy. There's a, and then you, and a, then, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let me, let me finish, let me finish this rant, and then you can both <laughs> jump in. And then you have to look at other manifestations of competence. For example, great example, easy pivot point, infrastructure, one point of comparison. Donald Trump talked for four fucking years about passing major infrastructure. He failed because he's an ineffective administrator, executive, and legislator. 
Biden got it done in one year because he's an infinitely greater administrator, executor, and legislator. That's a popular say, policy. Well, that was because Trump didn't have the right people in place. Was well, the chief fucking executive and the head of the executive branch, that's probably your number one most important ability is to hire the right people, which means Biden is still better than Trump. So I'm sorry that that hurts your feelings. But that's why I say, what about Trump? I acknowledge Biden's shortcomings. I just say that with those shortcomings, he's still better. Next time, please at me on Discord or somewhere else or get my attention somehow or jump in chat. It'd be fun to spar with you about Super it. Chats, okay. yeah. there's, there's, an appetite, there's an appetite in the electorate for Trump being as disruptive as he is. There are There's a substantial portion of this country, maybe let's call it 35 to 40 percent of the country, that view his... Um, uh, view the crazy shit that he says as a positive thing. They view uh, legislative legislative experience as a bad thing. Um, and so, you know, the things like, it's a totally different standard that Biden is held to because they both objectively say, like misspeak and, and say kind of weird, stupid shit all the time. The difference is that there's no expectation that that Trump is going to be anything other than he is. And there's all this expectation that Biden is going to be like how he was supposed to be like 12 years ago. Well, I, I um, think he, the main issue here is that Trump is making gas because he's not as smart as he thinks he is rather than him losing his mental faculties. Who are you to say that, though? When he mixes well, well, we up can... Nikki, when he mixes up Nikki Haley and Pelosi. Yeah, how, how, how come he's met I both can't... of them. How come I can't tell you, oh, this is evidence of mental decline? And why is it that Megyn Kelly and other right-wing commentators who actually support Donald Trump publicly will admit that he's lost a step? Why does Nikki Haley say it? Why does Ron DeSantis say it? People who actually— Yeah, yeah why, well, why are— One, so both of those people are currently—were running against him. I know Ron DeSantis is— But well. lost, lost a step and being at the point where you should take grandpa's keys are too— but, Well, like, well like, when you forget yeah, but, when but Tyler, but that's died the is a huge fucking problem. Well, hang on. So, no, so Tyler, we just talked about this. I'm going to ask you what's the evidence that you should take grandpa's keys. And I'll actually have infinitely more at my disposal for Trump than you will with Biden. Okay, so what you were saying is that he mixed up names and, you know, Trump this and that. He says crazy things. I'm going to use an analogy used on me one of sure. the first times we talked. You're talking about a guy doing armed robbery, and I'm talking about an axe murderer. So Joe Biden shakes hands with imaginary people and Roombas around the stage. No, if you remember in those times clips. I debunked that. I debunked that. Yeah, no, See, this is what I'm saying, Tyler. Debunked. You got to. You, Tyler, got you got to get better at this. Debunked. You got to get oh, better some, some, some dude on PolitiFact had an opinion that he wasn't actually doing that. But I got or when you up. pulled back and played the full footage, he's he's talking to people to his right no. and then his left and then walks off stage. But again, Tyler, I'll even give you that. I'll give you that. Wait a minute. I'll give it to you. I'll give that to you. You still lose because I can show where Biden's record proves that he is a better executor and administrator and legislator. I'm not gonna, I absolutely right. agree. He's actually so really, why would really we take competent. grandpa's keys away when he can actually make it to the destination he is, he was and Trump himself. can't start the fucking car? Joe Biden is probably one of the most experienced in government people alive in the United States today. If he does have Hillary. mental Hillary. decline, he okay, well, blow Trump out when, of the water. When, when, Donald Trump, when, Don, mental decline. when Donald Trump extended, can we just circle back around to this? Extended the projected path of a yeah. hurricane Mm -hmm. with a sharpie pen yeah that is objectively so, a hundred times crazier he's an idiot than any he's no, that, that, no that goes beyond, demonstrates scientific that goes illiteracy be, well, well, I, 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 no 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 hold on, hold on it goes it goes beyond science we're talking about a guy oh. who is emotionally <laughs> so stunted and fragile that mm -hmm. he was willing this is like a not insignificant thing if you project if you extend the path of a projected hurricane that could affect the local economies you know, like they could be like business. That's not even his best. Down. That's not even his best hurricane thing. It was but one of the me, greatest hurricanes me, in terms of wetness that we've me, ever seen. To me, that is. To me, that is. It's. It goes beyond just scientific illiteracy, and it I speaks think... to his manifest inability to be a leader. So, to be a leader means to. He could have just said, "Oh, I'm sorry, I was wrong. I said it was going to go to Alabama, and oh. I made a mistake." Instead uh, of acknowledging that he made a mistake, he took the extraordinary step of using a sharpie pen to extend the path of a fucking hurt. If if Biden did that, you guys would be like Grandpa, bro. Oh, we gotta take. Oh, his keys. I, I wanna, I wanna ask you take something. Keys. Oh, That's oh, fucking I, insane, I, I, bro. I gotta, ask, I gotta ask this. I would not. Why, why is it that everybody else in the United States could understand that he was being retarded there and making like a joke? But you seem to be the one, the only one. That You're saying that he was making a joke when he said that. Wait a minute. No, no, why no, are no, we no, saying no, he fucked up and then being retarded and extended the line? 
and why was making we, jokes about it. Why do we think? Wait a minute. Why do we think that that's what what everybody else thinks? Again, because I told you nobody even, else has come up with the same idea that that is the reason why he's mentally unfit. No, you know why? That's just the one that means the most yeah. to me. That is fucking. I know that's why. That's why I'm bringing it up. Yeah. Artemis, no. So he's giving a single example. He's not hanging the the entire competence. Yeah, this is primary point. It's the one he's. It's objectively crazier guys. than anything Biden has ever uh, done. Yeah, he's he's around around he, he I really want to pin. That... I really want to pin Tyler on this because again, as far as as far as you know, what most people think. I've told you, even right now, even though Trump's been out of office for three years, and even though mm -hmm. we don't have the benefit of seeing him on Twitter all the time, he's consigned to trust essential. A majority of Americans still think he's mentally unfit for office, so they're both losing the popularity contest. We have Sorry to tell you, that. more people think Kamala Harris is mentally fit for office, and you all oh. hate Kamala Harris, than Donald Trump. Yeah, so, so getting back to Tyler here. Tyler, I'm confused. I want you to square this for me. You implied Trump is with it, and Biden is at take your keys level. Then when I give you examples of where Biden has demonstrated infinitely greater competence, then you backtrack and say, well, he's more experienced. Which is it? Should Biden's keys be taken? And if so, why? Or should his keys not be taken? And if so, why? Well, because you, you contradict yourself. No, you made two different points. Biden is one of the most experienced people in the country and government. He's been doing it for like, what, 40 years? He knows that shit inside and out better than almost anybody that's alive today. We're talking about competence, it though. Not, yeah, not experience, it doesn't competence. Speak to his current mental state. He physically <laughs> is incapable of doing the job he has degenerated. 80% of the public agrees that his health understand? is a he's melting. Hey, you guys wait, got a lot of fish. You got a lot of fish. You got a lot of He's melting. Yeah, he's coming out of his ears. Hold on. 80% of the public agrees. Most Democrats agree. He is not, this is the big problem. More people, like 2% less actually, people care about Biden's mental health than Trump's felonies. Okay, That's how Ross, big of a deal it is. We gotta give Adam uh, an outro. He has to dip. Uh, Real quick, sorry, I was supposed to check out 90 minutes ago, so I've just been oh, kind of damn. listening. Yeah, I'm sorry, like, but, again, um, if you need to go, I understand, right? So I, I didn't no, I was just chilling, I was, I was just chilling, I was chilling, but um, no, thank you guys for everything, I gotta go now, though. So, Adam, see you, buddy. Where can people Have find you nice one last here. time? What's up? When can people find you? Oh, Adam time? Mockler. Everywhere, Adam Mockler, M-O-C-K-L-E-R. You can find me on YouTube, Twitter, everything. Uh, we'll do this again very soon. See you, buddy. Uh, I'm going to go too, guys. But uh, if you guys would do me a favor, the gentleman that I just met tonight, will you drop your like um, socials in the in the Discord yeah. chat so I can drop a follow? Because I want to talk to you guys some more as the election season goes. Yeah. Oh, we, the yes. yeah. <laughs> we will, I don't we have will anything. absolutely arrange more discussions. But anyway. Yeah, I really, really enjoy the talk. Thanks for having me, guys. Bye-bye. Yep. Appreciate yeah. it, buddy. It was cool. awesome. So just, my last... Just, right, we'll do a panel. Yeah. Whoa. Damn. <laughs> just got the I, fucking I, boot. I didn't. I didn't wow. I didn't, wow. wow Rick. Rick. Wasn't me. Jeez, Wasn't yeah. me. Hey, so listen, I, I just want to get Tyler on this, and then I'll, I'll listen yeah, to the rest you. of you, and then I'm going to duck out. Tyler, yeah. where I'm confused is you just presented two mutually exclusive options, that he's physically unfit for the job, can't do it, then, but also he's been doing it and doing it well. Which is it? It's both. I'm telling you, in terms of the experience that he holds in his brain, his ability to legislate, just looking at that alone isolated, he's one of the most experienced to, ever, to, to be alive in the, the country right now. If he didn't have the mental decline and block it, he would easily run circles around Trump. Unfortunately, his brain is deteriorating to the point where most people are concerned about it. Tyler, I'm not asking most people. I'm, so, so let me let me that's what, that's, let that's me re, let me wait a minute. Shh, let me recalibrate because I'm asking you about the fact of the matter, not public perception. I'll say it again so we can dispense with it. I accept that the vast majority of Americans, according to polls, think that Biden is not fit for the job. I accept that that is the polling. I accept that polls matter, period. I will also point out that a majority of Americans feel the same way about Trump, but that's aside. That's the perception. 59%. I'm asking you, is Biden, is Biden doing the job well, which you've said he's done, or is he incapable of doing the job well? There is no, I, I just want to be very clear. Before you, you missed the whole, you missed a there's lot of no, debate. There's no timeline in the multiverse where these two things can exist simultaneously. They, they absolutely can because you missed they a can. lot of the debate. We've they had can. multiple presidents that were incapable of doing the job where their administration, their family members propped them up. Well, we Fair enough. Okay, so, the way, so the, all that's all you had to say. So you actually don't give Biden the credit. It's actually the people around him that's doing yeah. the job. Yeah, yeah. I would Fair accept. enough. Fair enough. Then that's all you had to job. say. Yeah, they okay, did a good fair. job in 2023. And Biden himself, if he didn't have the mental decline, he's actually a very 
smart politician. He's good at his job. Fair I enough. really liked him in the 90s. So, so to be clear, when you say that Biden has done well in all this, it's actually – that's synecdoche. That's a metonym for Biden's administration. Biden himself is kind of super, superfluous for – he's, he's really irrelevant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the, okay. yeah, the administration. Gotcha. So th- that's how you square the two. So no, what no, is it with – so I, think, so I think you get what I was saying. So I square the two, but I don't know. About yeah, that. No, no. Now Biden, that you now that you clarified, because you, then you were defending Biden's experience as though Biden is doing the job, but he can't do the job. What you're saying is Biden isn't doing the job, can't do the job, hasn't been doing the job. It's been everyone else around Biden cleaning up after him yeah. and, and working around him. He, he no. said that 60 percent of the uh, Obama holdovers came back and were in the same positions. Yeah, they, a lot of that is. But I mean, his, his, his stance on Israel is different. There is evidence that Biden still does have some say in the administration's day to day. He's not completely out of control. And the Israel policy from the administration shows that he's going complete night and day for one of the, the same did. Israel policy that you state that you say is his crowning achievement. My, one of my favorites, yeah. So he probably so does have some say. Oh, okay, that's fine. I, I don't think you can possibly <laughs> square this for me. I, I try to explain it's like, that. It's, it's like really he can't do hard. it. Like he can't do it, but everyone else is doing it. But also the one thing it's he is really doing is my not, favorite I, thing um, about him. And he's I, – I, so, so, Do you get what maybe, I'm saying? Maybe, maybe, maybe this is like – what I'm, uh, maybe. So maybe the bridge here is um, what Tyler is potentially arguing is that you have somebody who without a team couldn't do shit because their brain's coming out their ears, right? But they still have like a few good opinions that come from like a whole lifetime of good experience. And they every once in a while, like spurt out these opinions about what they want done to their relatively efficient team, which then goes and does it in a relatively efficient way. So yeah. it's sort of a symbiotic relationship where like if either of them were separated from each other, Biden and his team, they wouldn't be as good in Tyler's <laughs> mind, but they're not nearly uh, like right. it's not that Biden's competent by himself. No, but no, to no. me, to me, that's okay, not but I'm totally wrong. <laughs> That is, I do agree with that, but that what I'm trying to say oh, here is Biden is just unfit because his brain is melting. If his brain wasn't melting, he'd be, yeah, he'd be one of the most like competent politicians in the country. Wick and I, Wick I can ex- Wick can translate he's, this for me tomorrow. I'm sure no. he's especially since he was here the whole thing. So my qu- so then my next question is my last question for you, and then again I'll hear all of you, and then I'll dip out. Um, is and then Trump in comparison. What what's his beef? Because you said we because the started with a comparison between the two. Where where's Trump's competence versus incompetence and his team versus versus without his team? Where where is all that? Extremely dependent on the people around him to make the right decision because he's a fucking inept idiot. Like okay, you can tell. Uh, Ah, and with that, let's hear them out, and then we're gonna probably wrap it up since uh, Josiah's gonna go. So yeah. I mean, yeah, he's I gotta write three articles for my buddy Luke. Like, like Ooh, Paul yeah. Ryan gave him the funding from the wall, and Mex- in a way, Mexico would have paid for it. He fucking turned it down. He's an idiot. Okay, mm-hmm. a couple. I, I want to say a couple of things before I go. Um, sure. Uh, first thing, uh, as I've emphasized, I, I think that Donald Trump does have more mental acuity. I think he comes from a lower knowledge base, and so I think that a lot of the criticisms have to do with his way, maybe like kind of an assholeish behavior, and his way of appealing to people. Not necessarily the same kind of like brain melting out of his ears, but, uh, and I've been making this argument for Trump for a while now. I I do think that generally speaking, presidents, they're not complete figureheads, but they do represent more of a policy position than necessarily they represent like a personality. And so uh, when people, and this is very often used against Donald Trump, right? I mean, during his presidency, 91% of the media was was hostile towards him. They constantly covered his his personal shit. Everyone like was was getting angry at him for the way he talked about things, as opposed to like what actual policy was getting uh, that he was pushing. And so, you know, with Biden, I think it's somewhat similar. Where you know, yeah, you can criticize him for for his brain coming out of his ears, which I think is happening. But I also think it's probably true that even though he's declining, if he won re-election because of the people around him, you would probably see like just a regular presidential administration. Now, you would see a presidential administration that's you know quote unquote, getting shit done. But I just want to emphasize that oftentimes, and Dem- Democrats obviously do this, which I, because it serves their interest, people often conflate with like passing shit with doing a good job, which would like totally leaves out the option of maybe expanding government and passing shit is actually bad. Um, maybe like not 
you know, turning the government bigger and bigger and bigger and stealing more and more money and having it intervene in every part of your life and forgiving student debt for all these rich, you know, fucking college Black graduates who are using their degree to make all this money. Maybe that's not the best fucking thing, even if yeah. you can list it on one of your fucking Black achievements. Floyd, I, 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 fair enough, and that's the libertarian philosophy. I get it. But the, what I would say is just Biden has gotten more of his agenda accomplished than Trump's. You can say that Biden's agenda sucks, but it doesn't matter. The goals Trump established, Trump failed that spectacularly. Biden has accomplished more of his goals. That's how we evaluate competence. Okay. Biden's administration, and you know it, even if the ends you think are sinister and 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 uh, anti-liberty, you know that I, Biden's administration um, has I, been— I, Wait, wait. I, 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 don't, I don't think that's true, and, and the only, only for one reason, really. The reason why I don't think that's true, and I don't even— I don't even think you can credit Trump for this. So I'm not. Maybe you can still say that yeah, because Trump's so disagreeable, he still has a hard time getting like quote unquote his agenda done. But he, at the very least, unintentionally got the Republican agenda that for 50 years had been trying to get done. He, but arguably, got that done right. I mean, name one other president that Roe v. Wade uh, by putting in the most principled court, right, which I mostly care about. But he's going to go up on stage and talk about how how he got rid of Roe v. Wade, how he got rid of affirmative action how he got rid of all these you know, Chevron doctrine and all these other fucking regulations. Why? Because it wasn't, those weren't fucking Biden Supreme Court picks. Like Biden Supreme Court pick, pick fucking sucks. You have Trump Supreme Court picks, which are generally pretty fucking good. I agree uh, that you should give McConnell all the credit in the world for that. Uh, yeah. I, I think like, it's Artemis a, had the last word here. Go ahead, Artemis. Oh, the last word. Okay. Um, so Texas is in the right. Um, what they're doing on the border is good. It is effective. Um, if you look at the uh, news reports now, uh, the migrant um, pathways have shifted towards California. So now they're getting fucked with migrants. So it's a, it's a great time to be alive because um, the Democratic Party is still not trying to come out of their death spiral and they have learned nothing. Okay. Um, gang, if you like today's show, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Um, great guests. Thank you all for coming. We're going to rate out. Um, we're going to try a YouTube raid, too. Would you um, please give Lactoid some credit here? You talk about great guests. You don't Lactoid mention the motherfucker at all. Lactoid, oh, that guy, yeah. Lactoid he is. Great I love Lactoid. As well. But, yeah, gang, what we got it. coming up tomorrow? Design. Yeah. Tomorrow we're going to have um, a call-in show. So if, if you have issues with me or anything I've said or done, please call in. Lab will be joining us as the guest star. Um, and she, I'm sure, uh, will be eager to hear your thoughts. Uh, but for now, we're going to raid out. See you guys later. Bye-bye. 6 p.m. Bye, tomorrow. everybody. Bye. Bye. Wick, did you eat? Yeah. Uh, I had a little something, right? Yeah, like some noodles or something. Yeah. yeah. Um, but here we're going to go. Um, let me uh, end the stream. And I think I raided out on on all platforms effectively. We'll find out. That's cool. Mm -hmm. All right, before I go. I'm